everybody sucks here except your other kids that we know of. Your re response to your daughter's continued behavior as a bully is that you can't use italics two times in the same paragraph because the second italics undermines the strength that was implied with the first italics, okay? But the point is you don't have to let it get to that point to begin. Someone's got to take. Someone's got to take the role of Ben Stiller in Meet the Parents that takes all the abuse and just puts a smile on their face and then lets it all out later and says, can you deal with that? My wife is a grade A plus. That wh wife guy spotted a grade A plus wife. Dude, me too. Picky eater. Oh no. If you act like that and you don't have a child, you're like clinically insane. We aren't forcing her to buy anyone a gift. It's even worse, man. I'm not a B guy. I'm not. I'm not saying I would be like slurping it up. I'm just saying if she was like, can you help me? I would be like, I'd already be getting the, the straw. <laughs> I mean the towel, I mean the towel. Listen, I didn't want to post this on Reddit, but the three people whose opinions I trust the most disagree with me, and obviously that's not okay. So I need some other people to, to validate me here. Am I the asshole for not letting my daughter buy clothes? Listen, you gotta learn how to write a title. That's, this is one of the most insane titles I've ever heard in my entire life. Let's see what's going on here. My wife and I have four kids, 14F and 14M, 12 male and 11F. Okay, so here's the thing. Some people out there are just built different. You had your first kids at age 23. They were twins. About a year later, you said, yeah, I'll re-up on that. Are you crazy? What's wrong with you? <laughs> you didn't want to just get, get like a couple of extra years to really get a handle on it, on, on things? You were like roughly 12 months after having twins. You're like, yeah, I could, you know what? I'll buy into this. I'll re-up. No doubt about it. Sign me up. And then a year at, like, listen, four, one, one set of them is, is twins. Fair enough. But... Four kids within three years of each other is crazy, man. You can do it. Like, I'm not saying it should be illegal. I'm just saying, like, you know, have some self-care. Like, that's, uh, that is crazy. We generally agree on parenting them, but a recent incident had me and my wife disagreeing, and I want to see if I was in the wrong. A few weeks ago, I was at home with our 12-year-old because he was, how do you have time to write this post? Shouldn't your ass be like ground down in the, in the bone meal right now? How do you have time to write eight paragraph am I the asshole threads on Reddit? Like it doesn't seem because <laughs> it's fake. But if it's not, but if it's not. I was at home with our 12-year-old because he was sick with a stomach bug. Okay, again, I'm getting stun locked again. Do you have to? I think if your kid is 12, they can stay home from school by themselves. They don't, you don't need to be home just because your kid is home. I mean, when they're like five, for sure. When they're 12, come on. You just have them lock the door. Don't open it for anybody. And then like, you know, here's like, there's bread and meat in the fridge. You can make yourself a sandwich. I'm not, I didn't even grow up old school. I grew up like insanely sheltered. I could still, uh, like I, if I was home, if I was sick in the like sixth or seventh grade, my parents would just be like, okay, don't do anything I wouldn't do. I just play like, you know, N64 all day. I'm getting so many minus twos. Where did we go? When did we get so soft as a society? It's driving me crazy. They're 12, man. A hundred years, well, no, not a, like, okay, a thousand years ago, they could be elected like the consul of Rome, and now we can't even trust them to throw up in the toilet? Does nobody else see how messed up this is? Anyway, while I was making him soup, he, you, you're telling me this 12-year-old kid can't use a can opener? I'm not asking him to, you know, chiffonade his own uh, bay leaf and, and make a mirepoix or something like that. Like, it's just, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I just think it's so... It's what do you get when you cross a society that doesn't care about people with a 
I got a call from my twins high school telling me they wanted to speak with me and that my daughter had received three days of in-school suspension for a bullying incident. Because of my son's sickness, I spoke through them via the phone. You spoke through them? Like the, the way that the Lord speaks through a, a, a minister? <laughs> like the way a poltergeist speaks through your television set? And told, them, told me everything that had happened. My daughter and a group of friends were picking on a boy for wearing a crop top. The boy told the teacher she asked them to stop. When they didn't stop, she sent them to the office. After talking to the boy, he admitted the bullying was going on for a few days and that they kept bothering him when he asked them to stop. My daughter and son came home and my son's face was bright red. I told my daughter to go to a room that sat down with my son to see if he was okay. Apparently, I, I'm already so confused. Apparently, the boy she bullied was a close friend of his, one of his football teammates. The boy was talking to my son and their other friends and said something about how he thought it was cool that some men used to wear sports crop tops. The boys told him if he thought it was cool, he should try it. The boys went out and bought some jerseys from the thrift store and made them into crop tops. Just boys being dudes. Just me and my... Uh my, my high school friends uh, going out to the thrift store, buying some sports jerseys, turning them into crop tops, wearing them to school. Me showing off uh, my uh, being the only 10th grader in the whole school who has hair on his belly button. I then spoke to my daughter. She didn't show much remorse and was dismissive of me. Last year, she also got in trouble for bullying someone because of clothing. She's also gotten in trouble for racism at school? What the hell, man? That's like... All the crop top stuff is pretty bad, but like you were really burying the lead on this one. When my wife got home, we discussed the punishment and agreed on her not buying new clothes for a while. She has plenty of new cl of good clothes already. The worst punishment of all time. You you were racist at school. We're not going to let you buy new clothes. This weekend, we went to visit my brother. My brother lives around three hours away in a small town. We don't see him often. This week was the town's annual fair. Listen, it's called an annual fair, okay? Only comes once a year. Can we not just act like a happy family for the sacred event that is my brother's town's annual fair? If we can't hold it together for the annual fair, I don't think this family's got a chance, man. It's a sacred day of observance. At the fair, they had booths from local businesses. Our oldest son went to the booth with antique sports stuff and then the book booth to get books on sports history. Son li loves reading about those. Our 12-year-old got some plushies and toys and our youngest was looking at video games. So, a word problem. Our oldest daughter went to the clothes. I stopped her, told her the rule was still in place. I said, hey, listen. Re don't you remember how you were so racist? I won't let you buy clothes. That being said, if you want books, a video game, candy, or etc., that's totally fine. That's completely acceptable. But clothes are the one thing you cannot get. She was bugging my wife, and my wife eventually told her she would reconsider it. She then talked to me, and I told her that I wasn't changing my stance because I'm letting her buy other stuff, and I thought she was being entitled. My daughter didn't buy anything, and my wife thinks I was too tough on her. Are you crazy? I love this is framed as if, like, I'm, I'm kind of a hard ass. I don't let anything go in my house. We have standards of decorum that we have to live with. Am I the asshole for being a... Uh, uh, Marine Corps sergeant of a dad. I, and I guarantee all the comments are like, you're, you're too soft. You're not even close to being tough enough. Edit day two. Thank you so much for the awards. I accept it with humility for I am but a humble sheep. Ladies and gentlemen, we struck gold. Everybody sucks here except your other kids. That we know of. Your re response to your daughter's continued behavior as a bully is to... You can't use italics two times in the same paragraph because the second italics undermines the strength that was implied with the first italics, okay? You can't use italics two times in the same paragraph. They have to be used sparingly. 
Your response to your daughter's continued behavior as a bully are to simply restrict her from buying clothes so candy and toys are okay. How is that a punishment? And your wife can't even manage that. No wonder your daughter has a problem. You guys need to implement consistent and actual consequences for her actions and teach her why bullying is unacceptable. She's more than old enough to learn compassion. Also, living in a predominantly white neighborhood does not excuse you for failing to teach her to be aware of other races and cultures. You only have a few years left with her. Get on it. Okay? This is all pretty reasonable. Perhaps it's time to delve further into why your daughter has such an easy time getting into the white supremacist rhetoric and why you and your wife have such a cavalier response to it. Start these conversations at home. Sane, sane Redditor. I can't believe it. I'm so, with the, the thanks for the gold kind stranger primed me to believe that we were going to read something insane, but uh, instead they are but a, but a humble sheep. Okay, everybody sucks here. You're uh, bad at being a dad. I commend you for sticking to your guns. The, the bare minimum level of commendation. However, that is the weakest punishment I've ever heard of. No, he could have had a worse punishment. If his daughter was being racist, he could have said, hey, no racism for one week. I think that would have taught her the wrong lesson. Instead, he, he said, no buying new clothes for an indeterminate length of time. A couple of weeks ago, I accidentally left my car keys in my uniform pants at work and left my pants in my locker. I don't wear my uniform home for multiple reasons. I just bring it home to wash. I have two. Why does that, it, it sounds like Tim Robinson wrote that line. I don't wear my uniform home from work for multiple reasons. I have two. I realized when I got to the subway station where I'd parked that I left my keys back at work. A half hour train ride and no guarantee I'd be able to get back into the building because it was after midnight. I called my husband to ask him to bring me the spare key 22 times. I tried my son, but he was asleep. He's 19 and has a car and didn't wake up when I called a second time. And I tried a friend. I didn't want to call too many people because, again, it was after midnight. I kept calling my husband, hoping eventually he'd hear his phone. I wound up taking an Uber home. I needed to get my car because they ticket after 2 a.m. usually. So when, I got home, so when I got home and I was pretty upset that I'd called 22 times and he hadn't answered, I continued trying to call him the whole way home in the Uber. When I got home, I went inside to the bedroom and woke him up. I was pissed that this had become a serious emergency. I w had this been a I'm pissed that had this been a serious emergency, I wouldn't have been able to get through to him. Hey, it's not a serious emergency. But if it had been, your behavior would not have been acceptable. Also, I know how this sounds, but like, this sounds like a great reason to do the classic pat all your pockets to make sure you got your keys before you leave the office building. People forget, you know, they make mistakes. They misplace their wallet. They misplace their keys. It happens. But at the same time, like your husband didn't do anything. He literally was just at home and then he went to bed. He didn't do anything. My man, like, he, he literally just fell asleep and then woke up to you being insanely mad at him and having, like, like, 50 missed calls. Talk about a shot of adrenaline to, like, start your day off wrong. Women don't have pockets, NL. She's got a bag or something. Come on, she could look in the bag for the car keys. I mean, even, if, even if she doesn't have a bag, it's not her like her husband is Levi Strauss. Her husband did not invent women's jeans. He's getting all the, all the fire and, and he, create, he had none of the tinder. It doesn't make any sense. Apparently she made it work every other day. So don't give me the pocket excuse. She's 370 consecutive times remembering her keys. Then one time she forgets and she's like, women's jeans are the problem. Just like take some personal responsibility. He kept saying he had my number in his favorites, so if I called twice, the second time it would go through, but he had his phone on silent and then put it on top of something soft so he didn't hear it vibrating. He complained I was mad at him for something I did. I replied that no, I was mad at me for forgetting my keys. I'm just taking it out on you. I'm mad at him for not having his phone on and that he's unreliable in an emergency, which thankfully this wasn't a huge one. So am I the asshole for waking him up and being pissed I couldn't reach him in what wasn't a big emergency, but what if it had been? Yes. You don't sound that, like, insane, but obviously, yes. In an actual emergency, you would just call 911, too? You know what? 
that's the sort of thing that you and I can look at each other and make eye contact and nod. But at the same time, you couldn't bring that up in the argument. It's one of those times where like, it's, it's such a silver bullet, you can't use it. You have to, you have to hold that in your head as like your, your trump card in the argument. But then like, you can't, it's too powerful to use. It would, it would blow out the other side. It wouldn't be fair. It's true. That's, that's where the camera pans to you and you go. Michael, if it's a real emergency, just call 911. What if 911 was on silent, Jan? What if 911 was on silent? What if it's busy, Jim? You really think I wouldn't push you up against the wall? Anyway, like, she, he can't be an everybody sucks here. He, he actually, like, didn't do anything. Like, he did nothing. This, if you look at this from her perspective, you hear, like, the born Identity music. She's, it's, it's like the tension is amping up. If you look at it from his perspective, he's just, like, eating dinner, watching TV, doing the dishes, and then, like, brushing his teeth and going to bed, and then waking up in the middle of a, a firestorm. Dude's actually just going, he's like a cartoon rabbit going like, hoo, hoo. And then he's waking up to like, yeah, Jesse, how could you do this to me? <laughs> what, what happened? What happened? Is everything okay? Your phone was on silent. I left my keys at work and your phone was on silent. Like he's just, uh, he's just living his life, man. Say that, you've, say that you've never been able to reach someone in, a, in an emergency without saying you've never been able to reach someone in an emergency. You will understand why OP is not the asshole if you have never been through the experience. For me, it was having food poisoning while six months pregnant while my husband was off gallivanting on a mountain and didn't leave his route and having to have the sheriff go look for him in hopes they might find him. Fortunately, he did, and it was a very awkward 30-minute snowmobile ride down the mountain for my husband because the sheriff drove the point home just how much of an idiot he was by not telling him that I was recovering from food poisoning until they got to the parking lot and would be okay. He made sure my husband suffered from the worry. Women go missing at the park and ride locations late at night. For a husband to not be reachable to that extent is beyond ridiculous. What? And that's why you never fall asleep or go on a hike, ever. I don't even understand. The, the user received Reddit Galaxy for this post. I don't understand the... I don't understand the, the, the problem. Did, was the husband the only person... He had the last supply of antibiotics in his pocket? He's the only person who knows the 12 secret herbs and spices to make ciprofloxacin? I don't understand why specifically... She goes on in the, okay. Ben asked why I was searching for my husband. I was in the ER. They contacted the sheriff's department to look for my husband, not just because I was dealing with food poisoning, but because I also had our two young kids with me. As for limited resources, it was a very large county with two mountain passes and the largest city in the state. I also knew which pass he and his mountaineering group was on. Since it was June, there were limited places. <laughs> so much detail. <laughs> There were limited places that they could be for practicing snow camping techniques. He forgot to leave his itinerary when he left early this morning. In the 15 years since, he's never forgotten to leave his itinerary for either mountaineering or work trips. What are you talking about? What the hell are you talking? Okay, your husband, like, you're six months pregnant. Your husband went for a hike. Probably did not 15 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Did not, what did he, this guy didn't do anything wrong either. This is exactly the same post as the original. The guy was probably like, hey, can I go for a hike today? And you were probably like, yeah, sure. And then he went on a hike and like some completely unpredictable shit happened. And now he's the dickhead for some reason. Because he didn't leave his itinerary. He didn't leave a map with his point to point location when he went out with his mountaineering group 15 years ago. When you, if you ever do your hobby, when I have a problem, you're gallivanting. If I ever do my hobby and you have a problem, that's self-care. This is just, I, I don't understand what's going on here. You ever wonder why your taxes are so damn high, but it seems like you don't get anything for them? This, this 
insane person is sending the sheriff out to go to the to, to find one single dude on top of one of two mountain ranges so that he can provide daycare to two children? Like it's not he's not gonna cure the food poisoning. I don't understand the I don't understand what the problem is here. He left her with the two kids? He no he didn't, okay? Because that's not like how reality works. I, I'm sure that they, in all likelihood, he didn't wake up early and go like, "I'm gonna sneak off on a little, on a little hiking trip. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go on a quick 15-hour hike without asking my wife." He, they probably had an arrangement. Hey, I'll take Saturdays. You take Sundays. Are you sure you're good? Are you sure? Are you sure? Okay, love you. Let me know if you need anything. And then he went for a hike. And now, despite doing all the necessary preparatory work, he's getting raked over the coals for it. And she's, he's, she's still holding the grudge 15 years. 15 years down the road. This, this shit happened in, in the Bush administration, man. Second term, but still, it's crazy. If they already knew you were going to be okay, why use the resources of the sheriff to bring him back? The sheriff let the husband sweat it out for 30 minutes. Then once the sheriff and husband got to the parking lot, the sheriff told the husband the wife was going to be okay. Let the husband panic for a half hour. 3,000 sociopaths. Hey, your wife is, is really ill. Here's the town sheriff on a snowmobile all the way up the mountain to come get you. It's an emergency. Is she going to be okay? Why don't you just hop on, shitbag? Bet you're really happy you went gallivanting on the mountain today. You just had to go mountaineering, didn't you? Just had to go mountaineering. Well, I, I, do you, you ever know what happens to kids when they lose their mother? Oh, yeah, she's going to be fine. Anyway, she's in room 36B. It's like, well, th this, if this actually happened, this is crazy. Right, the sending the sheriff out to fetch the husband of a woman who isn't in critical condition sound like a good use of resources? Have you ever truly had food poisoning? It's my time. It's my time. At six months pregnant, it's a big deal, and OP was likely in the hospital. The husband needed to be there in case it took a turn for the worse to make medical decisions. Okay, internet, make up your mind. Is food poisoning not serious at all? Or do you need to have 24-hour medical supervision in case we need to figure out if you're going to do a do not resuscitate order? Make up your mind. Because when I'm like, hey, if I didn't get that, I had to fight tooth and nail to get 12 antibiotic capsules. And if I didn't have them, I probably would have been dead by now due to sepsis or something. People are like, yeah, sure. What, I stubbed my toe once. I know what it's like. Or is it the sort of thing where it's an immediate emergency at all times? I get that she's pregnant. Also, if I had been pregnant, you guys would have more sympathy. It's a bit of a double standard, don't you think? Refusing to elaborate and moving on. I'm just saying if the roles, if the roles were reversed, when did society get so soft, man? Anyway, I still don't see... Regardless, I don't understand like the husband's fault in this he just went on a hike and then the whole town including his spouse conspired to make him feel like he was like negligent he didn't do anything he unless he gave her the chicken sashimi i don't understand the problem and th yeah this isn't even the post i don't even remember the post now <laughs> who's the post oh yeah she forgot her car keys and it's his fault okay I don't get that you're the assholes. Not the asshole, I get what you're saying. My dad went through a very serious emergency a few years ago and I live out of state. She didn't, I, that didn't happen to her. Are you stupid? I know you're like, well, if it did, but it didn't. This is fiction. You're living in a fantasy world. My dad went through a very serious emergency a few years ago, and I live out of state. My mom kept trying to call my sister, who lives 20 minutes from them, but her phone was dead, even though she was at home. So she, all she was able to get was the daughter a plane ride away who could do very little to help until I flew out. Where the, does the 911 not exist? What's happening? Is this a crazy world? Like, is this a clown world? What's happening? 
I, I like, okay, her phone died. Like, it happens. It doesn't make her a bad person because her phone died. I don't understand, like, why they're raking people over the coals, man. Both of the sisters are the top heart surgeons in the world. It's the only thing that, that makes sense. Or that you need them both to, like, the only thing that could save him is dropping a nuclear bomb, and they had the only two keys to turn simultaneously to open the nuclear football. Like, I, I can't even concoct a, a reasonably realistic scenario in my head where, where these are problems that, like, genuinely reflect negatively on the person that is supposed to have caused them, but had actually nothing to do with it at all. I don't understand why we're going through all these... Uh, Oh, we're going through the Socratic method. Uh, here's some shit that happened to me in 1975. Problem that was within my grasp. It just gets blamed on somebody who had the audacity. He was out gallivanting at the grocery store, buying food for our family. He had the audacity to be trying to parallel park in a spot that was really tight. Anyways, he needs to figure out a better system, especially since it sounds like you work late nights often. You know what I don't hear? What I don't see a single fucking time in this post? You know what I don't see a single fucking time in this post at the risk of sounding like a bad person? How about like you triple check when you leave work to make sure you got your fucking keys on you? I guess so the husband's got to do seven. He's got, we got to develop a whole new system to make sure your husband never has his phone on silent. But at the same time, mistakes happen. You leave, you know, people forget things all the time. So you shouldn't feel bad about leaving your keys at work. But your husband, who didn't have his phone on, uh, on three volume, and instead he had it on a soft surface with vibrate on, like, it, at least apply it both ways. Like, I, I want to type a post in here and be like, boop, 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 boop. you ever consider, learn hey, you ever consider learning the two-tap method? Where when you're leaving uh, any place or when you're walking around, you just tap one pocket and you're like, wallet. And you tap another pocket and you're like, there's my phone. You tap another pocket and there's your keys. I understand. Women's pants don't always have big pockets for all that stuff. But you can at least look in your, in your purse or at least wherever you're keeping your keys, you can have some sort of visual confirmation or tactile confirmation that you got the, the device that you need in order to get home and get into your house. They're both assholes, but he didn't, he didn't do anything. <laughs> he didn't, he didn't do anything. If anything, he should be mad that she left her keys. Okay, now maybe it's going too far. If, if this happened to me, I, and, and my spouse was mad at me, I would be disproportionately mad at her because I would be like, that's really irresponsible of you to leave your keys at your office and put yourself in a situation that could be dangerous. Like, I'm not, not to potentially victim blame. I'm just saying at the same time, like, we got to both insulate ourselves from this kind of, like, nightmare in the future. That's why, the, do you see the kind of problems that a three-tap solves? If you've got, if you've got one important possession in each pocket and you just go tap 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 you're good to go i think my my sentence here is just could she just buy a really small pair of men's jeans to wear to work so they've got big pockets and then one pocket has your phone one pocket has your keys and one pocket has your wallet and i also want to say and I, i'm sure that men do this too but i i so often see it from women we got to stop this iPhone in the back pocket thing. You're asking for trouble. I'm not even talking about pickpockets, although it's a juicy target with 75% of your iPhone sticking out of your back pocket. But one day you're going to sit down. You're going to sit down on your iPhone. You're going to crack the screen, okay? And maybe we need to completely revolutionize women's fashion to get deeper front pockets or something like that. But we, come on. It's just you're, you're asking for, you're setting yourself up for failure when you got a, a smartphone in your back pocket. Not the asshole. This is a weird one. I didn't realize so many people would be okay with their spouse being out of reach unless it was something you both knew about ahead of time. Unless you both knew that an unexpected emergency was definitely not going to happen. Are you listening to yourself? Unless you both agreed in advance to not have anything urgent pop up. Redditors be like, imagine sleeping, not me. <clears throat> the recent Am I the Asshole about the dude whose fiance was MIA for nine hours. He was quite right to flip because he couldn't get in touch, but this person shouldn't be mad because I don't know. I'm sorry, I haven't done the required reading on that one, so I, 
I, I can't uh, agree or disagree. If I were stranded somewhere and tried to call my partner and they ignored me, I'd be upset too. I'd also point out to them that if I had been calling for an emergency, say I was hospitalized and trying to get a hold of them, they would have missed my call and that going forward, they need to be responsible. That's an expectation for me, not you. If your spouse didn't know you expected support. Okay, well, um, that's fine. That's fine. Hey, just so you know, you wouldn't have had to give me 50 missed calls if you didn't forget your keys at work. As long as we're playing the nobody's ever allowed to make a mistake game, uh, whose mistake caused this whole situation in the first place? Just so you know, you wouldn't have had to call me 50 times if you just did the three tap and made sure you didn't leave your keys at work. NL, people forget things all the time. It's a habit, it's a human's mistake. And then people forget to leave the ringer on all the time. Why is it that there's a double standard on the ringer, but leaving your keys at home? And also, it's like, how is she able to get into her house without having their keys to begin with? It's like, that's also a bigger problem that she could have been stranded outside of her house. That's why you gotta check the keys, man. Redditors be like, if I had a spouse and this was an emergency, I, this would be a deal breaker for me. No assholes here. People here responding telling OP to call 911 if it was an emergency don't get the point because that completely blows out her argument and undermines her position. The point is OP's partner was unable to be contacted. If there had been an emergency, <laughs> just restating the point again. You're missing the point. The point is that if you believe what she's saying and agree with it, then she's right. He still wouldn't have answered. That is what OP means when they worry about him not responding during an emergency. OP was not saying their partner should act as emergency services. No, but like what they're saying, you're missing the point. They're not saying that like your husband would be the cops and the paramedics in the fire department. They're saying at least you wouldn't like fucking die you would, you would be able to get some help, and then when your husband woke up, he would be like, holy shit, 60 missed calls. Let's like, get ahead of this problem now, even though I've got, you got a head start on me. It's about like, I, like, I understand that you're like, I would like to be able to reach my spouse at all times, but at the same time, like, this is about your personal safety if it was an actual emergency. You're right. Police should have driven a snowmobile to his house let him stew for a little bit. Hey, hmm, not so good on the cell phone there, are you, Andy? Well, remember how you used to have a wife? You better hop on the snowmobile. Just kind of putter around for 30 minutes and be like, oh, no, she's actually, she came home while we were on the ride. She just forgot her car keys and was mad at you. I don't understand the, the, the fiction here. You're the asshole this was. I, I can't do, I, honestly, I have, to, I have to move on from this one. Otherwise, we're never going to get to another post. This is insane to me. Again, he should be reachable, but at the same time, like, he, you made a mistake that revealed his mistake that is not even on the same magnitude as your mistake. It's like if you skipped lunch and didn't tell your husband you skipped lunch. Then he came home from work and you expected him to have brought home takeout without asking him. And then you're blaming him for the fact that you're hungry. You didn't need lunch. And he didn't text me saying, get some, uh, get some uh, you know, quesadillas on your way home. You gotta, you gotta eat a snack. So I, 28F, have on occasion put my husband's dirty knives through the dishwasher despite him asking me not to. These knives are extra sharp for cooking and apparently the dishwasher will blunt them. I am terrified of knives always. I'm sorry. It's not funny, but it is funny. It's always like, I did something unacceptable. And the reason is I have a, a genuine like medical, psychological issue. I have, I have a diagnosable phobia of Dijon mustard. If I even see a butter knife with a, the residue of Dijon on it, I enter into involuntary shock. I don't know, she might, it might be genuine trauma, okay? I'm not trying to make fun of it. I'm just trying to get you to laugh at what I said without considering the ethical and moral considerations of making fun of a stranger online. Is that so much to ask? So I 28 have, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. These knives are extra sharp for cooking. Apparently the dishwasher will blunt them. I am terrified of knives to the point where if I see them on the work surfaces, I will begin to panic. My husband is aware of this and I never use these particular knives as, I'm no, as I know I'm not allowed to dishwasher them. If you, like, and this is just an info question. It's not an accusation. You're terrified of knives, but you can use knives. You just can't use those knives. I can't face cleaning a knife by hand. If I have to use one, I will use one of my old knives that I put through the dishwasher. Now, 
By the way, that makes it very hard to cook. I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to tell this to you, but if you have the inability to use a knife, you might want to just maybe work on like some kind of chore wheel or something like that where your husband does all the cooking. Because it's going to be almost, it's a foundational skill. You can make a quesadilla. I, no, because you got to cut the quesadilla after it's done. I don't know what you're going to cook, honestly. Maybe you could just use scissors, I guess. But what is a scissor except for two knives? Uh, persevering. Now, my husband will use his fa fancy knives and leave them dirty either in the sink or on the worktop. They can be there for days, okay? There's a, little, there's a little everybody sucks here. Just the thought of them being out terrifies me. I can't face cleaning them by hand, so I will put them in the dishwasher to, to get them out of my sight. He is free at any point prior to the wash cycle to remove and clean them by hand. I think that's a little ridiculous. You ever hear of out of sight, out of mind? If I didn't see the knife in the sink, I would not assume that it's like, oh, I got to get it out of the dishwasher. Is that where you store dirty dishes to then be removed and cleaned in the sink? I don't think so. That's, that strikes me as invalid. He thinks I'm the asshole for putting them in despite him asking me not to. I think he's the asshole for leaving out dirty knives despite him being aware of my fear. Two things can be true at the same time. We're actually a really good team and barely disagree on anything. But this seems to be an obstacle we cannot agree on. I need internet strangers to tell me who's in the wrong, if anyone. Please and thank you. Yes, I am getting therapy. I get that my behavior and fear are abnormal. I also have OCD and general anxiety that will be negatively contributing. Also, my husband isn't a dirty gremlin or anything. He's genuinely so supporting, loving, so supportive, loving, and great around the house. It's just some sort of weird blind spot we both have. He does all the cooking now that we have a baby. So in fairness, I feel that I should do the cleaning up. Okay, this is not a real problem. Like, you're the asshole for putting them in the dishwasher. Not to be, like, if, if there's dishwasher, if, if the knives cannot go into the dishwasher without being ruined, you should not put them in the dishwasher. Even, like, in the, I, I, I don't even know, like, in the garbage can, put them dirty back in the drawer or something like that. Like, I understand the problem, but, uh, but the dishwasher is, like, the one place they shouldn't go. It, I don't say this lightly. Can't you just yell at him? Can't you just be like, hey, you know I have a phobia? Can you just clean your knives real quick? Can't you just be like, hey, it's like I just this is like the one thing I'm kind of irrational about. Can you clean your knives? So like I think that he's kind of the asshole for not, for knowing this about her and then not making an effort to clean them, especially if they're like there for days. But I do think she's the asshole for putting them like in the one place that they probably shouldn't go. So I, this is like a weird everybody sucks here. But I do also acknowledge that everybody has like. Uh, Everybody has stuff like this, you know, weird little uh, quibbles over stuff that doesn't actually matter. And then an out, for an outside observer, it's so easy. You're like, why don't you just like say how you feel? And you're like, you don't get it. <laughs> so this is not even like that big of a problem. I can't believe this has 10,000 upvotes. This is, these people are going to be fine, in my opinion. <clears throat> Am I the asshole for telling my friend's girlfriend I thought she was a little fat? Uh, you, you, you're starting in a hole. I got to see if you can dig yourself out of this one. He said a little, just a little. My best friend Nick, his girlfriend Marta, and I were hanging out in his basement after smoking a bowl together. She asked him, unprompted, babe, do you think I'm fat? Nick, being the dutiful boyfriend, responded, of course not, of course not, babe. She then turned to me and said, OP, do you think I'm fat? I, I turned to Derpina and I looked at her in the windows of her soul and I said, now here's the thing. I strive to be a very candid person. I will not hesitate to speak my truth because I believe it's, it's most, uh, the, the 21 year oldest Redditor has just logged on. Lying is immoral. Ergo, it's always moral to tell the truth. Okay. I live my life according to a series of principles. I live a principled life, Susie. I will not hesitate to speak my truth because I believe it is always better to be frank with people than to tiptoe around what you actually feel. In my experience, avoiding the truth often leads to confusion and or pain. Wait till you see the damage that telling the truth can do. Of course, I don't want to be an asshole. So if I'm going to say something I think could be taken poorly, I try to be as nice as possible while also remaining candid. Back, in, back to the basement, I don't find Marta very fat. I wouldn't call her obese or anything, but a little chubby? Yeah. I knew if I told her this directly, she'd probably get upset. So I asked her in response, do you want my honest opinion? 
She said she did, so I gave it. My exact words were, I'd like to preface this by saying that this in no way affects how I view you as a person. I don't think that weight is a good measure of who someone is. That being said, a little bit, yes. Ooh. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That's so much worse. When you ask, do you think I'm fat? And they reply, just so you know, uh, what I'm about to say doesn't mean I think any less of you as a person. You could have just said yes. That wouldn't have been as bad as, as prefacing it with this bizarre disclaimer. That's madness, man. You want to talk about radical honesty? Later, Nick texts me and says, I really upset Marta. I owe her an apology for what I said. I don't think I did anything wrong. The way I see it, she asked her my honest opinion and I gave it. Just because she didn't like what my opinion was doesn't mean I was wrong to give it. Fishing for compliments doesn't always go the way you want it to. Why couldn't you just... Like, why couldn't you just lie? Lying is immoral? Yeah, but sometimes it can save you from a situation like this. Obviously, by the way, it does bother him. Like, it, this is the, it is the foundation of, of being a young man, at least in my experience, having gone through it myself. You're like, I'm a pillar of individualism. I live according to a set of principles that I design. And then immediately after doing it, you feel bad and you run to the internet for validation. And you're just like, hey, anyone else in, as insane as me? Can anyone else validate my insane behavior? And yet still let me feel as if I'm a paragon of individualistic virtue. Like, it's just, just lie, man. You still do it today? I know! Plus two me! I've gone to other impartial friends to get their opinions, and they've been pretty split, so I'm asking Reddit, am I the asshole? Yes, obviously. If you think that she's a little bit out of shape... She probably thinks she's extremely out of shape. She just, you're not the first person to plant the idea in her head that maybe she's not, you know, in the kind of condition that she wants to be in, okay? So then you, you didn't just answer her honestly, as if like, oh, nobody else sees, I have unique access to information that nobody else is aware of. You went over the top and said, just so you know, yeah, I think you're fat, but I don't think that makes you like a bad person or anything. Nobody's, she didn't ask, do you think I'm a bad person? She just asked, do you think I'm a little bit fat? And you like, when you wrote like an end user license agreement about insanity, I just don't understand why you would preface it with that. And it makes the, the honesty 10 times worse. It's like when you need to, you know, you need to feed like a cat a pill. So you wrap it in like meat or or like coated in butter or something like that. And then by the time the cat knows that it's actually a pill, it's already swallowed it. You did that, but you put it like in, in hot sauce or like, you know, super glue or something like that. Like you took something bad, an uncomfortable truth, and then you rolled it in something even worse and then said, take some of this, Tubby. There's worse ways to answer this maybe. Like if she said, do you think I'm fat? You could have said something like, ah, who cares about my opinion anyway? You could have said, eh, not really. Like, these are all bad answers. But, like, I don't understand. Like, just nut up and lie a little bit. It's not, it keeps the world running, man. Tell me, telling the truth in every situation is something you can only get away with when you have no responsibilities. I'm sorry to say. As soon as you got shit to do, you're going to lie just to, just to lubricate the gears of industry. Sorry I'm late. There was traffic. Okay, maybe there was traffic, but maybe you could have also left like 10 minutes early. Oh, sorry, I didn't see this until just now. No, you, you saw it, and then you said, I'm going to reply, and then you procrastinated on it, and then you forgot about it, and then you replied two days later. Like, it's just, it happens all the time. You're the asshole. I strive to be a very candid person. I will not hesitate to speak my truth. Re-examine that philosophy. It's not the virtue you think. Yes, okay, I, I would agree with that. Everybody sucks here because tact is a third option besides lying and telling radical truth. But also, don't ask if you don't want to hear the answer. Also, edit. Thanks for all the updoots and my awards. Ask me no questions. I'll tell you no lies. I love this one. Bad, bad. It's so true. 
I'm going to put myself in the firing line here and say as a person who's chubby, my BMI says I'm obese because I'm 4'10 and 9 and a half stone. A stone is 16 pounds. Is this correct? And 16 pounds is around 7.5 kilograms. 7.5 times 9.5 times 16.5 divided by 2.5. She's 30 pounds? Look, I don't need to know the numbers here. That, me fishing for the numbers is actually more problematic than the original post. Like I'm going to, without even seeing this person, I'm going to be like, mm, let me see if you're, let me see if you're big enough for me to take your post seriously. Listen, let's just take them at face value here, okay? And if I ask you a question, I want an answer. I don't really understand the whole thing of fishing for weird compliments with lies type of thing. It's a whole minefield. If I ask my friends if I'm fat and they tell me I'm goddamn well fat and to get my arse on a bloody bike. I don't think it's really fair for you to say you're the asshole when you don't know whether the person is like me and would deride you horribly for lying. We'd take the piss for weeks in my friend group. Most British Redditor found of all time. Or the girl social minefield of prancing around the fucking lavender field hoping to not step on a mine. I'm not like other girls, okay? I'm a cool girl. I'm mostly, I, honestly, I'm just like one of the guys. A lot of the other guys, they, the, the other guys... They can't really talk about this kind of stuff with their girlfriends, you know? They have to always have, like, good manners and stuff like that. I'll put up with crass humor and being verbally abused a little bit. I'm not like the other girls. You want to invite someone out to, uh, to pub night, watch a little bit of the footy, and complain about your partners? I'm the girl you want to call. I'm not like other girls. Jesus, Jesus tap dancing Christ. It was early and I was high when I wrote this comment. Cheers for the awards, lads. Holy cow. That's kind of an incredible post. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not the asshole you asked, and she said yes. People need to really stop asking questions they don't want the answer to now. She's hurt her own feelings. People will really be like, um, I never tell a lie until they get asked, like, why didn't you do something you were supposed to do? And then what they, what they should say if they're into radical honesty is I didn't really make it a priority. I didn't really want to do it. Instead, they start spinning excuses. Oh, well, yesterday I did this instead, and uh, uh, I didn't... Honestly, I don't even think that we should have to do the dishes. I think we should just start eating off of disposable plates and cutlery all the time. I'm radical honesty, by the way. Radical honesty for you? Sweet little lies to protect the ego of mommy's special little boy for me. And that's actually the standards by which I want to live by. So I, I'm not judging too much lest I be judged. But at the same time, like I acknowledge the double standard. I try to, sometimes I, I wither chat with something. Someone said, if you take a poop and your toilet can't flush it, is that the toilet's fault? And I said, is it, your, is it society's fault that you're unhappy? That was a disproportionate response compared to the thing that led to the response in the first place. I acknowledge my own, my own bias and hypocrisy in, the, uh, <laughs> in, the, in this uh, argument. But I always wrap all these in an envelope of, uh, I'm also insane. Everybody's a little bit insane. I might just be better than average at acknowledging my own insanity. Whereas other people, for some reason, like to believe that we're all in the quest to live a perfectly rational life that is uh, it's a fool's errand. It could never come to pass. Stop doing that with your hands. The Jedi mind tricks aren't working. Am I the asshole for tolerating a night out with my girlfriend? <laughs> oh, man. Earlier this year, I gifted my girlfriend tickets to a concert she really wanted to go to that was this past Friday night. I'm not a fan of her music, nor the fact that this concert was in the city, but I wanted to make it a great gift. Welcome to being, not even an adult, welcome, welcome to being a person. So sometimes you're going to do shit. I, I did something selfless for another person, even though I didn't get that much enjoyment out of it. Just go to the concert and like, you know, it's 90 minutes of listening to music. You'll survive. She was elated when I told her I bought the VIP package, meet and greet, pictures with the band, etc., etc. Last week, my girlfriend began asking if we had to get to the venue early. Being the thorough, honest, detailed person that she is, I assured her I would check. 
Instead, I was too busy with work. Honestly, it was getting a bit annoying that every few days she would ask. So I told her I didn't see anything while deleting a bunch of emails from the venue for concerts I don't even care about. On Friday afternoon, she told me she looked. She tried looking things up and was only finding the doors opened at 7. With that, I picked her up at 6 and arrived at the venue for 7. World's stupidest man on planet Earth. Who deletes their emails in 2022? Don't put Dan on blast like this, okay? Dan is a noted email deleter, but I don't think he would make this post. Once inside, she showed security our tickets and asked about the meet and greet. The bouncer informed us the VIP was at 6. I froze. Now my girlfriend turns to me asking if I received any kind of emails because the tickets were in my name. I told her I deleted the emails and she seemed to understand. I actually really enjoyed the whole time. So once her band set ended, we decided to not stay for the last band. And this is where the trouble began. Everything was completely fine. Until she suggested we leave early and then started laying into me for some reason. It's 10 p.m. We're outside of the venue. She suggests we go to a bar a block away and either walk or ride share. Immediately, I said, not a chance. Immediately. <laughs> she suggested we continue having a good time by having a drink or two. I said, no shot, says you. She mentioned that my car was in a secured lot and we wouldn't be far, but I lost my cool, which I admit was not the best way to go about things and told her, you don't go out in the city. There is crime all over the place. She responded that we were in the city. I went off about how I can't stand it here. So she said that we'll just leave. No raising of her voice. She just said she was fine with leaving. She was silent on the way back and I suggest that we go back to my place to finish out the night. <laughs> And she refused. This also pissed me off because I asked what was wrong with the bar next to my apartment and she shut that down with her short responses. Overall, the night cost... Sanest, uh, sanest boyfriend? Overall, the night cost me $300. And while she's saying more to me now as opposed to Friday night, she's still being very distant. She told me she could live with not going to the meet and greet except for how things turned out afterwards and that is when the disappointment truly set in. My response was that I was only bringing her to the concert nowhere else and thinking of her safety. She continued that I shouldn't have bought the tickets if I was only tolerating doing so. Uh, info, where, what city do you live in? Is it under siege by zombies right now? Gotham? Okay, in Gotham, then maybe he has a point of going back to the suburbs. Or if the concert was in... Gastown in Vancouver and she was like hey take me to the this place looks nice it's called the Cobalt Hotel then no 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 then you hey we got to get back to Port Coquitlam okay there's an Earl's uh two, two blocks away from my apartment we'll go to we'll go to Earl's we can get a $17 Moscow mule there okay <clears throat> my response was that I was bringing her to the concert nowhere else and thinking of her safety she continued that I shouldn't have bought the tickets if I was only tolerating doing so. Very true, very true. I do accept I've made some mistakes, chiefly with us missing the meet and greet. The timing of the concert should have made this an unforgettable experience since her grandma just died in my <laughs> Oh, man. Directed by M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah, yeah, you're the asshole. Also, like, it honestly, you sound like, you wrote the post, and it sounds like your girlfriend is a saint. Because, like, you messed up and caused her to miss the meet and greet for the dumbest reason of all time, that you were deleting a bunch of emails from the concert venue. Is You have, like, a 16 megabyte storage cap on your Gmail account or something like that. She still seemed okay with that. She even suggested, hey, we're in the big city. Let's, uh, let's go out for a drink. World's dumbest man of all time said, no, it's not safe here. I'm not saying that, that crime doesn't exist in the city. Trust me, you know, I live in a city where there is some. But at the same time, you know, you're kind of, you're rolling like a D1000. And 999 of the options are going to be okay. Plus... If your car was going to get broken into, it probably would have happened during the concert anyway. It's like uh, you don't leave like an open can of soda out next to a beehive on a July afternoon. You know, there's going to be a stinger in there. You know, 
if it was going to happen, it, you're, you're probably not changing your odds that much by going out for a drink. Now, you probably shouldn't go out to a bar and then drive home, but that's like nobody's talking about that for some reason. But maybe I maybe you would have simply had like a, a low ABV Rattler or something like that. And then, but it's just, oh, she said ride share home. Okay, maybe they are talking about that regardless. Maybe he's scared that the ghost of her grandma is going to haunt him. Well, he should be, his grandma, her grandma should be haunting him. He's not taking her granddaughter's well-being that seriously. Also, I hate to fabricate subtext where it may not exist, but the last like paragraph of this, last two paragraphs, it basically seems like he's like, I spent $300 on this and I didn't even get to have sexual intercourse with my girlfriend. That's what, like, when you're in a, it's a weird line that says, I bought a gift for someone, and then at the end of the line, you resentfully say, the night cost me over $300. Like, it seems like you, you it's kind of just a creepy way to, to frame the whole thing. Stop feeding the trolls, it's a fake post? I don't know, man, maybe. Maybe not. You deliberately deleted the emails because you found it annoying that she asked. As a result, you missed what was the main part of the gift for her. Then you patronizingly told her there wasn't a chance you'd do something else when she was trying to salvage some measure of specialness out of a ruined night. You acted like a petulant child when she said she didn't want to go to the bar near your apartment, which isn't exactly a special or memorable thing to do if you go there all the time. And finally, you misrepresented the whole thing is, uh, is now about you not being sufficiently enthusiastic about the band. Info, was it Imagine Dragons? Because if so, not the asshole. If it was another band, almost anybody, even if it was Broke Inside, you should just tolerate it. If it was Imagine Dragons, I can understand your hesitancy. If it said Sune Miku, listen, I, that's why I feel like I'm so able to comment on stuff like this. I took my wife to a Hatsune Miku concert it was a three-hour drive in an international border away. We had to get a hotel room, and I was surrounded by other Hatsune Miku fans the whole time I was at the, the whole time I was at the arena. I hate this. I'm not insulting Miku. She put on a great performance despite having a sore throat. Okay, but it was like the most impolite series of patrons I've ever seen at a concert in my life. The merch line was like longer than the amount of people that were actually going to see the concert and people were like constantly trying to cut in line they were cutting in line but they weren't even being subtle about it they were going like who cares who cares who cares dude just push in front of these people and then when they would like push in front we'd just be like oh we're standing here and they'd go and then they just walk behind us like it's it was really the concert itself was was great Everything, the atmosphere surrounding the concert gave me a very bad vibe. It did not pass the vibe check, okay? That's awful. I'm not trying to go in that hard, but you know, Josh, it was like, you know how at PAX, there will be people who have like their camping backpack that is like bigger than Norman Reedus's backpack in Death Stranding, and they'll, they walk like this. And then without even checking, they're like doing a shoulder check. They just see something and they go, whoa, like, what is that? Far Cry 6 trailer I've seen 70 times. Hey, where do you guys? And they're like hitting people in the face with their backpack. That was not every patron at the Hatsune Miku concert, okay? But it was more than the average concert. That's all I'm going to say. Anyway, <clears throat> what songs did they sing? She did the one that goes like You know that one? Certified banger. That's a classic. <laughs> you know the one where she starts going off like Twista in uh, Slow Jams? That one? Yes, it's on my sex playlist. <laughs> Have you considered wearing a heart rate monitor when you do this? Okay, hold on. I, I'm going to be honest with you, okay? Let's, let's check. Can I get a stopwatch? I'm going to do a stopwatch on my phone for 15 seconds, okay? And then I'm going to do a multiply by four. I'm not going to lie to you, okay? Three, two, one, start.
Okay, I had 16 beats times four. 60, wrestling heart rate 64? When I was amped up? I'm feeling like Pierce Brosnan from Die Another Day. Holy cow, dude, it's... That's not bad. Am I the asshole for missing my father-in-law's funeral after my mother-in-law booked my husband first class but me economy? Me and my mother-in-law don't have a close relationship. Sorry, they don't have a close rel ship. She's civil towards me but can be a bit passive-aggressive at times and we tend to disagree oftentimes. Describes um, your relationship with... And I don't mean your as an OP. I mean, this is everybody's relationship with about 99% of the human population. It's not that bad. I mean, it's not, it would be nice if you guys were closer, but it's not that big of a deal. We live in a different state. Father-in-law passed away suddenly. Mother-in-law told me and my husband to come attend the funeral. She booked our tickets to fly to her state. But the issue started when my husband told me we couldn't sit together in the plane because his mom had booked him a first-class ticket while I got economy. I was flabbergasted by this. I tried asking him why, but he urged me to suck it up and we'll talk about it later. In that moment, that particular moment, I felt so... In, in that... Why is it written like a musical? In that moment, that particular moment, I felt so much humiliation and contempt. I felt like she was treating me even less, as less than even in her hard times. I decided to not go and just go back home. My husband was shocked by my decision to go home and tried to convince me to go, but I declined. He went alone, and I ended up missing the funeral. He was livid, just calling M3. He was calling his car? Texting nasty things, calling me petty and spoiled. He said I should be grateful his mom paid for my ticket to begin with. Then said that she doesn't owe me a goddamn thing. I argued about how she could have just booked us both in economy if money's an issue, but he called me pathetic for thinking about it when his dad just died. He said it was cruel what I did and that his mom and family will never forget that I missed the funeral over ridiculous reasons. Am I the asshole for going home over this? Um, you know what I realized? Uh, and and I, I've realized this a long time ago, but it's it's nice for this to be put into uh, a more coalescible form, if that makes sense, okay? Some people don't see their life as a comedy. Some people take life very, very, very seriously. Now, I'm kind of a serious guy in some ways. I try to, you know, um, I, I live my life according to a series of values, a code, if you will, Jonathan. At the Continental, you do not shoot anybody in the head at the Continental restaurant, Jonathan, or you'll be disbarred. We will confiscate all your gold pirate coins, Jonathan. <clears throat> but if this happened to me, hypothetically, I think I would instantly switch into Ben Stiller in Meet the Parents mode. I would feel like I'm in an um, early 2000s like romantic comedy. I think I would find it... A little humorous if, if my wife's parents bought my wife a first-class ticket and they bought me an economy ticket. I'll admit that it's not really fair because I have, like a, I have a, an, an outlet for absurdity. Like when, when something that might annoy other people happens to me in public, it's less annoying sometimes because I know I get to farm it for content on Twitch. But I think I would laugh at it both at the time and like... Also, probably like a hundred times as I told the story over and over again until people listening to me got sick of it. It would have been, it, I mean, it, it's almost like you gave me a gift. Rather than have a first class ticket, you gave, me, you gave me a story that I can tell for like hopefully the next 50 years or something like that. People are really blowing up, if this is a true story, which is probably not, but people are really blowing up their families over, like, the slightest injustice, right? It's not that... I, I get that you would be offended that your mother-in-law did this, but is it really worth blowing up, like, your relationship with your husband and, and your husband's family just because you feel disrespected? You're going to get disrespected from time to time. I don't know if this is good advice, <laughs> but, like, there's some situations where you say... Hey, knock that shit off. Treat me better than that. And then there's some situations where you say, all right, I'm going to eat that one up. Suck it up for three hours. And then you laugh with your husband about how your mother-in-law treats you differently. Or, I mean, the, to be honest, and I, I'm being straight up with you. I know this, uh, hero's not a word that we use lightly, okay? But 
if this happened to me, if my parents, which they wouldn't because they love my wife, but if my parents bought me a first class ticket and Kate an economy ticket, I would let her take the first class ticket. Even if I was grieving, I would let her take the first class ticket. So I do think that the husband could have nipped this one in the bud. His dad died though. So what you grieving in first class versus grieving in economy? He's going to be like bawling his eyes out. He's like nothing nothing could bring my dad back, but it would be really nice to have a a chair that converts into a lie down bed. It's not that big of a deal. Like you got you got bigger problems, right? If anything, if you're truly suffering, you might as well sit in coach because it's a proper environment for it. And let your wife, like, I, 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 I can't really put myself in their shoes, okay? But I might be like, hey, you know, my, my dad died. I'm just going to, like, you know, put my head up against the window and, like, try to take a nap or, like, close my eyes or something like that. Why don't you go in first class and have like a few mimosas? I'm not saying like you should party it up, but like, you know, that's the right environment. I don't really feel like celebrating in first class with the, with the, the creme de la creme of society here, you know? Who knows? Plus, here's the thing. She could be doing some networking up there too. You're not in a position to network. I've always said your network is your net worth. So she could be, she could be schmoozing a little bit up there while you're a little out of commission. I'm just saying that's what I would do, Okay. Um, but really, all I'm trying to do is illustrate that there's like many different solutions that could have come along the way to prevent this from getting to the point where like you and your husband might get a, a divorce just because like you didn't want to sit in a slightly less comfortable chair. I get that it's not about the chair, but it is about the chair because you could have made it about the chair if you just sat down in the chair. You're actually annoyed because the mother-in-law is respecting you less than she respects her own son, which of course... Like you expect, you know, if push came to shove, your parents would have your back and be in your corner instead of, you know, the corner of your spouse. But, you know, we all got to pretend that it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kate's parents love me as much as they love their own daughter, of course. Like, no doubt about it. Anyway. But the point is, you don't have to let it get to that point to begin. Someone's got to tank. Someone's got to take the role of Ben Stiller in Meet the Parents that takes all the abuse and just puts a smile on their face and then lets it all out later and says, can you deal with that? I mean, it's no doubt that it's like an everyone sucks here. Like the mother-in-law should have bought them tickets both on the same level. But I also think that the, and whether that's two first class or two economy, they should be sitting together because it's the emotional support between them that's the most important part. But the wife here also sucks because she didn't have to throw like a nail bomb into her family over this. She could have just sat in coach and like watched a movie and, you know, eaten some pita chips or something like that. And then like, then it's no big deal. You just eat it for a few hours and then, you know, do your job. <laughs> no offense, but... <laughs> you know, your, your job is to just be... It's not your family's funeral you know you're supposed to be there and you're like emotional support okay you're tanking and support which doesn't seem fair but it's not worth blowing up the whole squad okay that's fine read the edit i read it what do you want me to say like this doesn't change anything one of the reasons i didn't settle for the economy ticket is because i wanted to sit next to my husband and support him he sobbed the whole ride of the airport and i didn't want to leave his side okay and the other reason is that i felt disrespected by um the uh i felt disrespected by my mother-in-law. And then the other reason is that economy is not as nice as first class. That is true as well. I didn't want to leave his side until he told me we couldn't sit together, at which point I left his side for the entire weekend rather than leave it for three hours in entirely. Point one to the mother-in-law. She will now forever be able to say she didn't even come to the funeral. Look how she didn't support my son in his time of need. And don't get me wrong, the mother-in-law is a complete asshole for this, but no one in the family will care about the plane seats. They'll just remember OP wasn't there. Okay, I mean, I agree with a lot of this, but this is actually how some people see their familial relationships, and that's very, that's very sad to me. You literally just had an unforced error to your mother-in-law. Your mother-in-law, she has a, an advantage over you. She's about to break your serve, Okay. You had service, you got a single fault, and then an unforced error. 
You blundered your queen in the fifth set. Not to mix metaphors. You gave your mother-in-law an end one in a tie game in the fourth quarter. Everybody sucks here. Your mother-in-law won. Well, it can get crazier, apparently. I apologize for getting stunlocked by the relatively sane comment. It was most likely her intention to cause a fight, and she won because you didn't go. Now she gets to bash you for not attending. You didn't support your hubs when he needed it. So now all the nasty things she whispers in his ear while he's there, he's going to agree, re-you. You were put in a losing situation either way. This whole thing sucks. Sorry this happened to you. Hey, you fucked up really bad. Sorry this happened to you. Would love to know your thoughts on this. We're gonna, this is going to cause some disagreement in chat. Everybody sucks here also includes the husband. He could have solved the issue the same way that the, the wife could have been stillered it. The husband could have been stillered it. Now, I understand in context, he's grieving, obviously. So he's A, not thinking straight, and B, emotionally vulnerable. That being said, at any moment, he could have stepped in and said, can, you, can I get a downgrade? Can, uh, uh, we'll trade seats. Like, I'm going to text my mom and tell her, like, when we got the tickets, I'm going to text my mom and tell her, like, that's not cool. Why don't you just put us both in economy and save your money instead? Like, there's so many different opportunities for him to have completely... It's like, you're, you, listen, if you're walking and you're walking on the train tracks, you shouldn't be doing that to begin with. You definitely shouldn't go into the tunnel. He must have gotten the... Uh, an email that was like, hey, honey, here's your flights home. And then he looked at it and said, well, I'm in seat 1A and she's in seat like 35J. And then emailed his mom and been like, hey, you know, this is three. I understand what you're trying to do here, but like I want to sit with my wife throughout the entirety of the flight, okay? So either get us two first class tickets or you can downgrade mine and, and save your money and spend it on yourself because you're grieving as well. But I will, like, the, the core of this issue for me is so common on Am I the Asshole, which is I refuse to ever, ever be even slightly disrespected. And not even, like, some of them are like, my wife slightly disrespected me. Um, what should I do? And all the comments are like, it could literally be some shit like she ate my shredded cheese out of the bag in the fridge when I told her not to once, even though she was really hungry. Every one of the comments is like, she doesn't respect you, get a divorce before she does, which is crazy. But then some of them are like, my wife's nephew said something to me at a family gathering and my wife didn't tell him to knock it off. What should we do? And everybody's like, literally, you got to get out of this family. They're crazy. This shit happens all the time. Like, if, you're, if your spouse is doing something disrespectful to you consistently and you tell them to knock it off and they keep doing it, that's one thing. But, like, you know, your, your spouse's relative doing something once that's like a mild slight and then blowing up your whole life over it is, is idiocy. This pride comes before the fall. There are no sane people on Reddit, though. Like, that's true. That's fair enough. People got some complicated lives, man. So my, my cousin, I'm the oldest of my cousins. Which you believe, but it's hard for me to believe because I had a November birthday, which means that in all of my classes, I was like the youngest or second youngest. But anyway, long story, listen, this is not relevant. It's just my own hang up. I'm the oldest of my cousins, okay? We had our, the rest of my cousins all live in my hometown, five hour flight away. I live over here, coastal elite, passing out pearls of wisdom. Why don't you just drink some kombucha? <laughs> Starbucks, that's cute. Mm, is there a JJ Bean around here? Anyway, we had our kid, end of September 2020. One of my cousins had her uh, daughter, middle of October 2020. So she's like two weeks younger than my daughter. Everyone in the family keeps trying to like organize this stuff to get them to meet. Oh, she's got to she's got to meet her second cousin. She's got to meet her dad's dad's brother's kid's kid. We got to get them to, out to like an event so they can, we just got to get a picture of them together. And finally, I just said to my mom, I was like, "Why?" And then she she thought about it for a second and she was like, "You know what? It's kind of like fair enough. Like it's just cuz they're 
like me and my cousin are family, and we both had kids at roughly the same time, but those kids are not family unless they want to be. Like your cousin, for at least in my family, your cousin is about as far out as you go on the family tree. And my, my cousin's child is part of, she's lumped in with my cousin as a unit, but as soon as that kid turns 18, they're a stranger to me. They just happen, that's just some lady now. If, if the dominoes fell, something happened to my cousin and her husband and like all of their family and somehow it was like, hey, can you take care of her? I would be like, of course, she's family. But otherwise, if she makes it to 18 and they're like, oh, you know, Jennifer graduated from high school today, I would be like, who the fuck is Jennifer? As of today, I don't know her. She's literally just, she's just a person. She's, she's an unrelated individual. I'm not getting on it. They never say, by the way, we're going to come out to Vancouver. They never said, Wait, you want to take a picture? How about you hop on a damn plane? You come out here and you come to our house. We'll take a photo and then you can leave. It's always, you got to come back so that we could take a photo. It's a double standard, man. Anyway, sorry, sorry. I'm mostly just joking. She's a very cute baby, okay? She's very cute. Am I the asshole for not helping a child when they fell over? Today I was waiting for my girlfriend at our local park. I was waiting on a bench looking at ducks in the pond when a child right in front of me fell off of his scooter. He's probably six. I laughed, not out loud. What? The child was crying, being dramatic, when its mother came rushing in to check if he's bleeding. He was not. He wasn't even scratched. The woman looked up to me, seeing me slightly grin, asking why I didn't help him. I responded, he isn't hurt, so why do I need to help him? She got pissy and said, if he was bleeding from his head, would you help? I said, no, probably not. She started having a go at me, acting like I should have helped a random dramatic child up from the floor when he wasn't even injured. I walked away, and from a distance, you could hear her yelling. I can't tell if I wasn't the asshole or I was, because he ain't my kid, he ain't my responsibility. Listen, the, you're, like, the way you're writing the post makes you like an asshole. But like you're not the asshole in the sense that like there was no reason for you to help the kid like when my kid falls over at the playground i don't expect any other parent to like pick them up even like their parents similarly when i'm at the park with my kid and i see a kid fall down i don't pick up the other kid i'm like your parents are here it's just not my place the only reason you're like kind of an asshole is because you keep I mean, you're, you're kind of like doubling down every single time someone's like, could you have a little empathy? You're like, no, I refuse. So it's weird because you're like, you're in the right to have not helped the kid. Which sounds like a bit of an asshole thing to say, but as long as their parents are there. Like if a six-year-old kid's riding a scooter and then they brick it right in front of you and they're bleeding or something and then you look around and their parents aren't there, sorry, you just inherited like a bad situation. If you're in that kid's line of sight, you got to help him. Because otherwise, he's going to be like, this guy didn't help me. And then it, it, you, you, ah, the good people are going to get their pitchforks and their torches and stuff like that. But until I had a kid, I basically did not. I was just annoyed by children in public, for sure. I don't think this guy did anything wrong, except the, he was kind of a dickhead with the way he interacted with the mom. Like, before we had our kid, if there was sometimes kids in public would just, like, talk to you. They'll be like, oh, well, 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 well. and you're like, oh, yeah? And then you just, like, walk away. Now I'm like, whoa, Pog! Oh, well, 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 what? Really? And they're like, yeah, oh, well, 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 look at my dinosaur. And I'm like, wow! What kind of dinosaur is that? And then they go, a Bubasaurus. And I go, a Bubasaurus? But I don't expect, like, someone without a kid to, to act like that. Like, that's... That, if you act like that and you don't have a child, you're like clinically insane. Or you have like a sibling that has a kid or you're good with kids or whatever. But I just don't know why this guy, like I, I'm, I have to say, I have to stick to my principles. He didn't do anything wrong. It seems like the mom, I mean, look, I'm pro, not projecting, but I guess inferring. I feel like the mom was in an emotional state because her kid got hurt. And she said some stuff that crossed the line. Like, hey, stranger, why didn't you touch my child when they fell over? Which is, like, batshit crazy. And then he was probably like, why is this lady getting on my case? I didn't buy her kid the scooter. So he's just out trying to look. He's fishing for, like, an own. But he's not in the wrong in, in any aspect here. 
If anything, he would be like more of an asshole if he didn't help an adult if they fell over. Like if you're sitting on a park bench and like somebody crumbles to the ground in front of you and they're like 35, I think you have an obligation as a member of like the human race to be like, are you okay? Do you need me to call a doctor? Like, are you having a heart attack? But if it's a kid, that's like, you know, there's a caretaker. There, there, at least there should be a caretaker around. Although to be honest, I don't, t if someone was walking by me and they fell over, I would have real concern. I would perform CPR, whether they wanted it or not. But if someone was on one of those like uniwheel electric scooters and they bricked it in front of me and slid like a meter on the sidewalk, I would, I would probably just turn in the other direction and be like, it finally happened. It finally, I knew, is it, I see you, these motherfuckers every day riding those, uh, those weird uniwheels. They've always got full, like, motorcycle leathers on, but they got their hands in their pockets. I'm just waiting for the day when I'm, they're just going, and they hit a rock, and they're like, oh, Can't be riding something like that with your hands in your pockets, man. I tell you, I, I'm sure I have, but I tell you one time I was just uh, sitting on our uh, patio, just minding my own business, and then one of those uh, bikes that had a, a trailer on the back that a t like a toddler can sit in, it's like a covered little tent with wheels on it. So you can bike, but your kid is in the back uh, being towed along, and they were, they were riding, and then they signaled, and then they turned left, but they turned left way too fast uh, or way too sharply. So the trailer on the back jackknifed and then the tent like slid along the road into the bike lane with the kid in it. <laughs> everybody, everybody was like, oh my God. And then the dad was like really freaked out, but he just got out and like put the trailer up on his side and then was like, are you okay? And the kid was like, yeah, yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay. Uh, Anyway, <clears throat> did you laugh? Once I knew the kid was okay, absolutely. Like the first, the moment of it was like very scary. But as soon as the, the kid was like, I'm fine. I was like, yeah, that shit's hilarious. The kid probably thought it was wicked. You're absolutely right. You're the asshole for laughing at an injured kid and grinning at this spectacle. Who does that? Lots of people. You can still be a good person and, and harbor a dark passenger within your, within your brain. Calm down, edgelord, you're the asshole. But, like, listen, he didn't do anything. Plus, you have a hexagonal avatar. He didn't do anything! You're the asshole. The bare minimum when you see anyone fall right in front of you is to ask, are you okay? Listen, it's not the bare minimum. The bare minimum is to do nothing. But, like, sure, it would have. he could have been nicer, but... Having space, having niceness capacity above your actual behavior does not make you an asshole. Yes, you're the asshole. Normal humans react when a child hurt themselves. Get up and ask the kid if he's okay. I don't know if this is something that is actually like... I, I think parenting has actually put me on the side of the childless here in a weird way. Because I'm like, dude, my kid's too. When a six-year-old falls down in front of me, I'm like, get up and go to work. You're old. I'm just like, obviously that's insane. Six-year-olds are in like what? Like kindergarten, maybe the first grade. But I'm hanging out with like a two-year-old. I'm taking her to parks where she plays with like other two-year-olds. They fall down. They don't know what to do, right? They fall down. They're like, ah, what's going on? A kid was mean to me. You got to like, you know, build the scaffolding of what the real world is like. When a six-year-old falls over, I'm like, and... Like, if you're hurt, sure. But, like, they, they at least have the... Cap I'm not saying they don't need to be supervised. I'm just saying, like, they have the faculties to be like, am I okay? Yes. Okay, I'm going to get on my, my scooter and go away. No, they don't. They're six. I'm telling you, I think it's just because I have a two-year-old. Six-year-olds look old to me. Like they, they, a six, when I see a six year old at the park, I'm like, oh shit, watch out. I don't want to, I don't want to get on that guy's bad side. Whoa, hold on. 
and I see other adults, I'm like, we're, we're the same size, that's fine. I look at my kid, and then I look at like a kid that's in the second grade, I'm like, oh, Jesus. Jumping Mary and Joseph, who brought the beefcake? This kid is like eight feet tall, what the hell? This kid's wearing pants with a fly? What are you, like 100 years old? I just genuinely, I, I, you look, so much of my banter in the last two years is like, you guys wouldn't understand unless you like have a child. This one, I'm like, I, it's the first time I can extend an olive branch to the r slash anti-natalist community. I, I don't think they did anything wrong. I think everyone else is being needlessly self-righteous. Also, like kids fall down like all the time. Like it's actually like the least big deal of all time. The first time my kid fell down, it was a nightmare. I was like, this is a disaster. She's probably going to have a concussion. We can't let her go to sleep tonight. She's going to have a permanent brain injury. After like two or three of them, they take some like grievous injuries. We were walking with our kid one day. Um, she was like, I don't want to hold your hand. We said, okay, be careful. Immediately tripped on an uneven sidewalk tile. Splat, got up like blood in her mouth she didn't crack a tooth or anything like that but she bit her lip like on the way down blood like like sputtering out of her mouth all over her shirt all over my shirt and i was like oh my god this is crazy he pulled out some tissues dabbed it i was like are you okay she's like no we walked uh, like half a block i was like are you okay she's like yeah daddy i want to walk like it's kids are built different man Am I the asshole for not letting her boyfriend sleep over? Okay. All right. Let's see. This has got... It's, it's uh, intimacy, uh, your house, your rules, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, on mobile and throwaway because my daughter uses Reddit. Well, there's your first red flag. Are you sure that her boyfriend is real? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, sorry, that was beneath me. It was just a, it was just a witty little loan, okay? My 50, my, I'm 50. My daughter is in college and stays at her boyfriend's a lot, which me and my wife do not like very much, okay? Tough. We let her do what she wants nonetheless. She pays for her own tuition and works, plus pays for all of her own things, minus we pay for rent. We have a room for her and she does live with us. Why are you, why are you writing like this? Where did you learn how to write sentences? You got the main idea at the back end of the sentence and all the mitigating circumstances at the front like a psycho? She asked if her boyfriend could come sleep over too so she could feel more comfortable staying at home more often. We said absolutely not. She was upset because she said it was her own room and that she's been dating him for almost three years. We just will not allow it under our roof and she threatened to move in with him. We really want her to continue living here but do not want them sleeping together under our roof. We do not like it with her there either but she's an adult we have a pretty good relationship so, so this has been hard for us am i the asshole yeah you're crazy here's what i'm gonna say i can understand at the very least having negative feelings about the fact that the child that you raised is now old enough to have sleepovers with her boyfriend okay the problem you have is thinking that the way that you deal with the negative emotion in that case is to do something about the st stimulus that led you to feeling the negative emotions instead of looking within yourself at what's causing those negative emotions and learning how to deal with it. You're a 50-year-old man. When a situation comes like this, comes up like this, and you're like, I feel bad... I need to do something about the thing in the real world that's making me feel bad. You got to you got to progress past that. Sometimes yes. If I feel hungry, I'll eat some food. I feel sleepy, I'm going to take a snooze. But if you're like someone is doing something that's well within their own rights um and they're my child so even though sometimes I have to like uh you know, support them even though it wouldn't be something that I would do for myself. That's when you got to look within yourself and be like, well, oh, my daughter's pissing me off so much with her behavior. Why is her completely normal behavior pissing me off so much? You just got to suck it up. You got to Ben Stiller it. I'm sorry. Why is this man talking and not reading the edits? Because I'm making a good point. Everybody else is just like, read the edits, read the edits, ah, la, 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 read the edits, ah, ha, 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 read the edits, he's crazy, la, 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 la. I'm trying to have the slightest 
shred, shred of sympathy for this man at the very least. Dude, dude, skip the third act. Get to the part where Gulp Shitto shows up in the mid credit scene. <clears throat> dude, I don't care. Okay, like, dude, he kills the bad guy who's like just like himself but in a different colored suit. Dude, he, okay, whatever. Get to the part where Adam Warlock pops out of the cryo chamber so I can go on r slash uh, Marvel Studios and be like, what does this mean? Anyway, I'm just saying... I mean, this is, there's like a lesson in this for me. I'm not a perfect human being, but sometimes when you feel negative emotions, it's because something is fucked up and you got to fix it. But sometimes the thing that's fucked up is the way you're looking at the situation. Like if your kid is in their 20s and they're an adult and they're doing adult things and you feel bad, the secret is not to put them under lock and key. The secret is to be like, I don't know, take up golf or something. Like you're in your 50s. You got to find something to take your mind off it because they're doing, they, that's what adults do. I don't, under, I don't understand the problem. I also think it's how naive are you to think that an air mattress and a cracked door is going to resolve what's... Like, why don't you just say it? You don't want your daughter having sex with her boyfriend, even though they're both adults. You don't want it to happen to begin with, which I think is, by the way, not an atypical thing to not want... But you also have to acknowledge at some point that you're like, okay, at this point, I'm the asshole about it. You can still have the asshole feeling, but you could be like, it's, that's a good way to describe it. It's crazy, but it is a little understandable. But like, come on, you're not going to, the air mattress and the crack door is not going to stop you. Like, what, what do you think is, that's going to accomplish? You're just, by trying to keep your daughter close, you're pushing her away. I hate to put it in the Hallmark lifetime movie sort of way but it's it, it's the core of the issue the way i see it at least edit our son already moved out into an apartment with his girlfriend he does not come around often edit my daughter texted she found the post i will do an update once we talk edit we spoke she says she's going to stay with her boyfriend more and will try to move out at the end of the semester we said he could sleep on the floor or couch but not her bed she said she understood and left we are not on bad terms she explained her point of view but we are not willing to compromise that far thank you all for the words of advice this is like I think this is fake. Maybe they're all fake, but like, I feel like this is, I, I just don't see a 50 year old man writing this post and then coming back and saying, edit, my daughter texted, she found the post, I will do an update once we talk. Like, I don't, I don't see the person who they claim to be writing this line. I do see someone in Overwatch queue writing this line and then playing three ranked games and then coming back and writing the last part of the edit. That's, that's my conspiracy theory here. But, like, this is, I, this is the kind of post that pisses me off a little bit. Because, like, it's, why are we... Obviously, if this is real, you're the asshole. You don't have a leg to stand on. This reeks of Boomer. That's why you have to be skeptical of things that confirm the biases that you hold. If you're saying something like, no, I could totally see someone doing this, you've got to look within yourself and figure out why it is that you're not applying the same level of scrutiny to this post because of your ageism that you apply to every other post on the website and the animals are leaving and the... <clears throat> anyway, am I the asshole for threatening to leave my daughter's wedding because of her rules similar to this post r slash conservative usual suspects cry foul as gop makes squad the focus of dot 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 okay <laughs> thanks reddit i appreciate the based on your browsing history <clears throat> my 48 male daughter's 26 f wedding was yesterday she moved back to our home state of utah with her fiance after living in Boston for college and dental school. She does not seem happy to be back here and she only moved back because her husband's company transferred him here, okay? She knows that in our family, families run large. Honestly, seems like a great place to open a dental practice. I think you're not the asshole. She's not seeing the big picture here. High earning families with an average of eight kids per household? That is, a, that is a beautiful place to open a dental office that shares a location with the Chuck E. Cheese. Wait, okay, sorry. May, she is one of three kids only because my wife became sick 
after our youngest, but it is not uncommon to have families of eight. When she started planning her wedding, she started worrying about venue capacity and having to spend money on babysitters. For couples with small kids on her list, she made it clear she could not, she could not accommodate kids four and under at this wedding. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. Most of these posts that say, like, you can't bring young kids to the wedding, I'm like, that's unreasonable and selfish. There might be an asterisk that says, except in cases of Utah. I didn't consider the edge case. If everybody in your family also has like six kids of their own on average, then I could understand being like, we got to do something. Also, like, and this sound, I, mean, I, I don't live in Utah, okay? But when you have six kids and your mom had six kids and, and your, your grandparents had six kids, don't you have like 27 aunts or something like that? Doesn't just like one aunt look after 40 kids for that day? They all get like one hard-boiled egg for lunch and, the, and a slice of bread. And then like, I, it, it takes a village to raise a child. But in this case, doesn't it just take one adult to handle the village while the wedding's going? I thought you had like a support system. My parents live a five-hour flight away. We're, we're handling all this shit ourselves. I feel like if I, if I had like eight aunts, I would be like, uh... <clears throat> pardon me, I'm feeling a little under the weather today. Aunt Sally, could you come over and watch the baby for a bit? Oh, Aunt, uh, oh, sorry, Aunt Sally's busy. Uh, Aunt, uh, Aunt Judy, could you come over and watch the baby for a bit? Hey, could we, uh, oh, uh, Aunt uh, Jennifer, could I come, could I drop the baby over there? I'm not feeling well today. <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. Like, isn't, isn't that what they're there for? Um, kids under four can't come to the wedding. Okay, fair enough. This caused a lot of ire and we got phone calls asking why. My daughter's rationale was she thought older kids would enjoy a party more. My daughter's younger sister, Ashley, has been married for two years and begged her sister to... My daughter's younger sister, Ashley, who is also your daughter, has been married for two years and begged her sister to invite her husband's brother and his wife to the wedding too. Ashley's brother-in-law and his wife have five kids, four of which always lie and one of which always tells the truth. Four of whom are under the age of four. It's your life. When they RSVP'd, they indicated they'd only be bringing their eight-year-old daughter. I know Ashley's husband's brother well as he funded my brother's new business and employs Ashley's husband, my son-in-law, in a job that allows Ashley and him to be full-time parents to their kids. What the fuck is happening here? Your brother-in-law is also his brother's boss and also was the investor in your... This is like Fargo, man. It's too much. It's all wrapped up and it's, it's, it's melting down. However, that side of the family took a while to warm up to Ashley as they are wary to newcomers. So the day of the wedding comes and everybody arrives with the kids they RSVP'd for and then Ashley's brother-in-law arrives early with all five of their kids. The nanny they have for their kids is not there. My daughter is angry when she hears of this. The explanation is that their younger kids were upset and they wanted to be in the wedding photos too. An argument ensues where my daughter says they had on-call nannies and just for whatever reason decided this was the event they didn't want to leave their kids for. On-call nannies? You could do that? You could Uber a nanny? On-call nannies. Some on-call laurels, maybe. I look over. Ashley is getting upset. Ashley's getting upset! The brother-in-law and sister-in-law won't budge. The toddlers are getting anxious and starting to loudly cry. I finally tell my daughter just to let them in or we'd be here forever. She asked why I was taking their side. I finally say that she either lifts this child-free policy for family or just canceled the wedding because I'm done with her rules and leaving. My daughter says, really, Dad? Way to take sides. She then stormed off, and there was a minute where she considered walking down the aisle with her future father-in-law. She ended up relenting, but says her wedding is marred by this event. Am I the asshole? I was afraid this would become the standoff, and Ashley would face ire from her in-laws. 
Got a couple of different things here, okay? First one is, you're the asshole because your life is too complicated. And I'm sure that you're probably doing some self-reflection on that right now. Your life is too complicated. You're, you, you got too many kids and cousins and sisters and brothers and all of their... They're not just relatives. They're, they're all wrapped up in your personal businesses and, and affairs and stuff like that. You have too much coupling and not enough cohesion, okay? You need to, you need to refactor your life a little bit. Why is our conservative similar to this post? Probably because AI is bad and they say the word Utah in the OP. I think that's the main reason that this is drawing the, the, the two halves together here. I don't really, like, you can have eight kids if you want to have eight kids. Like, that doesn't really bother me. It's not a life I would choose for myself. But if you're like, am I the asshole because my family life's really complicated? I'm like... What do you expect? I have seven brothers and sisters. Every single one of them has six kids as well. Am I the asshole for like not keeping their names straight? I'm like, well, you better get a fucking dossier, dude. This is a life you chose for yourself. I don't even know how to like... like it, it, it is just like a Robert Altman film. There's too many characters, man. I don't know how to tease this apart. What I do know is you... If this story is real, you should not have taken anybody but your daughter's side on the day of her wedding for having what appears to be a fairly reasonable clause that was violated. If you're going to violate a clause, you got to give advance notice. You can't just spring it on them and then ask for permission. That, that's the asshole move. So like the, the core of the issue is, yes, you're the asshole because you got like, I don't know. You're, you're a people pleaser, and it's, even though it's your daughter's special day and she made a reasonable request, you're like, why can't we all just get along anyway? But, like, it's more like, man, eight kids. <clears throat> I know the dad only has three. He only has more than average. Four kids under four? Like, I just want to say, like, rip to you, my brother. That's crazy. Also, like, rip to your wife, for sure. I'm sure there's people in that situation in this chat, which is, again, is fine. It's your life. But, man, it takes, like, 0.8 years just to make one. They were all singles, too? There, were, there wasn't any, any two-piece combos in there? Wrong. 9 out of 12 is 0.75. Hey, guess what? World's uh, smartest Redditor. The average uh, gestation period is actually 40 weeks. <laughs> Can I get a 40 divided by 52 check real quick? It's actually going to end up being like 0.78. Please don't be 0.77. That means they're right. Please, please. 0.78, 0.769, son of a bitch! <clears throat> All right, you, you win this one. You win this. I'm not reading the rest of this. It's just annoying. I'm mad at you for having such a large family. And that's not fair. I need to examine within myself why that makes me so mad. It's not jealousy. And it's not sympathy. I don't know. It's a different emotion. I'm still trying to figure it out. Am I the asshole for making my wife walk to her 200 foot to her... Have you ever had a dream that you, that you wanted you to do you so bad you could do anything? Am I the asshole for making my wife walk to her 200 foot to her parking spot? Look at these edits, man. We live in a townhouse with one garage parking spot. I park my EV in the garage so I can charge it overnight and keep it out of the elements. There are guest parking spots right next to the garage, but when those are unavailable, I request that my wife parks her car a beat-up 2006 Prius on the street, which is 200 feet from the garage down an asphalt driveway. She leaves for work at 6 a.m. Well, I don't work until 8 a.m. Am I the asshole for not letting her park in the garage? Yes. I'm, I'm also, I'm trying to figure out the, I'm trying to figure out the, the kinematics of the situation. You have a townhouse that's separated from the street by a 200-foot 
driveway. Edit 7 explains this. Oh, th thank you, thank you. The driveway is shared amongst my neighbors and no one is allowed to park there. No, this doesn't, that doesn't explain it. I'm trying to picture in my house or in my head how this works. So I'm, I've put a townhouse. So there's like, I don't know, there's a complex, maybe there's like eight little townhouses closely in the same area. Then there's a 200 foot driveway that goes from the garage near the townhouses. 200 feet? A 70 meter long driveway? I'm solely financial resp financially responsible for both cars. I, this is the last, this is how you know you've lost the argument, no disrespect. I know how that sounds, but as soon as you're like, I'm, my bad behavior might be justified by the fact that I paid for this, like that is how you, you, do, you don't have a leg to stand on, especially when that's edit number one. My wife has broken the side mirror and scraped the Prius backing out of the garage on two separate occasions. Okay. Number one, don't care. Number two, like, no offense, accidents happen. She's driving a car from 2006. I'm not going to say she's been driving every, like, 16 years, but, like, at the same time, Bay Area, so lows are still in the low 50s. Safe neighborhood with well-lit streets and sidewalks. She agreed to the parking arrangement before the car was ordered. I'm not trying to flex nor being a Tesla bro. I figured you all wanted more specificity. The driveway is shared amongst my neighbors and no one is allowed to park there. Yeah, you don't park on a driveway. A shared driveway, at least. You don't. I was like, Devin, you heard the Jerry Seinfeld joke? What's next? We're going to drive on a parkway? I've driven the Prius for 11 years before passing it on to my wife who drove an even crappier 90s car. She's sentimentally attached to the Prius and won't trade it in until it kicks the can. What the fuck is the problem with the... Nobody's mad she's driving a Prius. What's the problem? Nobody's saying buy your wife a car that doesn't have to be parked. I mean, what, what do you... I refer to the Prius as beat up because it has dents, chipping paint on the roof and hood and paint transfer from previous run-ins. I walk her out to her car when the distance is not within view of our bedroom. Her commute is 10 minutes inner streets versus my 40-minute highway commute. <laughs> I don't understand, like, the problem. I believe this is a real post, though, just due to, like, the insane way that it's written. I actually, listen, I don't think he's like that much of an asshole. It's just like a weird thing to go to the internet to try to fix. Like, I understand, listen, the EV has to be charged. With an 80-minute commute, there, surely it doesn't have to be charged every day, right? There's no way that, it's not like a cell phone from 1993, it doesn't pass the, 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 the smell test. So you're telling me if he had like a 90-minute commute, he would not be able to, he would have to swap batteries halfway through. It doesn't make sense. People are going on like road trips. I get they have to charge like through the road trip, but at the same time, like it doesn't, it, it just doesn't seem right to me. I guess, here's the thing. I think he's kind of the asshole for the way that he phrased it, saying he's making his wife walk 200 feet. He's not really making his wife walk 200 feet. It's like the circumstances making the, making the wife walk 200 feet. I think she should maybe like chill out about it. I just don't, his desire to breathlessly defend himself and be like, uh, I, I'm not doing anything wrong is weird to me. Like, isn't this a situation where maybe like your wife is like, I wish I didn't have to walk so far to get to my car. And rather than present her with 11 bullet points of why it's not your fault, you just say, yeah, I know, it, it does suck. Sorry. Like, you just show, like, some sympathy instead. Like, it is what it is. I also, I mean, I, I do think that, like, you know, why can't he drive the Prius some days and her drive the, what we have to assume here is a Tesla some days. And, they, I mean, they could alternate. If you're, if you're, 100% concerned about, like, fairness, then you could alternate. But it seems like the only way that he's concerned about fairness is because he wrote the contract up and she signed it before they bought the car. And nothing is more fair than tort law. Because she's attached to the car? It's fair then. Well, honestly, like, I hate to say it because I, like I don't like this guy from his post. But, like, at the same time, sounds like she should just kind of suck it up then. If she's sentimentally attached to the Prius and then 
his Tesla needs to be charged every night in order to make it, which I don't buy for the record, but if we're assuming that that's real and it has to be charged every night uh, in order to actually allow him to get to and from work the next day, then like, welcome to life. Sometimes you want to eat like, you know, chicken fingers and fries for dinner every night, but you're like, I should have some green leafy vegetables so I don't die in my 40s. Like you just, they, sometimes you got to, circumstances dictate you got to do some stuff that you don't necessarily want to do. You're the asshole for being an annoying Tesla bro. First thing I thought of too, instead of using my vehicle, he says, it's my Tesla Model Y. Did he edit that out of the post originally? I was on his side until I, I, maybe there was a stealth edit there. If I wasn't 100% sure from the post, your defensiveness in the comments and inability to take criticism makes me think you're the asshole. If you want to brag about owning a Tesla, try a car-related subreddit instead of inventing a story to post on Am I the Asshole. It's, it's a Model Y. Is he bragging? That's the, that's the lesser priced of the two SUV SKUs. You know, if he had a Roadster from like 2011 or whatever, I would be like, that's rare. I'm driving past Tesla Model Ys like uh, 15, 20 times a day just on the way to daycare. You live in Vancouver, though? Yeah, I know. So what? <laughs> I'm not saying it's a cheap car. I'm just saying, like, is he really out here trying to brag about owning the less expensive Tesla SUV? When he lives in the Bay Area, you pieces of crap. You princes of Maine, you kings of New England. He's the one who they don't give me this. You don't understand life. You live in Vancouver. This guy lives in the damn Bay Area. You're the asshole. I assume since your wife goes to work at 6 a.m., she's the first one home as well. So you expect her to ignore the empty garage and park on the street so you can park your precious Tesla out of the elements? It would be one thing if you needed it to charge, but it shouldn't be an every night thing. You just expecting that you automatically get the garage because you drive a Tesla makes you the asshole. Okay? This fair enough? California, the elements, you're the asshole, get a rain cover. <laughs> oh, man. This is good. This is too far, though. You're the asshole. Bragging about your car all the while talking crap about your wife's car. Start saving for the divorce now because you're going to need it. Listen, you don't know. She could be as fucked up as he is. People are all, they always read these one-sided posts and they go, I can't wait for your wife to divorce you. She married him in the first place, shithead. She might be crazy too. She might be worse for all we know. If her concern is being attacked at 6 a.m., any good husband would get his ass out of the bed and walk her to her car. Is that what she's scared of? This is a tough one for me. I'm not saying I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't be thrilled about it, though. But I would also probably, I don't know, I feel like I would just be like, why don't you just take the other car today and I'll drive the Prius? I, maybe this is like hater tech. Maybe I, well, I don't know. We're, we were victims of crimes not just a week ago, not but a week ago. Our barbecue cover got stolen right off our patio. We got that son of a bitch on the damn security camera. VPD is like, please stop calling us. We have more serious problems. But I'm like, is it, 6 a.m. doesn't strike me as like, prime getting jumped territory 5 a.m yeah man 100 percent. if you're still up at 5 a.m that's like you're in the espn red zone but 6 a.m that's when the normies start to like reclaim the earth say from around like 1 a.m to 5 a.m is when like that's when i would be like i need a uh, on star or something like that at, at 6 a.m you're seeing people like walk out of their house in bathrobes and pick up the newspaper from their front step so true at 6 a.m the normies assemble da, 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 da. 5.59 ah six we good listen i don't claim to know how the mind of a violent criminal works i just know what i observe or what I think that I observe in my imagination, at least. Am I the asshole for not clapping when my sister sang in her voice class? Well, is it because she was bad? 
Are you really going to be... Okay, I, I should probably read the post before I get upset. But like... you, I, I hate when people are... Like, being principled is good if your principles are sane. But just like the post where it's like... You know, the guy's girlfriend was like, do I look fat? And then the guy was like, I think it's immoral to ever tell a lie. So I said, yes. Before I, before I answer this, I just want you to know, I don't think any less of you as a person. I think you're a great friend and a great partner. I love spending time with you. That being said, yes, yes, you do look a little fat. But like, being... What, what's the word that they, they uh, Silicon Valley CEOs use? Uh, radical honesty. This is like this, people were like, well, we're only supposed to clap when we enjoy the performance. Are you, you realize you're talking about hitting your hands together in a rhythmic fashion to produce noise like a caveman? Get over yourself. Just, just do the bare minimum to like make them feel better. Just to not get yourself in trouble so this post doesn't have to exist. Anyway, my sister and I are taking the same voice class at a community college. A requirement of the class is that you sing five times over the course of the semester. My sister is incredibly shy and has sang five times, but it's always been on Zoom for the professor. Why is that so much more anxiety-inducing to me? To, to stream you singing on Zoom seems like ten times more awkward than singing in public. Honey came in and she caught me red-handed Creeping with the girl next door Picture this, we were both butt naked Banging on the bathroom floor How could I forget that I had given her an extra key All this time she was standing there She never took her eyes off me A couple things are nobody knows I'm her sister me, uh, Pepe in the corner of the party. Nobody knows I'm her sister. We all know we saw you make the Am I the Asshole post. You guys eat lunch together every day and are four years apart in age. We all, you got the same names. They don't, I saw the, that uh, yesterday. It's Blade in the corner. But uh, the sprinklers are on at the party and they're shooting out blood. And uh, Blade is saying... They don't know it's open season on all suckheads. I think I'm in my Blade posting arc, honestly. The thing is, some motherfuckers really are trying to ups ice skate uphill. No, not, not Drain Gang. I'm talking about Blade. The shitty Marvel Snap card. Hey, he's not that bad. A 1-3 that is a discard engine. As long as it discards Apocalypse, it's okay. Anyway, a couple things. Nobody knows I'm her sister, and she's by far the youngest in the class. So everyone babies her a little. My mom's friend's daughter, Anna, is also in the class. And my mom asked Anna to watch my sister and make sure she's doing okay. Anna also drives my sister to and from class because I go with my friends. Anna babies her a lot. She also gives her candy and takes her out to eat before class. And she makes sure everyone's really nice to her. I mean, she's literally 15 years old. So this does not seem crazy. It sounds like you're, you resent the fact that you're... Teenage sister is being treated like a child when she is a child. My sister sang on Tuesday when she was in a practice room. Anna went around and told everyone to clap for her no matter how she does and to only give nice comments because she's terrified. Then my sister sang and she sucked. She was looking down the whole time and had her arms around her chest. They had to restart the song twice for her. She was ahead of the music and didn't get half the notes right. Everyone clapped for her except for me. Why? Why, why do this to yourself? It's a self-inflicted wound. It's like Matthew Perry saying, how come River Phoenix is dead, but Keanu Reeves is still alive? When Keanu Reeves was just living his life. Like, you just have no reason to create this problem for yourselves. You could have just gone, you could have just clapped, great job, gone home, watch Netflix, make a grilled cheese, whatever. Like, who cares? I don't think I was rude. I just told her the song needs a lot more work. She should probably pick a different song, and she needs to calm down before she sings again. Bro, you're in a community college voice class. Fucking relax. Like, it's not, you're not at Juilliard. You're not uh, the, the cast of Hamilton or something like that. What's the problem? You're in a voice, a voice class at community college? You're in a class with a, with a 15-year-old kid. How serious could it be?
Anna ended up taking her home. This is a kind of like, okay, so again, and this is not meant to be punching down. But like in 2015, I was like, I feel like getting some night classes in, okay? So I, I, I was like, maybe I'll, I'll learn some computer programming. So the first place I looked was Vancouver Community College. I thought, I've never been to community college before in my life. I thought that I could go learn computer programming there. Maybe that was naive of me. I, I opened up the course calendar, figure out what was going to happen, you know, September, or, or I think it was like spring semester 2015. And the shit was like, get a diploma in food service, learn how to paint birdhouses, learn. And I was like, wait, th like no disrespect, but this is clearly not the institution that I, that I should be angling towards in order to get the education that I'm looking for in this particular domain. That's not to say, like, I think it would be cool now that I've given up on, on having any ambition in life to go to a community college and be like, you know what? Maybe I'll take a class on like sports broadcasting or something like that. Maybe I'll take a class on, uh, I, it would be nice to take a class on, on carpentry or something like that to learn how to, I'm not going to be a carpenter, but to be a little bit more handy or something like that for sure. So instead I went to, you know, a, a technical institute and then, you know, the rest is history. I'm here before you today. <laughs> but like, you don't need to be this, extreme in your criticism you're in a community college voice class you're not simon cowell on american idol like i don't understand the i don't understand where, where you get off trying to be like the the bad cop anna ended up taking her home early when she got back to class she pulled me aside and asked me if i really had to make those comments and if it was absolutely necessary i'm mad at op not just for being a dickhead but for making anna's life harder you're just, you're making things hard for everyone around you. Like, is life not hard enough? I said I would have said that to everybody. She doesn't get special treatment just because she's afraid to talk or sing in front of people. When I got home, my mom yelled at me for being mean to my sister, said she cried in her room for a half hour because of how her performance went. I don't think it was a big deal, but <laughs> okay, like, who asked? Everybody else does, so I want to know if I'm the asshole. Yes? I don't know, there is a, a certain proportion of people are like, Every endeavor anyone ever does needs to be met with the constructive criticism, but very, very harsh constructive criticism. Otherwise, if they're not subjected to the crucible of mockery, how will they ever find the motivation to get better? Bro, it's a community college voice class, okay? They're not, they're not going straight from St. Lawrence College to Broadway, okay? It's not... It, this is not necessary in this domain. They're just having fun. There's a place for that. Yeah, there's a <laughs> people who think J.K. Simmons is the good guy in Whiplash. J.K. Simmons is the good guy in Whiplash if you were needing motivation to become the world's best jazz drummer, okay? It's a matter of perspective who the good guy in Whiplash is. Miles Teller is also not the good guy in Whiplash. He chooses to make the deal with the devil in order to get... He chooses to make the drumming more important than anything else in his life. Yeah, the good guy is like the dude's dad, I think. I can't remember. Anyway. But it's like, you know what? It, it, I, not to bring it back to this every stream, but it, it, it always reminds me of like in Magic the Gathering. It's like Friday Night Magic. You get your ass beat 2-0 in the first round and then somebody's like, hey, do you want to do a post-mortem of what went wrong in the game? And you're like, no, that's okay. I'm just here to have fun, not to be, like, condescended to. Like, I don't think it's a, a rude thing to, like, show someone the errors that they made. But at the same time, it's like, let's not pretend that I'm here at Friday Night Magic to eventually, like, get on the pro tour. I'm literally just playing... I'm just playing on curve. I'm just trying to pass some time. If, if everything goes right, maybe I'll go two and two, and I might win a pack or something like that. It's no big deal. I don't need to... Don't, don't bother me with the post-mortem. Put the slide ruler away. Exactly. It's okay. I would rather like just talk, not about that. I would rather be like, hey, what brings you to Friday Night Magic? Because it's pretty abnormal for like a 24-year-old single guy to spend his Friday night at a card shop. And then we'll learn about each other as a, as a, as a result of that. And, and who knows? Maybe we could find some common ground. But I don't need to just... I'm also like... I, it, it was the post-mortems where I realized that not everybody was playing the game like me. Like as soon as I take a turn, I don't remember. 
what the turn was. And then um, when you, you play against someone who's actually good at magic, they're like, here, let me reconstitute the exact board state on turn three. And you're like, what the, you remember that? That's taking up space in your brain? And then when you tapped your mountain, it gave you free mana, but that shit, and I'm like, what? I don't even remember doing that. I, I don't remember that in the slightest. I just remember scooping. Am I the asshole for financially contributing more to one child's life? This is like the 50th post like this we've read, and it's always a little spicy. I love, dude, the, the similar to this post always makes me laugh. Like, I, I, I got to figure out, I've got to reverse engineer how the number one most similar post to this one is r slash Volkswagen Golf GTI just hit 200,000 miles. <laughs> Maybe he bought his, one of his kids like a, a car and not the other one. Congratulations to you, though. No disrespect. <clears throat> that is kind of sick, though. From two years ago. <laughs> From, dude, February 25th, 2020. Holy cow. They didn't know. Have you seen the, the, the TikTok that's the guy? Sorry, he's running the other way. He's running like this. There's no other way. We have to fix the timeline. So I got to do that one more time. That was looking kind of, that was looking like exactly the way I wanted it to look. There's no other way. We have to fix the timeline. Anyway, we have two kids, Ava and Heather. So your kids are 30, they're in their 30s. You're old. This better be a serious problem. If this is an unforced error, I'm going to be very upset. You're old. You should know better. About 12 years ago, Ava got engaged to her now husband. We bought them a house in our neighborhood and the next year paid for their wedding. Heather has lived in a few different cities, taking different college programs. She ke seems content to keep exploring where her happy is, and I think that's great. But, but, about 10 years ago, different plots of land came for sale in our neighborhood. We asked Heather which one she wanted. She thanked us for the thought, but said she didn't know where she wanted to be and that we shouldn't buy land for her. We ended up buying a plot of land near us. We told her she again thanked us, but never made use of the land. Fast forward and now, Heather approaches us nervous and asked if we would be able to help her with a down payment for a house in the city where she lives. She was clear she understood if that was not possible. This has caused an argument between myself and my wife. I would love to help Heather, but honestly, we're in different financial circumstances now than we were before. We're hoping to retire soon and do not have a lot of excess money. My wife thinks that Heather does not ask for much, and we've clearly helped one child significantly more than the other. Ava's wedding cost ten, tens of thousands of dollars, and the house was obviously hundreds of thousands. She thinks she, we should sacrifice whatever we can to help Heather. To be clear, we have, the fin we have financially helped Heather over the years, helped her with decorations when she's moved. Decorations? Like, like furniture, okay. For, with furniture, etc. So, I mean, decorations. I'm like, a house versus decorations. It's like saying you bought the pizza on moving day and you bought a house for your other kid. Like that, it just seems like there's an order of magnitude difference. I know it's not the same, but I want to be clear we're involved in both kids' lives. I also know that Heather would be uncomfortable if she knew us contributing to her house was impacting our retirement. I think if we talked to Heather openly about the differences in our financial circumstances now and then, she would understand. My wife wants to sell the piece of land in our neighborhood to give Heather the money. I don't really want to do that for a few reasons, including that I think Heather would regret in the future because she mentioned once or twice over the years that she will want to move back home when she's older. Prices for land here have gone up significantly. To be frank, nobody in our family could ever afford to buy here or now in the future. They're Vancouver posting. To provide more clarity, Mel and I are both women. That seemed to cause some confusion in the comments. That's not going to save you from the ire of Reddit, okay? You might have thought that, that when they thought it was an old man, they were like, okay, boomer, but now that they find out that you're a woman, they're going to be like, oh, come here, come here, sweetie. You might have even just made it harder on yourself. I don't know. I'm not saying it should be. I'm just saying we, I, we know how it goes on Reddit. Rip DMs. My inbox is full. I am not comfortable getting too specific, but over the years, there have been some unexpected health is issues. Okay. 
There have been, so the, the, the medical bills, okay. I, I, listen, I take it at face value that they're not in the same financial situation that they were in the year 2009 or whatever. Like, that happens. Heather as a person is incredibly sensitive and kind, most often to her own detriment, to a point where I think she knows we would prefer her to live near us and may not accept the sale of the land because of it. To be clear, I'm open to the sale of the land or transferring it to Heather now. It's just how to best approach it so Heather doesn't feel guilt moving forwards. I think that were I in Heather's shoes, I would take the house and just learn to live with the guilt. But if the option... If, is to like not get help with the down payment or alternatively to get help with the down payment but it forces my parents to sell like listen okay <laughs> I, I, every single one of these posts I'm in danger of getting like two econ pilled okay but like I need to see your portfolio of assets because like if you have a house that you're going to live in in retirement and then you're like, ooh, our retirement's gonna be a little tight. And you also got like a fucking plot of land that's supposedly worth a lot of money and you're not doing anything with it. Why don't you just sell the land and use the money? I, I don't see the, why don't, can, can you not just sell, if it's worth so much money, can you not just like sell the land and, and you, get, you either have cash or you have, um, you know, uh, like you put it into a fixed income portfolio or something like that to generate some cash flow for you in retirement. Like, I don't understand what the... Like, if you are going to struggle in retirement, but you own land you're not using, you're struggling, like, for no reason, I think. Although maybe you think it would be worth it if your daughter one day was going to move in on that land. That's the only thing I could think of. That's what they said. Well, yeah, but I mean... Then do it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't understand why they don't just like, I mean, it's like a, an Am I the Asshole post that's like, am, I'm hungry. Should I eat something? Like, yeah, probably. I don't know. They're not an asshole for buying one kid a house. I know we go through this now and then, like in the posts. There are people out there who are, and maybe they're right, or at least they have a lot of people who agree with them. There's people out there who are, are very fairness-pilled in the extent that, like, if person A needs X and they receive X from my parents, even if I don't have a use for X, I also need to receive X. Otherwise, that's unfair treatment. I'm not, I don't think at least I'm that kind of person. I haven't had to deal with this situation in my life. But I feel like, if, you know, your kids are roughly the same age and one of them is like, hey, this is where I'm going to live and we're settling down and starting a family, it makes, and, and you have the means and the desire to help them out there with the down payment and, and I guess also paying for their wedding. That's good. That doesn't mean that the other person immediately needs to be given the equivalent amount of like cash or assets. But I do think that maybe they had the expectation that when they finally chose to settle down, that same offer would be on the table, but things have changed economically and financially for the parents, which I, I don't know if there's like a you snooze, you lose precedent in, um, you know, the, in the rule of law, but like things change. Like I'm, I, I get that it sucks that 10 years ago, your sister got a down payment on her house because your parents were like super rich, but now like that's not the case anymore, but you still feel like you're owed a down payment, but like the, the wheel of fate is turned, I guess. I mean, so they are indicated uh, by voting, by the way, to be the asshole. I don't know if I necessarily think that's fair, but I do think that the comments could be a little bit spicy. I think you're the asshole for paying tens of thousands for Ava's wedding and hundreds of thousands for Ava's house, but not putting aside or saving anything close to that amount for Heather. Am I okay? Listen, this strikes me as a perfect world solution. In order to help one of your kids with a down payment, you have to have enough money to basically afford two down payments and just put the other one in a savings account for an infinite amount of time, like an amount of time that we don't, we don't know. She could want a house in like two years. She could want a house in like 50 years. She could never want a house. Yes. Why? So that like a 
35-year-old adult's feelings don't get hurt? Why don't you just, like, get a clue, bozo? Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm calling the hypothetical adult child in this situation a bozo, okay? I'm not calling you a bozo. Just put it into an index fund? That's the problem. You can't put money into an index fund if you don't know what your time horizon is. It's impossible to choose. You, I mean, you can put it into like a, a GIC or a CD and get like prime minus one or something. You remind, it reminds me of every post on like investing subreddits in 2021. I, uh, hey, I have a little bit of money for a down payment. Should I pop it into the market for a year? No, absolutely not. Um, one year is not, expected returns over one year are incredibly uh, volatile and range from like minus 50% to plus 300%. Hmm, that seems good. I'll try that. How you feeling now? You need to know your time horizon in order to, in, in order to get a justifiable uh, risk assessment. If she was like, I want a house in eight years, then you'd be like, okay, I don't know. We'll, maybe we'll put it in like a 50-50 portfolio or something like that. If she's like, I don't know when I'm going to want a house, then what are you going to do with it? You got to put it in a recurring uh, dot over renewing GIC and make like, the, last year you would have been making like a quarter of 1%. It's not even worth going to the bank to sign the paper. I don't know. I don't think the parents did anything wrong. If anything, they did like too much right. But they should probably sell the land. I mean, if you have land, I mean, it's not even just like a housing policy thing. Like if you have land you own that you're literally not using and you're like, I need money to solve my problem. My personal advice to you is to sell the land in exchange for money and then use that money to solve your problems. I know it's a radical solution but at the same time, yeah, also, I think you have an obligation to tell your 32-year-old daughter to not sign a 30-year fixed-rate mortgage. Although, you know what? I guess she could refi later if, if the Fed pivot actually comes to, if the Fed pivot actually comes to pass. But any, okay, I don't know, I don't know. The police are here. They're like, sir, we want to give you the key to the city for having such sane takes. I don't know, like, I... I'm kind of, I know this makes me like not the champion of chat, but I do agree with this person, ironically, in chat who said, all these people telling a parent they're an asshole because they bought their kid a house. I know, it's like I'm, I'm struggling with it on like, a, like an Aristotelian level. How could doing a nice thing make you an asshole? Because you didn't do a nice thing for another person, you're an asshole... In, if you hadn't bought anything for anybody, you would have been a, a nice person. But because you helped someone when they needed help and didn't help someone else at that exact same time when you had the means, you're the asshole. It's it just, I don't know. I'm, I'm struggling with it on like a philosophical level. Imagine if you bought a house for Malf but not for Josh. Well, but like, what if, what if Josh didn't want a house when I bought one for Malf? And then 15 years later, Josh was like, I'll take my house now. And I'm like, nah, dude, I'm like retired. I'm on a fixed income. That would make you the asshole? I don't think so. I think if, how can you be an asshole for giving someone a house? <laughs> it doesn't seem, doesn't seem right. It's the land. They should, I think that they should sell the land and give that money to their daughter if that's the reason, if they were going to give her the land to build a house on or something, to live close to the parents. Uh, this, it sounds like it's, hey, you can have one land's worth of assets for free, but only if you live near us. And that's a weird ultimatum to give your adult children. So that is like, I agree, that's unreasonable, but that's not really what they're doing. They're just, I mean, subtextually, maybe that's what they're hoping happens, but I don't think they're an asshole for the treatment of the daughters. Like, I think they're an asshole maybe if they choose not to sell the land to help their other daughter. But the people that are like, here's the solution. You shouldn't have bought the house for your first daughter. I'm like, what? she didn't even do anything. She's literally just vibing. She's just living her life. Now she, she loses one house because people on the internet are like, they're King Solomon pilled. 
Sorry, honey, we can't help you with your down payment because the internet says we would have to take an exactly equivalent amount of money and put it into a savings account held uh, in escrow until an indeterminate time in the future when your sister decides that she wants a down payment for a house, if she even wants a down payment for a house. Not to mention when they bought the house for the, because the market is, and the animals are leaving us, the down payment might be like the price, more than the price of the house for the, because I don't know if they live in a rural area or something like that. The house might have been, like they say, hundreds of thousands. Let's assume it was $250,000. If she wants to buy a house in a city, that she could be like a one and a half million dollars. It's like the down payment might be equivalent to the price of the house for the kid in the first place. They need to sit down with a financial planner and like a mediator or something. I think the internet's being too absolutist about this. You're the asshole. You're basically punishing Heather for not wanting to settle down at the same time. But what's the... If you had, if you had the means and the desire and one of the kids is like, I'm ready to settle down, then you would be punishing that kid if you didn't give them the thing that you had the means and the desire to give them until the other sister was ready to settle down. It doesn't make any sense. Just sell the land. Then you don't have to deal with these insane people in the comments. As you stated in your post, you gave Ava hundreds of thousands while withholding no money for her sister. Well, you are not obligated to help your children equally. Helping one to the tune of hundreds of thousands and the other to zero must sting for Heather. You said zero. You said zero. Did you never hear the expression, no good deed goes unpunished? I'm not saying, by the way, that like there's not anything that they could do to make this situation better. I'm not saying that the... That if this, if this post is even real, I'm not saying that the OP is the moral high ground. If they refuse to sell the land, they would be assholes who... You know what drives me... I'm just giving you a squirt. Psst. You know what drives me crazy? In the post... And maybe it's two different people. Chat's not a monolith, okay? Or two different groups of people. You know what drives me crazy? In the post where the lady filmed the dude at a wedding and he was dancing drunk and he said, delete it. So many people were like, she has no legal right to... Uh, no legal... He has no legal right to demand that she take it down. She would be well within her legal rights to leave it up. And then here, people, I don't know if it's the same people, but in my head it's the same people because I feel like that's how the human brain works because I'm getting it from the same source. People are like, well, they have no legal right to sell the land. They shouldn't be forced to sell the land, but yet at the same time, if they don't do it, they're the assholes. Make up your fucking, make up your fucking mind, okay? Make up your fucking mind. It's not about is this legal, is this illegal? You know, you know what else is driving me crazy? People are like, you wouldn't know what it's like because you don't have a sibling, okay? You, th maybe you're too fucking biased because you do have a sibling. Maybe you need an only child to look at this situation and tell you, actually, like, younger kids being a little bit of a baby. Like, grow up. Maybe you need the clarity that comes from, with an only child, okay? Also, get a personality. You wouldn't understand what it's like. You don't have a brother, okay? You wouldn't understand what it's like to be allergic to stone fruits. Don't mess. Lord hath no fury like a streamer who has a stone fruit allergy who was born in November. Like, don't, you can't appeal to familiarity. You need to have like a rhetorical, you need to build evidence and a, and a point to be persuasive. You can't just be like, if you had a brother, you'd understand. Or maybe I fucking wouldn't. Maybe I'd be like, hey, congrats on the house, bro. Would be nice, like I'm making mortgage payments right now, but congrats on your house. Maybe I'd be furious. Maybe I'd be happy for him. I don't know. Like, I, I'm, I'm trying to construct like an analogous situation. What if your parents said they would pay for your college, okay? You have two siblings. Let's even say they're twins. Let's say one of them is Channing Tatum in 21 Jump Street and the other one is uh, Jonah Hill in 21 Jump Street. So one of them's uh, dumb as a bag of hammers and then the other one's pretty smart, okay? So they're both going to go to college. They pay for Channing Tatum's college, okay? Because he's not getting any scholarships on Celestis for soccer. But Jonah Hill did so well in high school, he's got a full ride. Are the parents the assholes if they don't give the cash value of what they spent on Channing Tatum's education to Jonah Hill as a gift? There's so many yeses. And I'm like, I'm, I don't know, man. I'm in like the no camp. They're punishing. What are they punishing him for? He had a 
safe house to live in, warm, healthy meals every night, good uh, parental role models, you know, a scaffolding that allowed him to excel in something that he was good at. I would be annoyed if I worked my ass off for a full scholarship and then my parents gave my underachieving sibling $100,000 for free. They're not giving him $100,000. They're giving an American college $100,000. If they gave him $100,000 and then said, please give this to the university, you'd never see the money again. Also, I think if you were like, oh, I worked so hard and all I got was a free ride to a good school, what a waste of my time. Maybe you're not as smart as you think you are. Maybe you shouldn't insert yourself into this metaphor because I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about Jonah Hill. Like, I would be annoyed if I said I would pay for my kid's university and then they got a full scholarship and then they got mad at me for not giving them, like, 80 grand. I would be like, do you know how much money I spent on raising your ass? Where do you, where do you get off demanding that? So, I'm proud of you for doing so well in high school. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, like... You're like, oh, it, okay, so next time I'll just do worse in school and then make you pay $80,000 to UBC. And I'll be like, okay, fine, if you gotta, next time. <laughs> okay, go ahead, yeah, you, 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 go ahead and get me next time. If we both get reincarnated into the same familial relationship again. I took a 15-minute trip to the library, you're still on this one? What'd you do at the library for 15 minutes? It was returning a book? Oh, that makes sense. That's a good point. You know, it's like, I don't know. At least the metaphor, it, it would be better to argue the case rather than argue the metaphors. Because the metaphors kind of fall apart. I guess that, because what I was going to say is it's like, oh, um, well, it's, the, oh, now they're doing student loan relief. Where's my $10,000 even though I paid off my loans? But then it's more like, hey, we're doing student loan relief right now. And then if you like three years, you're like, yes, student loan relief. I love it. And then like three years later, you're like, can I get some now? And the government was like, no, absolutely not. We have a, we're running a huge deficit. We're in a recession right now. I guess you would be like, no, you could at least be mad about it. If you were happy for other people to get the debt relief and then you get the you have the same need later, and then you need the debt relief, but they're not going to give you the debt relief. I guess I could understand that. I could understand being annoyed. That doesn't mean that they're in the wrong for doing a nice thing for the people that came before you that doesn't necessarily immediately benefit you. Anyway, I don't know. We got, we got lost in the weeds on this one. I just need to, I need to see the, the parents' asset breakdown. I feel like they might have, like, like 17 plots of land and they're like, we're a little cash poor right now. Sell some of your land. No. Could, please help me budget. My family is starving. Am I the asshole for telling my kids to borrow money from their sister? Not me. <clears throat> this is like, the, it's family money again. <laughs> it's another family money issue. I have four kids, Car and they're all like adult kids again. Four kids, Carmen, Eliza, Michael, and Andrew. Carmen and Michael are both lower middle class. Carmen is a single mom of two and works as a nurse. Michael and his wife are teachers and expecting their first child. Carmen makes $100,000. Michael and his wife make a little over $100,000 combined and live in California near the Bay Area where $100,000 is considered low income. Okay, fair enough. Eliza is a nanny for an extremely rich family. I don't know if she's considered living because she lives in a separate house, but it's on the same property. She makes $250,000 a year plus bonuses, doesn't pay rent or utilities, rarely buys groceries because she always eats with the family. They bought her a brand new car. They pay for her gas maintenance, all of her medical, dental, vision. At first I was like, it sounds like she's a servant. Then I was like, what the hell? I gotta go to nanny school, man. This is crazy. Hell, they even pay for her gym membership and her vacations. What does she, what does she spend money on? <laughs> That's all of the things that you buy. Her savings account is going out of control, man. This is, this is crazy. She's worked for them for two years. Two years! That, I thought that shit would be like 15 years of benefits cumulatively. She's been there since 2020? And recently bought a rental building in cash. Needless to say, she's doing very well for herself. And she bought the building in cash. 
no 7% mortgage. Holy cow. She's a landlord? Yeah, but she's girl bossing. So it's okay. Not okay? I think it's, I'm willing, I, listen, she's not really a landlord. First off, she's a landlady. I think that makes it better. Secondly, if she is a landlord, one rental building, maybe she's like a land earl. On the, on the scale of lordship, she's not like a, a land emperor. You know, she's not like Lee ka Shing or something like that. She's just, she's like a little earl or like a, like a petty duke or something like that. Michael and Andrew just asked me for money. Michael needs 30K for part of a down payment for a townhouse. And Andrew wants 10K so he can graduate with no debt. I told them to ask Eliza for money, not me, and she could easily afford to help them out. Eliza called me the other day asking what I said to her brothers because now they're both asking her for money. I told her what I told them and she yelled at me for volunteering her to help her with her brother's expenses. I told her that I never said she would help them. I just said that she easily could. She said she doesn't feel comfortable loaning money to family because she doesn't want to risk their relationship if they don't pay her back. I told her it shouldn't be a big deal if they don't pay her back because we know her Christmas bonus will be close to double what her brothers want. Okay, yeah, you're the asshole. Like, you can't... I get that Eliza maybe has more means to loan money to the family, but you can't just volunteer her, her income. Like, she's... Maybe her Christmas bonus will be more than the brothers asked for, but, like, she worked for her Christmas bonus, even if it is more than... I don't want to say it's more than she deserves, but you know what I mean. Like you can't just be like, oh, you can afford it. Yeah, but I don't like want to afford it. Like they didn't, without being super disrespectful, she didn't, they didn't do anything. I don't understand. <laughs> being a good sibling? How do you know they're a good sibling? They could have hate, they hated each other when they were kids. Who knows? What's Eliza's at? I know, man. Holy cow. She should be teaching like Instagram classes on how to be a live-in nanny. Although, on the other hand, why would she ever do anything else when she's got the greatest job of all time? To a quarter million dollars a year, never have to pay any bills. All your vacations are paid for. Oh, so there's no job security, though. It only lasts 18 consecutive years. Um, maybe it doesn't last 18 years. Maybe, maybe people fire their nannies like when they, the kids become like adolescents or whatever. I don't know. But I told her it wouldn't be a big deal if they don't pay her back because we know her Christmas bonus will be close to double what her brothers want. Plus, if she says no, she could potentially risk her relationship with her brothers because she can afford it. She hung up on me and hasn't spoken to me since, so I want to know if I'm the asshole. Yeah. You're the, I, I get that you're family, but like you can't just volunteer someone else's money. And then if someone else, if the person you volunteer says, uh, I don't want to risk the relationship by loaning family money, you don't get to say, well, yeah, but you make that much money at your job anyway, so who cares? Not to mention, like, I know this is, again, it's obvious that she's the asshole to me to begin with. But then, without getting too much into the weeds, you know she's got to, like, pay income tax on her income and then loan the after-tax income to her family. So, like, in order to, because she's pulling down, like, nearly top tax bracket money, in order to loan $40,000 to her family, she's got to bring in, like, 70-something. It's, it, you're, you're, it's a pretty substantial burden to just impose on somebody because you think they can handle it even when they're not really involved in the situation she has no expenses yeah but it's her money i don't understand what the why are why are her siblings entitled to her money i get i, I mean honestly i would think that if i was in eliza's situation that would be a gimme i'll tell you what i'll give you the 10 grand so you don't have to pay you know, Fannie Mae, 8% interest on your student loans or whatever, and then you just pay me the 10 grand back, you know, like $500 a month for however long it takes. Maybe that's a little, the, the, the repayment terms might be a little bit high there, but, you know, it's just off the top of my head. Zero interest, that's pretty good. A zero interest debt, is, a zero interest loan is incredible. You know, a 7% interest loan uh, the, it doubles every 10 years. So if your loan is for 10 years, essentially you've paid back double of what you took out in the first place. Zero percent, that's, that's merciful. I can understand not wanting to loan family money. But 
I mean, like, here's the thing. I think if she is, she's lucky in life. This, I want to preface this by saying she doesn't have to do this. If she doesn't want to loan her family money, she could just give them the money with the pretense that's like, I, I wouldn't want to do a loan with my family because if you didn't pay it back, it could screw up our relationship. But if you have the means, here's uh, the money as a one-time gift. A one-time gift, no guilt, no resentment, don't ever mention it again. It's okay. It's the least I could do, but it's also the most I could do. Don't ask me for anything ever again. But I also don't think she... Ha and moreover, I think it would be different if like, um, if your sibling call And I, as an only child here, I can't put myself in their shoes, obviously. But if your sibling called you and was like, hey... I'm really embarrassed to ask you this, but could you help me with a down payment for my house? It's 30 grand. It would really help us out a lot, blah, blah, blah. That, I might be more amenable and be like, you know what? Like, maybe we can find a way to make it work. But if they were like, hey, mom told me that you would loan me $30,000, I would be like, like, hang up the phone right now. Because that's like, you got to present things in a more acceptable package than that like that's that's it it matters like how you approach someone for an interaction you know but i mean like more than anything else i'm like like it's her money it's very rude and maybe rudeness is not the top priority here but it's i think it's very rude to be like your sister will give you the money she can afford it like that's just i mean she did the work being a leech to a one percenter isn't a job? No, it's a damn dream. Why doesn't she share the dream a little bit? Like, honestly, like, I mean, I'm, we're all projecting here. I feel like it's kind of because they came to her and said, Mom said you'd give us some money. Don't be like a B-word about it. Also, like, I don't know how close they are either. Like, <laughs> like if, you're, if you grew up with your siblings and you were, like, tight and you're, like, uh, you know, you're, you're not six individuals you're one family like that's one thing it doesn't sound like this is the case there's some families where it's like there's two parents and then every one of the kids has like a one-to-one -one relationship with the parental units and they don't really talk to the siblings at all like i mean like if your sister won like a real lottery if she won 50 million dollars in the powerball or whatever I would be like, buy me a house. I wouldn't ask for the down payment. I would ask for the whole thing in cash. I would expect, and, and listen, maybe I don't get a house. I'll live with it. Like, I'm not gonna, not gonna blow everything up just if I don't get it. But like, if you won $50 million, and if, if one of my very, very close, like if my mom, my dad, my wife, or my daughter, or a sibling, hypothetically, won $50 million in the lottery, I would say, buy me a house. I would, I would drop some hints at the very least. If they were making $250,000 a year, I don't think I would feel entitled. It's a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but... And they're just asking for a down payment, but still. Well, now it's like, am I the asshole? I won $50 million in the lottery, and I bought a house for all of my friends who don't have houses. But now my friends who bought houses think that they're being punished by not getting a free house. Oh, if I'd known you were going to win the lottery and give everyone a free house, I wouldn't have paid for my house. You dickhead. Can you just give me the cash value of a house instead? You've made seven other people's lives better, and yet you haven't made my life better. You're a bad person. Unironically, yes, give him the cash. You're an insane person. Listen, that was too far in Minecraft. I don't think adults should think like that. You got your house. You're okay. You got a roof over your head. You're handling your bills. Why is it if somebody else is struggling and they get like a handout, why should you get it? Why should you stick your hand out as well? Who says being in a house negates all their problems? Well, who says, like, if I buy a house for, you know, person X who doesn't have a house, that that is making their life perfect as well? 
Why do you feel like you owe, you get, you're owed something? Why are there so, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying hard to like reconcile this with, with my political beliefs. Because it sounds like a, a, a huge boomer take. But we're talking specifically about a situation of like, if I won the lottery, and I have 10 friends, three of them have houses. If I bought houses for the seven friends who don't own a house, and the other three friends are like, where's the cash value of the house that you owe me to be friends, like to, to have treated us all fairly? Then like fucking, you're not friends anymore. You did a nice thing for someone else. You didn't do anything for me. I'm being punished for, for purchasing a house in 2015. It's only gone up 70% in value with me doing fucking nothing. What are you talking about? Yes, but I'm petty. Oh, well, that's fair. I think that's fine. It's a made-up scenario anyway. <laughs> You're equating friends to children? It's a false equivalency? What are you talking about? They're not children. They're, they're, they're siblings. I know we got stunlocked on the other one for a reasonable length of time, but, like, I don't know. They're all adults. I mean, I'm, not, I, I'm resisting the urge... To say, why don't they just get, why don't they out-compete her for her job? It's a free market. Why don't you show up an hour earlier than she shows up? Why don't you stay an hour later? Why don't you cut the demand for her salary? Why don't you say, you're paying her $250, i will take $200, and I'll pay for my own dentist appointments. Out-compete her. And then maybe see if she likes it when the shoe's on the other foot. But also, why don't you then go ahead and see when she asks you for $30,000 how you feel that she's already spent the money that you worked for. You might find that the, when, the, the thing in the prestige is that Hugh Jackman never knows when he gets into the tube if he's going to be the one that's on the stage or if he's going to be the one that's in the tube, okay? My wife is a grade A+. Plus. That w wife guy spotted a grade A plus wife, dude. Me too. Picky eater. Oh no. <laughs> oh, he he buried the lead. It's bothersome to a certain degree, but on holidays, basically the shit show begins. She refuses to eat certain meals, and mom would take it personally, which results in a series of arguments between them. As a compromise this year, my wife offered to bring her own food to Thanksgiving dinner. I was stunned. I asked if she thought this through, and she looked at me confused. I told her about how weird it would be to bring her own food, especially when she wouldn't be sharing it with anybody else, and told her to think about how my mom would react. She'd get very offended and upset. My wife said it's not her problem. She was just trying to make it work by bringing her own meal. I told her not again. Wait, I told her again that mom might not like nor even allow this. There is something... Very, and this is probably not the point of the post, but when a man who's presumably an adult calls his mom, mom in the post instead of my mom or my mother, that just feels wrong. It feels like the post is written by, it's like a, a, an email written from one sibling to another. Like she's not our mom. Stop calling her mom. I don't, even when I talk to my wife, I never just say mom, even though she knows I would be talking about my mom. I always say my mom will be here, you know, blah, blah, blah. I don't just say mommy's coming. It's just, it's just strange. I told her again, mom might not like this nor even allow this. She blew up at me asking if I want her to either eat food she doesn't like or go hungry. I suggested she give my mom's food a chance, but she says it wasn't about my mom's cooking. She just doesn't like certain foods. We had an argument. I ended up telling her she, she, could, she could stay home this Thanksgiving and have whatever meals she likes. She got quiet, then lashed out at me, calling me insensitive and negative to say this to her. I repeatedly asked her to calm down. <laughs> oh, husband of the year. Uh, that, that should do the trick. But she couldn't stop ranting about how I was basically willing to exclude her from a major event. She started cold shouldering me. Dude, women are always like this. You have an argument, things get personal, you know, the husband says something over the line, and then she's like, doesn't want to talk to me for some reason. What's up with that? She started cold shouldering me about it, while at the same time guilting me, saying I'm treating her poorly after she offered the perfect compromise. And so, update, by the way, my wife has decided to spend Thanksgiving with her family, who, by the way, live hours away, so this means unnecessary travel expenses. 
you know, seeing your family unnecessary, seeing my family a sacred event that you can't even bring your own food to. Instead, and basically ditch me for a whole week. Y'all happy now? Y'all happy? Reddit, you did this to me. Though I appreciate some insightful comments on the situation. Some others, not so much, especially with the assumptions claiming my wife has allergies. She does not. Stop trying to take the side of my life partner. Y'all get that from? But anyway, Saul good now. I guess, though, I'm not too thrilled with her decision. I feel like she's doing it to spite me or get me to cave in. Bro, she doesn't, like, care about you, like, at all right now. She's not part of the fight anymore. She has sidestepped the fight, and she's living her best life. This is not the right way to handle the situation at all. Am I the asshole? Yeah, because, like, it just... Why... What, what's wrong with her bringing her own food to Thanksgiving? Like, it's it's a holiday, but it's just a meal. Like, Thanksgiving is not, like, a sacred religious feast or anything like that. It's just uh, you, you eat some... Turkey, you, some mashed potatoes, you watch football. I, I brought my own food to Thanksgiving. I was a vegetarian. I went to Thanksgiving. I brought some frozen samosas, and I ate the frozen samosas. Is rude to the host? I don't think so. Everybody hated you? No, they, if any, they kind of taunted me a little bit. Ooh, you want some of this turkey? And I was like, nah, man, the samosas are, are acceptable. But it's family. Just like, Can't he just like text his mom and be like, hey... You know, my wife's going to bring samosas this year. I, I don't understand the, the problem. She doesn't want to share. Like, so what? Listen, like, sharing is good, but you don't have to do it. If everybody else... Like, I don't understand why it's rude to anybody else at the Thanksgiving dinner. I've never been at Thanksgiving and have somebody bring their own food and been like, Oh, man, I'm so unhappy. I'm eating... Turkey, gravy, mashed potatoes, sweet potatoes, green beans, corn, dinner rolls, butter, pumpkin pie, sparkling apple cider, red wine. Uh, you, like it's it's a it's a damn feast, man. You're gonna you're gonna be the kind of guy that shows up to a feast and you're like, oh, she brought that bologna sandwich. Looks freaking choice, man. Did you bring sixteen bologna sandwiches for the rest of the people here? Just doesn't make any sense to me. I I mean, I just don't see what the wife did wrong here at all. Like, okay, she I, do I think it's a little bit crazy that she's a picky eater and can't eat anything at Thanksgiving, which is like, I mean, most people are not picky eaters about like, you know, turkey or mashed potatoes or corn or like bread, at least in the US, okay? I can't speak for the rest of the world. It is a little odd but like if she's if her choices are you know go to thanksgiving and be um unhappy and shove food that she doesn't like in her face to placate this guy's mother i guess what i'm trying to say and it all it comes back to this a lot when you marry someone while you're married you got to be in your spouse's camp instead of your parents camp except for situations that are truly insane you can't side with your mom by default over your spouse. Like, that's you had a whole ceremony about it. You put rings on each other's fingers. Like, do you, husband, agree to sever the relationship that, that you have with your parents? Still keep it, but, but sever the sacred tie and transfer that tie to somebody else. Do you, are you putting, are, do you consent to add a new number one to your MySpace circle, okay? So, like, I don't understand why... I mean, I feel like if I was in this situation I would be, and, and my mom was being weird about it, I'd be like, hey, mom, listen, I know it's fucking weird that she doesn't eat like turkey and mashed potatoes. But at the same time, if you want her to come to Thanksgiving and not be uncomfortable, then, uh, you know, she's got to bring her own food. And if my mom was like, no, then I'd be like, well, I can't come to Thanksgiving this year. Maybe we'll try it again next November. Because like it just seems like... A, I mean, it's just, it, I, my take is that it's not a big deal for her to bring her own food. What would make her an asshole if she was like, don't cook turkey and mashed potatoes, don't cook the food you normally cook for Thanksgiving, instead, cook something else for everybody to eat that, I, that only I want. If she was like, can't we just order four pepperoni pizzas this year and put mayonnaise on top of them? Then you would be like, holy cow, she'd be like Reddit enemy number one. But, like, if she is, like, I don't want to eat this, and she brought her own food, then who cares? It's not that big of a deal. 
And it's, I'm doubling down and, and going like, I'm going asshole squared because he made an update. And I don't know how, like, maybe this is a day later, maybe it's six hours later. But if like you're the asshole and then your emotions come down and you're like, I was the asshole. Thanks, Reddit. That's one thing. But if you're the asshole and then like eight hours later, you're still, you're like even more mad about it than you were before, then like you, you're asshole squared. And I don't give out that verdict very often. You, like you're, you got to give yourself, you got to take a deep breath. You got to count to 10 and then you got to recognize, you know, have some like a, a look inside of you and say, you know, I'm the problem with this situation. I'm going to apologize. And even if I apologize, it might not make it right straight away, but we'll like work towards it in the future. I don't understand that it, it's, it seems crazy. You're the asshole. She offered a compromise. My wife's family does the Feast of the Seven Fishes. I have never heard of this in my life, but that I'm a big fish guy. I hate fish, so since I joined the family, it's the Feast of the Seven Fishes and the Chicken. We all get a good laugh, and my mother-in-law is happy to make it for me. Feast of the Seven Fishes? Is it seven different fishes, or is it just seven like of the same fish? There's seven different fish courses. Dude, that sounds kind of sick, honestly. She came up with a solution to endure the hell that is being around your mother. Okay, now this. Did the mother do anything in the post except cook the Thanksgiving feast? I get the idea that, like, it seems like the mother is a you-know-what because the... Son is like, oh, mom might not like it, but the son might just be like a big puss, honestly. He, I don't want to tell my mom something that might disappoint her. You know, the mom, he might text his mom and be like, she's going to bring samosas to Thanksgiving, and mom would be like, let's go, you know? You told her you were too scared of mommy to even allow your wife to suggest finding a solution. Gosh, mommy is so scary. When she told you you were insensitive to her legitimate problem. You told her to calm down. Ugh, women, right? Come on, dude. You should be thankful your wife isn't picky about the man she marries. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> that last sentence made me spit out my coffee. I can't. OP, you're the asshole. User received Reddit this for this post. I, am I the asshole for letting my mother have a copy of the key to our new home despite my wife's objections? I recently bought a one-story house. Note that it was purchased solely by me. My wife did not help me save for it. I started saving for it before I even met her, and it's in my name. We'll see how the courts feel about that one. When my parents threw us a party for this happy occasion, Mom asked for a copy of the key in case of an emergency. I let her have it, which made my wife upset. She didn't say anything at the time, but she waited till we were alone and started arguing with me, saying I shouldn't have let my mother have a copy of the key. I said, why? since my mother is known to respect privacy and is a very trusted member of the family. She said she doesn't feel comfortable with the idea of someone else who's not a resident having a copy of the key. She also brought up how my mother didn't pay a penny towards the house. Oh, here we go. I can tell where this is going already. The, the, the male urge to own someone in a conversation against your own best interests. I felt it. As soon as he wrote that his wife said his mom didn't contribute to the financial well wherewithal of the house, I was like, here it comes. She didn't either. It's just something in the masculine brain that is like, I can land a shot here. I can score some points with the judges. So this should disqualify her from getting the key. I said it wasn't a big deal, but she kept persisting, saying I need to take... Oh, well, maybe it's just me, actually. Um, saying I need to take the key back. Quite frankly, this had me fuming. I pointed out that I'm the one who bought the house, and it's my decision to decide who gets a copy of the key. End of story. She screamed at me, saying that technically she did contribute to the house, savings back when she used to pay for our rent and daily expenses while I saved money, bro. <laughs> I saved all this money. Look, you decided to pay for all of our bills and our rent out of the goodness of your heart. That has nothing to do with my ability to save money. That's, are you stupid? You're crazy. Well, like, on the one hand, sure, maybe it doesn't matter if she didn't pay for the house considering they're married. So, like, everything they own is, like, basically, I don't know, it depends legally on where they are, I guess. But at least in Canada, it's like, whether you paid for it or she paid for it, it belongs to both of you. But moreover, this dude's acting like he bought the house with, with he, he scrimped and saved. But the only reason he was able to scrimp and save was because of the fact that she was paying for everything in the first place while he was saving the money. 
It's like those posts that are like, here's how I paid off my student loans in one year. And it's like, uh, I never bought coffee outside. Uh, I made lunch in my house. Uh, I canceled subscription services that I didn't need. And also my parents paid for my rent the entire time and also dropped off groceries two times a month. Like it's like, then the reason you did it is because you fucking idiot. You, they gave you money. They didn't deliberately say, here's your student loans repaid. But what they did say is we're going to hold you up well, you knock that shit out for yourself and then we're going to let gravity take you back down to earth when it's easier for you. So I think it is a little weird. I don't think she's doing anything necessarily sneaky. But I think it is a little weird to be this upset that your spouse's parent has a house key. Like, I don't, what, what does she think is going to happen? They're going to like steal her stuff? I, it does add like a, a liability. What if, what if you're... What if your mother-in-law loses the house key? What if she opens the door and, you know, lets your dogs out or something like that? But that's you just say, hey, don't lose that. Hey, don't let my dogs out, you know, and stuff like that. So I think she's going like a little over the top. But I do also think it's like, I mean, it's her right because it is. I mean, you can't be married to someone and be like, this is my house. Like, that's just not, <laughs> it's not how it works. <laughs> Just just saying it out loud is is making me laugh. Listen, this is rare for me. I, I do think it's an everybody sucks here. I want to I do think though the wife has uh the the right to say that person doesn't get a key to the place where I also live. But I do also think it's weird. And the husband is definitely a bit of an asshole in the situation for sure. Mostly for not acknowledging that his wife did contribute to the household by paying the bills while he was saving money. Like if you're, if she's paying your bills and you're using the money that you saved on the bills to save money, she's helping you. She's paying half into the savings fund. Like you, I, you gotta understand that, right? Just because it's in your name. This guy, he's just obsessed with titles too. He's obsessed with the deed and the pink slip and the, Who's got the routing number and what's the what's the bank's address? Like it's he's he's all tied up in the legality and he's missing the obvious stuff that you're going 50-50. I mean, you could do at your finances when you're married however you want. It's just like I don't know. Like don't let this happen. Cuz this is not this is not real. It's not your house. It's it's your house. It's not his house. It's his and hers. Anyway, I mean, I, I'm giving it and everybody sucks here. He, I think he sucks more, but I think that um, she's... A, I'm, I'm not even saying she's doing anything wrong. It just seems a little crazy you wouldn't be okay with his mom having a key. Because I just, I just want her to articulate what she's worried about. I guess she could be like, I'm just uneasy with it, and that's fine. But, you know, suck it up, I guess. Because, you know... I think it would be sick, you know, to have my in-laws have a, a key. Wouldn't have to pay for a cat sitter, come in and water our, water our plants and stuff like that, pick up our mail. This sounds nice to me. But I think he's worse. Because he keeps, I don't know why he's so obsessed with the, with the, with the deed. <laughs> you mentioned the deed like, you mentioned the deed like five times. Yeah, because that's, I forgot if I said it or not. It's not like if I put my mom's name on the deed. My name's on the title. I paid for the house with the money she allowed me to save. You're the asshole. And this is why you can't trust no one when it comes to money. You played your wife. You probably told her you would... So what is this insane post that is fan fiction? You probably told her you would save for a shared home, and that's why she should support you and pay your share of the rent. Now she didn't contribute a penny to your house, your house. She gets no say, but your mom does. Lol. You're the asshole. Supreme Court just ass. User received reddit gold for this post. 50, 55,000 off votes. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit of, I'm not going to say projection, but the little fantasy there. Info, she paid all the rent while you were saving. Why isn't her name on the deed? It's called financial abuse, and it's a common tactic used by narcissistic assholes to maintain power in the relationship. They don't know. They listen, we don't know enough about this to start. To to, I'm not saying that this doesn't exist. I'm just saying we don't know if this is a situation of the, where he's doing this. 
I don't even know who's on the title to our house. Kate, do you know? Is this something we should be looking up? I think we're both on the title. <laughs> we both had to be there and sign a bunch of papers. That's for sure. I remember that. But I don't have like a safe in my house with a, with a bunch of documents in it that's like, here's the deed. Bro, actually, the law is like kind of silly. Even if, like, let's say Kate wasn't on the deed to our house. It seems like a stupid system where I could be like, well, Your Honor, we were married um, and she lived in the house with me for a decade. But it's actually my house because of this piece of paper right here. And the judge is like, well, my hands are tied. The piece of paper does only have your name on it. So, it, I mean, it's the same. <laughs> it just seems weird, right? It's like the same way when people are like, make sure you read the contract, which you should always do. But in the fine print, it could be like, you owe me a million dollars, blah, blah, blah. Like you wouldn't just go into court and be like, well, your honor, I was signing like an end user license agreement to download XCOM. And uh, all of a sudden it says I owe 2K a million dollars. And they'd be like, well, did you fucking sign it? Sorry, sorry. It looks like you signed it. So my hands are tied. We should bring back common sense law. You know, like the Code of Hammurabi. I, I, uh, I got to think about that one a little more. We'll lead us to kings. We'll, we'll freaking lead us to kings. But do you ever think that maybe like the law like needs to be rebuilt from the ground up? Because it's like when you write code, right? You're like, I'm going to make an elegant program. And then you're like, oh, there's an edge case. Okay, I'll compromise my ideal slightly to build in something to handle that edge case. And then it's just edge case, edge case, edge case, new framework, edge case, edge case. Someone got fired. Um, we don't know how to rebuild the method that they did. So we're going to do it over here in like a, we're going to just rig it up ourselves. And then you just, at some point, don't you go like, I got to just tear this shit down and start from the beginning. I feel like that's like the law. We got to bring this shit back to like, Let's start with like law number one, don't kill people. And then we'll just, re we'll build it from there, but better. Anyway, I don't know what I'm talking about. I think this is just a crazy post. Why is your analogy so accurate? I, I have an associate's diploma in software engineering. I know a little bit. I can fizz buzz with the best of them. Oh, <laughs> am I the asshole for asking for a morning off from my baby on the weekends? I think I can already tell you how this is going to go. I'm going to guess that this is something like um, my, my wife watches the baby all week and I work all week, so I'm tired on Saturday. And let's see how the conversation goes from here. My wife and I have a six-month-old baby girl. She's mostly a stay-at-home mom. At age six? It's ambitious. I know. Listen, I like to call in the ambiguity of the English sentence sometimes. She's mostly a stay-at-home mom. She works two half days a week and her sister watches the baby. I work full-time and go to school one day a week. We've always had an arrangement where she takes care of the household duties while I happily support her monetarily. How, honestly, we are both living our dream life and my wife does an absolutely spectacular job taking care of me and our little one. Okay? Okay? On the weekends, we share baby duty. We usually make sure each of us gets our own alone time to do whatever we want. However, our girl has hit a bit of a sleep regression, waking up every two hours since my wife breastfeeds. She's always taking care of the baby full-time overnight. She's a light sleeper and unfortunately has insomnia, whereas I am a deep sleeper and wouldn't wake up for baby cries anyways. Okay, I see that this is getting worse. I'm scared about how this is going to go. Recently, my wife has been asking me to wake up with the baby both days on the weekend so she can get an extra hour of sleep. Baby wakes up around 7 a.m., I get the baby dressed and take over for that hour, but sometimes I want to be the one who gets to sleep in an extra hour. I brought this up to her, and she says, while she's happy to let me nap during the day, she really needs that hour because she can't nap like I can. Okay, so far, this is a couple that is having a disagreement and are handling it amicably. We got into an argument about it, saying I'm being inv very insensitive. I know she's exhausted and can't nap during the day and she struggles getting back to sleep every time the baby wakes up, but I'm exhausted too. Work wears me out and school days are long. Sometimes want that extra hour in the morning. I don't want to spend my time off napping. I want to play video games and chill out. You, you guys were like, you were like 45, 55 until you said, I don't want to use my time off to sleep. I want to play video games. It's not because video games are not a worthwhile hobby or pursuit. It's just that 
your sleep and your, your spouse's sleep take precedent on it when you have a, a baby. If you want to stay up and play video games as the dad, and I don't do this because I respect my body and my psyche. If you want to play video games as the dad, then when you put the baby to sleep at night, maybe it's eight, maybe it's nine, you play the fucking games until 2 a.m. And then you wake up at 6.30 to go to work in the morning. You, you sacrifice on your own end. To, you, you're, you rob your own Peter to pay your own Paul. You don't rob anybody else's bucket to give yourself the video game time. You, you rob your own bucket wherever you can. You got to start with the foundation of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Is everyone eating? Is everyone drinking enough water? Is everyone getting sleep? Then you don't worry about self-actualization until, you know, maybe when she's like a year and a half, you can start to get back to that. So, yeah, like he is the asshole, though. Like, I mean, I don't think he's a bad guy. Here's a little secret about having kids. And I only have one, right? Like, that's where I'm still in the tutorial. But like, fucking, you're tired. She's tired. Guess what? Fucking everyone's tired. Get up, go to work, look after your kid while you're tired. Cook them some like grilled cheese while they're tired. You cook. Oh, I can't keep my eyes open any fucking longer. Give them the grilled cheese. They throw the fucking grilled cheese across the room. You pick it up. You're tired. It left a little grease on the floor. You go get a paper towel and buff it out when you're fucking tired. Like you're tired like a lot. So you should be handling, you know, you and your spouse need to look after each other. You're not allied against the baby, but like, you know, you're <laughs> you have to make sure that like you're you're like rock climbers. One of you is climbing and one of you is belaying, you know? So like when one person's climbing, every once in a while, the belayer should be like, hey, you good up there? You need me to take some of the resistance for you? It shouldn't be like, like once you, once the person climbs the mountain and they're like, okay, your turn. You're like, actually, I just want to eat a snack down here. Sorry, your ass was belaying while I was climbing. Now your ass has got to climb while I belay, okay? You're the asshole. If she's taking all the night duty because you don't wake up, then you get the morning duty when you do wake up so she can catch up on her lost sleep in the night. You want a morning off? Give her a night off. If, <laughs> it's, it's so simple when you put it that way. But like as a dad, I don't want to say you got it easy in the first year because like nobody's got it easy. But like the mom has no choice if she's breastfeeding. The, if the baby's hungry, she's on the damn clock. So it's kind of, and it, you know, I didn't learn this like day one, but it's pretty much your responsibility to do like everything else. Because there's like a, a ton of stuff that, is being done every day that you literally can't do. So like if you see something that needs to be done, that's it kind of falls on you to do it. Plus like don't give listen, your kid is 6 months old. When when our kid was 6 months old, look, there's a lot of work. But when she is like she's not even really like crawling around that much, you just put her in like the the baby bouncer and give her like a rattle. You can play Rocket League or something like that. Like just just chill out. You wait, wait, and, and listen, it's, it's easier to parent like a two-year-old than a six-month-old. Don't get me wrong, because I can actually like ask my child what's wrong. And like what, it's, it doesn't mean that it's like a, what's wrong? I'm hungry. Here's some food you like. Thank you, daddy. Like it's, it becomes more of like a, like a Clarice versus Hannibal Lecter type thing sometimes. You know, I was driving my daughter home from daycare yesterday. She tried to get fucking Scarlet Witch into my brain. Just driving her home yesterday. She says, Daddy, you are not a good driver. I was just safely driving home, minding my own business. And like just catching a, a heater for absolutely no reason whatsoever. I don't know what you wanted me to do. Be like, skirt. There's sometimes, you know what it is? Is sometimes because we live in a city, there's traffic. And when she wants to go home and have like a chocolate egg, she's like, Daddy, drive faster. And I'm like, look at the fucking, fucking drive faster. There's cars in front of me. Anyway. <laughs> but wait, if you think it's, it's exhausting at six months, wait till she's uh, two. And I don't even, it might even get harder from then. 
Wait till she's two and she's running around and she's jumping. And then you're like, don't do that. You're going to fall. And then she falls and she's like, ah, and you're like, I told you. And then you're like, uh, here's a bandaid. And she's like, thank you, daddy. And you're like, oh, so sweet. And then she's like, I want another bandaid. And I'm like, I already put a bandaid on your boo-boo. And she's like, I got another boo-boo. And I'm like, okay, where's your other boo-boo? And she's like, it's on my knee. And I'm like, I roll up her pants and I'm like, right here. And I'm like, there's no fucking boo-boo there. And she's like, I want a bandaid. And I'm like, okay, here's like, here's all the band. We were spending like 25 bucks a month on band-aids just to placate her. You think it's exhausting at six months? Get ready. Like it doesn't... Uh, I'm not saying it doesn't get easier, but it should, you're, not, you're not stopping the hustle anytime soon. Wait until, uh, you know, instead of just taking the baby for a walk while they're in the stroller, your, your outside baby duty is taking them to the park and then being in this position, squatted on, on, your, on your heels in the sandbox going, oh yeah? What are you doing? Oh, really? Oh, you're making like a, a, oh, a sand fish. Okay, wow, that's cool. Wait, wait until you're doing that for two hours every Saturday and Sunday. Well, you lean, I'm, 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 not, I'm not resenting it. I, I love it and I volunteer for it. That being said, I'm just saying, like, welcome to the fucking show, brother. You want to play some video games? <laughs> you want to start building a list? You can pencil some in maybe 2026. Anyway. Just imagine the payoff when 2026 comes around. No, but then that's the thing. And I, I've seen this from dads of older kids. They'll make posts that are like, when I had no free time, all I wanted to do was have free time. Now my kid is like 12 and I don't know what to do with myself. And that's why you end up with like dads who are just like, I'm just going to like be on the couch. They don't even have the TV on. They're just sitting there like, You know, my dad, when he wants to buy something, it doesn't have to be like a car. When he wants to buy like a chair, he does like a hundred hours of research. Looks at every, every morning he goes to Wayfair, Ikea, Amazon, driving around to like local hardware stores. What are the reviews on this chair? What kind of, what kind of wood is this chair made out of? What's the, oh, but then there's a new chair sale coming in August. I just want to wait and see what the chair is like. That's what you got to do. You, 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 you go through this period where you have like a, a lot of free time. As a, as a teenager and a young adult, I had a staggering amount of free time. You become like a, no offense, but like a real adult. More and more responsibilities fall on you, you know, to maintain your household and, you know, go see family and stuff. like. When you're like 20 and they're like, oh, can you visit grandma? You're like, no, fuck her. And then when you're like 25, you're like, okay, let's visit grandma. Like, you know, I'm part of the family. You, you reintroduce yourself into the fold and your free time gradually declines. And then when you become, you know, a parent, it, go, it goes to like zero. But I, I'm not sure if you ever, I think it's, it's probably a struggle on the other side when your free time starts coming back to figure out how to, before, you know, when you had so much free time, you're like, oh, I'm so busy. I think as your responsibilities recede a little bit, you're probably like, what the hell do I do to fill this hole? I needed nighttime support from my partner when my child was a newborn. He didn't take it serious, and it took more effort for me to wake him up to help him than it was to just do it myself. I stopped feeling like a human. The resentment never went away. We divorced when the kid is two. Owned, honestly. Well, I, I, our kid is not three yet, but I'm, I, we're going to beat you. <laughs> Sorry. Skill difference. I'm done. We don't know. This could be made up. It's all creative writing. Let me get the humor in while it lasts, okay? This dude needs to do ketamine nasal spray. Chib, what are you... <laughs> ketamine, I told you once, I've told you a thousand times. You can't solve all your problems with ketamine nasal spray, okay? There's some things you need to microdose psychedelics to get over, Okay? Sorry, I've been yelling a lot, so I got a, a voice crack. I'm just seeing if I got some more water. I got a whole bottle, dude! Hold on. He's like... No, it's like this. Like this. Me, when I get a bottle of water... It's the Yoda that talks like a normal, Yo a normal person instead of a Yoda. I did point to the camera first. I don't know what's wrong with my brain. I'm not good with, with shapes. 
Dude, it's my favorite genre of am I the asshole post. Am I the asshole for not attending my husband's celebration dinner due to the restaurant not having anything I could eat? Yeah, man. Like, what are you talking about? It's your husband's celebration dinner. You can just attend and don't eat. It's not about you. I'm not saying you have to eat something you don't like, but just eat a granola bar before. Go to the celebration and then go through the McDonald's drive through afterwards. My husband has been working really hard the last two years to advance at his company, and he finally got the promotion he's been after. I'm really, really proud of him. His parents are too and wanted to take us all out to dinner to celebrate. My husband absolutely loves prime rib, and there's only one place in our area that serves it, so he picked that restaurant. Thing is, I'm not fond of steak. I'll eat it, but very rarely. I prefer chicken or fish. I looked up the... So you're, you're not even like a vegan... You just prefer chicken. I was ready to almost meet you like a third of the way, but you just like, you prefer other meats to the meat that he prefers. I prefer chicken or fish. I looked up the menu before leaving, and right now they have a limited menu. The place only had one fish entree and two chicken entrees. <laughs> Oh, none of them sounded good for various reasons that I really should have gone into because I feel like the story would have been even better. I suggested he pick someplace else so everyone can eat. He refused, citing that we rarely get to go to this place, but go to other places in our area regularly, which is true. But those places have lots of variety so everyone can eat. She's at the damn Cheesecake Factory. I see you. He suggested I ask if they could prepare the fish or chicken without the marinades or sauces, but I didn't want to be difficult for the kitchen staff. His next suggestion was that I order dessert while everyone else ate the entrees, and then when we were done, he would take me where I wanted so I could eat dinner while he and the kids ate dessert. So I opted just not to go because I didn't want to sit there not eating and not having a good time while everyone else was. My husband asked me to go so he could celebrate with the people most important to him. I told him no again and that he needed to get going before he was late. He did go, but he came back a little over an hour later with the kids and they all had to-go boxes. He said he couldn't think of what to tell the kids about why I didn't go and when they kept asking without lying or making me sound bad, so he just got a to-go order for them and let the kids spend some time with their grandparents talking in the parking lot. I told him he should have stayed, but he said that I put him in a bad spot with the- Yeah, you threw him a suicide pass! That's a classic suicide pill. It's a, also called a poison pill. I'm going to make you swallow this thing that it is going to... Basically, you're saying, I'm going to make you make me mad. No, ha have fun. No, you go. Have a good time. There's no way to, there's no way to win. I mean, this is, this is next level. It's not even picky eating. It's just like... Uh, it's just entitled? Like... We were, are going to go... My husband earned a promotion. He picked a restaurant. It, the restaurant's known for prime rib. I normally prefer chicken or fish, but they only had three chicken or fish entrees. And none of them sounded like exactly the thing that I want to eat. Like, is this the first time you've ever been at a restaurant where you, you, you have, like, limited options? Like, I, I understand if, you, if you're used to going to a, a restaurant where there's like a burger section on the menu that is just like beef and corn syrup, like 12 different ways. The Jack Daniels Applewood Smoked Bacon Burger, the, the, the Cheddar and Swiss Burger, the Mushroom Burger, the Plant Burger, the Farm Burger, the Garden Burger, the, like, the Tequila Lime Pineapple Burger, the burger with the onion rings on the top, the inexplicably tall burger with the messy fried egg on top of the top bun. The burger that comes with another burger as a garnish on top of it. Like, it's just too much. Because you're, like, the way she's making herself sound reasonable by saying, like, I prefer chicken or fish, which is already, like, not that reasonable when prefer just means you are willing to eat steak, but it's not your favorite thing in the world, but that's okay because it's in honor of someone else. Um, like, why does, I, I just don't understand why she's not eating the chicken or the fish. They don't sound good. You don't go to a restaurant to, to hear the food. Not many comments. She's, she only made a couple, which is great. Okay, are you really trying... Here we go. Let me, I don't even know if my screen region will look right here. Kind of. Are you really trying to say this restaurant only had, what, four dishes that they served? Maybe we should click on the context. 
<clears throat> Holy cow, this first post is too insane. I'm not reading the essay here. This has 93,000 upvotes. Holy cow. The various reasons was one of the dishes was chicken fried chicken, and I don't eat fried foods. The fish was snapper, which I don't like, and was stated as being marinated in bourbon sauce prior to its cooking. And the chicken was glazed with a bourbon sauce. I can't stand even the slightest hints of bourbon or its smell. Listen, I, I think that is ridiculous, but it's like less ridiculous than it sounded in my head. If she is disgusted by the smell or taste of bourbon, then okay. Fair enough. If everything has bourbon in it, then I, I understand. I, but I, I don't like Snapper, though, is, is also kind of like... I don't know, like... This is not going to be a popular take. I have a pretty easy life. I'm not going to say that I don't. Do you ever feel that some people's lives are just like so easy that they have forgotten how to deal with like the slightest bit of adversity? Like you can just eat... You don't like Snapper? Okay, then order the steak. Or order the Snapper and like eat a little bit. Put the rest in a to-go box. Take it home. Your husband will eat it out of the fridge at 11.45. It's, it's just not that big of a deal. Like you can, it, I, I know I'm referenced this once a month. This is our, our classic Kitchen Nightmares Jay Willie's reference. This is giving me huge vibes of the woman at Jay Willie's who starts to cry because they serve her burger on sourdough bread instead of a hamburger bun. And then they have to like comfort this middle-aged woman who is mad. She's literally weeping because her hamburger sandwich is on the wrong kind of bread. He even offered to take her to a different restaurant. She was like, yeah, no, you should pick. No, no, it's your, it's your special day. You pick. Could you pick someplace else, though? The various... Re okay, sorry. Are you really trying to say this restaurant only had, like, what, four dishes that they serve? Even if they did, you, could have, you couldn't have eaten beforehand and gotten something small like a salad? No, they had a variety of steaks and beef ribs and pork chops. I don't eat ribs or anything made from pig because it upsets my stomach and makes me gassy. Steaks are 50-50 if I get gassy. Half the sides had bacon in them, so they were out. Okay, what about the other half? One salad had peppered steak in it. The other salad they were temporarily out of because they didn't have the mandarins, grapes, or cranberries for it. Why didn't you just ask for the salad without the peppered steak? No reply. <laughs> <laughs> oh man she's she's not ready for what the world might have to go through you know you gotta you gotta train yourself to have a little bit of strife in your life so when a, a very normal situation comes up like this like my favorite food isn't on the menu that you just you just eat it it's okay like anyway or especially, if, listen, you should really just do this on the regular. I'm not saying like every week or anything like that, but like at least a couple of times a year, you should find yourself in a situation where maybe you got to try a new food, okay? But like, especially when it's your husband's promotion, like, like you just got to own it. You know, it's my wife's birthday. Sometimes, you know, she's like, I want to go to this place. And I'm like, it's not my favorite restaurant. Okay. It's not my, it's not my 25th birthday for the fourth year in a row. You, you, you just go and you, you have a great time. And you know what? Maybe you try something new and you find out that you actually enjoy it. It's like literally the simplest thing in the world. Yeah, I ate, remember I ate the damn triangles. <laughs> I ate the konyaku. And you know what? I, I took more than one. That shit, I didn't know what it was on the menu. I said, just give me whatever. I took one, it, it came out, it looked like fucking goo. And I said, I'll try it. And I said, this is the worst shit I've ever eaten in my entire life. And then Kate said, you got to try it with the mustard. So then I, I dipped it in the mustard and I was like, this is still ass. It just, the mustard is kind of good, but the, the triangles are horrendous. And I'm still here to this day. I didn't immediately go throw up in the alley outside. I just said, I'm not trying that again. And that's something I don't even like. She likes the food. It's just not her choice. It's just... 
like this is like juvenile behavior. Like if you're, <laughs> did you send them back? No, I think they were supposed to taste like that. I don't, <laughs> I don't think that, uh, I think we made a mistake in the ordering process. We should not have been in that restaurant probably. I know, what a team player. Go, hey, no, uh, hey, nice, have a nice dinner, honey. How about you and the, how about you and our whole family have a nice dinner without me? Don't have too much fun. Similar to this post, r slash my little pony. Okay, sure, why not? Am I the asshole for asking my daughter to uphold her end of the deal? One thing you need to know about Redditors, they love contracts. Like if you didn't read the fine print on a contract and the fine print said like, at the, uh, if I say um, Balthazar, you have to give me all your money, they'd be like, well, that's why you read a contract. <laughs> you have to read it all the way through, even if there's some insane shit in it. Sorry, deal's a deal. You made your little identifying signature with a felt tip pen. Now I own your soul. Honestly, I don't feel that this situation needs to be on Reddit. But my daughter, husband, and many of my family members are calling me an asshole, and I'm not really sure anymore. Listen. How could one sentence be? You've got, you've got the wisdom of a sage, and yet the foolishness of a young child. If the people in your life are calling you an asshole, the people that you love the most and value the most are calling you an asshole, you should probably listen to them. Listen, I didn't want to post this on Reddit, but the three people whose opinions I trust the most disagree with me, and obviously that's not okay, so I need some other people to, to validate me here. Anyway, for context, four years ago, when my daughter was 12, she desperately wanted a pool. She said that all her friends have pools, and I'm the only one who doesn't have a pool. Plus, I love swimming, and I'll use it every day in the summer. My husband and I could afford one, but I'm sure, as some of you know, pools are very expensive, and neither of us really like swimming. So we wanted my daughter to understand the cost she was asking. Am I the asshole for buying my 12-year-old daughter a $40,000 gift and not getting the respect I deserved after it? I told her, if we're going to buy you, uh, uh, if we're going to change the property value of our house and take on a lot of recurring costs for you as a sixth grader, you've got to understand the terms of this arrangement, okay? We made an agreement that we would install a pool, but once she was old enough to start working, she would pay us back for half of it. One of the worst business deals I've ever heard in my entire life. You, you signed a, you, a handshake deal with a 12-year-old girl that said, hey, in four years, you owe us half the price of this pool. Are you crazy? You were operating under... And, and you didn't do it just to, like, feel... Because I could see, not me necessarily, but I could see someone being like, I don't want to spend this money, so I'm going to live under the delusion that she's going to pay me back for half in four years. And then in four years being like, that was fucking stupid of me. I'm just going to eat that and let's never think about it ever again because it makes me feel bad. <laughs> so, but to uh, actually think that it would stick around, like that would actually happen is, is true madness. Well, flash forward to now. She's 16, she's lived an extra one-third of her life, and she's got some different opinions than she used to have, which is crazy. She got her first job, and now she wants to save up for a prom dress she really likes. Uh-uh, sister, I reminded her of our agreement about the pool, which she forgot about, because that shit was like a different, it was a lifetime ago for her. She no longer wants to uphold her end of the agreement. I insisted, threatening to take away her phone and car privileges if she doesn't take pay back her father and I. Now she won't speak to me. My husband's agreeing with her, saying we can't have honestly expected a 12-year-old to keep her end of the agreement. For me, this isn't even about the money in many ways. It's about teaching my young daughter the right morals to live life with. I don't want her to think she can just go around making deals for her benefit and then just not upholding them. Am I the asshole? You're insane. It's not about the principle at all. It was about principles. People would be like, hey, uh, Mrs. Principal, don't make a business deal with a 12-year-old. There's a reason that shit is, like, not legal. They don't know what they're... They, they would sign over their life savings for, like, two Oreos. 
they don't have the intellectual function and, and prowess to take a, an adult and sober mindset into this. They don't have long-term planning skills. It's crazy. Obviously, you're the asshole. Like my daughter spamming, I agree to all the terms of service. Yeah, every time she opens like a Pink Fong Baby Shark app, they're like, hey, read this whole form. My two-year-old's like, boom, she doesn't even, she can't even read a single word. What are they going to do? They're going to take her to court? She's going to be like, goo goo gaga. Well, she can actually talk, but like she's not going to respond to the proceedings too well. It's just, this is just crazy. Yes, she's insane. Not my daughter. She seems, well, I don't know. How would I know? She's only two. She acts a little crazy, but I think it's like, you know, <laughs> pretty, pretty par for the course for someone her age. She's so emotional, though, dude. Oh, my God. Can't we just sit down and, like, talk about how you can't have two chocolate eggs for dinner? Why, do we, why does everything have to be a temper tantrum? It's embarrassing. You're acting like a child. This is just, it's, it's actually, you can justify any stupidity by just saying it's about the principle. And it, it, it has no validity in this case. You know how many promises I make to my two-year-old? You promise you're going to eat your dinner? Yeah. Okay, then we can play a little bit more. Catch her like 15 minutes later tossing the, the plate of grilled cheese across the damn room. Like this is, you can't reason. I get that she's 12, but like you can't reason with children. Their brains just don't work the same way that most adult brains work. And this shit was four years ago. You shouldn't, like I think you can make a deal with like a 12-year-old. That's like, I'll get you a puppy, but you have to walk it. And then like the next morning, they should be walking the dog. You can't, you can't even do this shit with most adults. Most adults are not signing deals. With, you ever heard of those like, uh, uh, you know, you buy like a, a, an ottoman at the brick and they're like, if you buy it today, you don't make payments until 2025. They go back on the payments like 20% of the time. They're defaulting like crazy. You can't sign something that's like, as, as a 30-year-old, it's difficult to sign something and then be like, yeah, four years from now, this is where my life's going to be at. This is where my head is going to be at. I'll figure it out. To expect like a 12-year-old to do it makes you the idiot. You got in a verbal agreement with a 12-year-old for thousands of dollars and are now trying to enforce it. Seriously, four years later, the right morals to live with are that 12-year-olds cannot legally enter contracts. Thank you, guys. I'm new to Reddit and not on other socials. User received Reddit comment for this post. It's, it's true insanity. I'm glad that people were, were on the same side here. Okay, hold on. OP's got some comments. Oh, no, dude. Only four comments. Here's This one was downvoted 5,000 times. I'm paying for her food, clothes, the house she lives in, the car, and everything else. I don't think she needs a cut of the real estate, too. Like I said, this is about morals, not money logistics. Hey, you conceived her, shithead. Are you stupid? Oh, the baby I made is living in my house. Duh! Who could have predicted that one? This has got to be one of the stupidest things I've ever read in my entire life. Actually, I pay for my 16-year-old's groceries. No kidding. She's made of... You grew her inside of your damn belly. Of course you're paying for her groceries. He never a story if she was like, you know, in her 40s or something like that. But like my sister in Christ, like you had the baby can't use it you know, some motherfuckers will really like have a kid and then use it against the kid yeah well i made you my neighbors are a young couple in their 30s annie and bill this story is fake there is no 30 year old man named bill left in the united states of america if they said a young couple in their 30s annie and will i would buy it will seems contemporaneous but there is no man in his 30s going, yeah, my name is Bill. Maybe in his 130s. We are running. Look at the graph. In like 1970, we had bills coming out of our whatever, man. Now we, we had jobs, cash, and hope. 
20 years later, no jobs, no hope, no cash, and no bills. Anyway, my neighbors are a young couple from the 30s, Annie and Bill. They had a baby a couple months ago. The baby is called Cornelius. The baby was named Methuselah. The baby came home last month after three months in the hospital. My wife is friendly with Annie. We can't have children, so whenever we have a neighbor with a baby, my wife makes friends with them. A little weird. Like, I get it, but a little weird. We have my mom staying with us as she's no longer able to live independently. My mom has complained several times she can hear the baby crying, especially at night. My wife says the baby has a bad reflux and they are trying to deal with it. The baby screams several times a day. It's awful listening to the poor thing cry for so long. It does feel like they aren't dealing with the baby as quickly as they should be. Yep, you're, you got a problem. You have, you've, you've crossed the line. There's only one way to make your baby stop crying reliably, and they will send you to prison for employing it. You could, do, you could alleviate it. Trust me when I say that if, if it's loud for you, it's loud for the people that are actually in their damn house. Obviously, you think they're not troubleshooting it? They're just like, oh, I'm so sick of this baby. They're doing something. They're very aware. The baby screamed for 10 minutes solid the other night. My wife says the baby screams when they bathe it. And as Annie has told her, the baby does not like being bathed. Baby's always crying, and it's frustrating, especially when mom needs peace and quiet to recover from surgery. Listen, I get that it's frustrating. I'm sure it's also frustrating that like you want to fucking like fly like a bird, but gravity's holding you down to the rock surface that we live on on planet Earth. Sure, it's disappointing that there's not like a button on your solar plexus that you can press when you're hungry that makes you not feel hungry for a little. Just like a snooze button on hunger where you could be like, don't worry, I'm going to get lunch. I just need to finish this email real quick. Boop. But unfortunately, this is the world we live in where, you know, that shit is science fiction and babies also cry and there's not that much you could do about it. I'm not saying you can't be frustrated, but there's like there is no upstream problem or upstream solution. Me with zero parenting advice. Have you played some music that the baby finds soothing? I just thought that I would pop in and be completely useless for a minute. Anyway, sorry. Since the baby has come home, there is no longer any room on our street during the day as we have on-street parking. Does the baby drive a Chevy Tahoe? I don't understand. Since the baby has come home, there is no longer any room on our street during the day as we have on-street parking. This is making it difficult to get mom to appointments as she can't walk to the end of the street to get in her car. We also can't park in the middle. of Yeah, I'm aware you can't park in the middle of the road. Obviously, it's not my suggestion here. It can take over 10 minutes to get her in the car due to mobility issues. There's always been at least one empty bay outside our house, but now it is always occupied by someone from their families or one of the other healthcare professionals involved in the baby's care. It, this can't be real. There is no way there is a grown man who is like, I can't, I'm struggling to take my mom to the doctor because there's always a doctor taking care of a baby outside of my house. What do you think that maybe like the baby, the baby doctor should get the parking spot 50% of the time and you should get the parking spot the other 50% of the time? Also, this is very, like, I, I, I understand the frustration. Don't get me wrong. But like this shit comes up in Vancouver all the time. There's like once a month on r slash Vancouver, there's a post that's like, uh, a guy came to me when I was in my car and said, you can't park here. This is my house. Do I have to move? And everybody's like, fucking no. If you, you know, if you live in an area where you don't have a driveway and there's street parking, you don't get the parking spot in front of your house. It's just, you know, it, it, it's damn. Co Listen, can I tell you? I don't know if I should admit this. Sometimes, you know, if we're going to like Van Dusen Botanical Gardens, basically, I'm saying if you live in Shaughnessy, fuck you. I don't listen to your damn rules. No sign is going to tell me what to do. I'm going to Van Dusen Botanical Gardens. You know, it's the Festival of Lights. It's the Japanese uh, Sakura Blossoms or something like that. It, the parking is all fucked up. I drive into Shaughnessy. It's the rich go fuck yourself neighborhood where they're like, no, never raise our property taxes, even if it will build 100 schools. All the side streets say you need to have a permit to park here unless you're the homeowner. I just fuck, I find the first spot. I put that shit in park. I walk to the damn Van Dusen Botanical Gardens. They can drive around the block if they want. You're not using the spot? I'm, I'm taking the damn spot. You think, I, you think I'm going to let a... Th listen, I pay for parking if I park on the street. It funds civic services like paying for the parking attendants who give people tickets that don't pay for parking. 
Me parking in front of somebody's house? Who knows? Who's to say I'm not the owner except for the owner? So sometimes I'll see a sign that's like local traffic only. I'm like, well, I'm local traffic, bitch. I need to be here. <laughs> I, I need to go I'm, for temporarily. I'm local traffic. I need to be on this road to get to another road. So sorry. Here I go. Don't worry. I won't hit anything while I'm on the road, but like chill out. I, by the way, they can be frustrated. That's fine. And they have a valid reason for their frustration. It would be nice if they could park else. Well, here's what you got to do. You got to buy a second car. And then the next time the doctor gives us the parking spot, you got to fucking take that parking spot with a car and then never drive it again. That's it. You just got to buy another car. It's the only... Because here's the thing. I know it's frustrating. There's like a shared resource and you're like, I need it right now. And somebody else is like, I also need it right now. And you're like, well, fuck. <laughs> that's, the, that's, that's how it works at the library of parking. If somebody signed out 12 rules for life, then, you know, your ass has got to go across town and, get, you know, go to the Dunbar location or something. I reached a breaking point this weekend. Mom had been home alone all day and she was in tears when I got home from work. Wife was away visiting friends. She said the baby had been screaming all day long. It was still crying when I came home. I went and knocked on Bill and Annie's door to ask if they could quieten the baby. Excuse me, Bill and Annie. Perchance could you quieten the baby? I could see through the frosted glass that Annie was sat at the bottom of the stairs, not even trying to calm the baby down. I got a little snapshot of their life and extrapolated that out to the rest of the day. She was urinating, not even actively spending 24 hours a day trying to silence their own child. When she came to the door, she apologized and said she'd been trying to calm baby down, but the new medication was making him constipated and he was straining the poo. She had Bill, she had, Bill had gone to pick up an emergency prescription to try and help. I snapped as she clearly hadn't been trying as she was on the stairs. And I told her they need to be more considerate of others. And if they didn't quieten the baby, I would log a noise complaint with the police. Excuse me, uh, knock, knock, knock. Mr. and Mrs. Simmons, um... I had reports that there's a crying baby here. What do you think they, they're going to do? Like, what are the police going to do for the baby? You really think that's going to help out the situation with two strangers coming into the baby's room? <laughs> and are like, hey, sir, sir, <laughs> quiet down. Sir, calm down. Annie was upset and closed the door in my face. When my wife came back, she told her what I had said. Now my wife is angry with me as I was making life difficult for a young couple with a sick baby and is giving me the silent treatment. I feel like I may be in the wrong because of how my wife reacted. But at the same time, the baby is always crying, dude. They need to be more considerate of their neighbors. We go through this all the time, okay? It's okay to be frustrated, but you have to think logically about whether it's okay to act on your frustration. Like, people get frustrated by completely reasonable shit every day. If your neighbor is mowing his lawn at 9 a.m. on a Sunday, and you normally get up at 10... You can be frustrated. Do you have a case to go over to his house and say, hey, could you do it at 11 next time? My personal opinion, 9 a.m. is kind of open season. I might even say 8 a.m. is open season, but I don't want to get too many minus twos. But everybody's got their own limits for that. But there's a couple of things we talk about. If you live in like a shared environment, you do have to be as considerate as possible of your noise that is preventable. But you also have to be very accommodating for the noise of other people that is reasonable. Something that, not even babies, because I know you're going to be like, this is parental take. So one thing that annoys me, you know, we have like a, a next door sort of like social network thing for our building. And you'll see shit on there that's like, hey, there's a barking dog on like the seventh floor. And I'm like, what do you want Strata Council to do? Fucking like knock down the door and be like, be quiet? It's a dog. It's like putting up a sign that says dogs can't pee here. Well, like fucking watch them go. Like they, you can't stop them. So like sometimes, yeah, I get annoyed. I like hear, I'm like, man, I wish that dog would stop barking. Then I remember like it's a dog and I'm like, okay, I guess I'll just be frustrated and be like life sucks for a little bit, but I'll get over it. Same thing with like, like babies. Everybody... Nobody likes to hear a baby cry, for the record, but there is, like, legitimately, like, nothing you could do. If your kid's, like, three and they're holding a temper tantrum or, or throwing a temper tantrum, there's stuff you can do. 
I've, I've grabbed my two-year-old and then taken them out of a store. But at the same time, like a, an infant, there's nothing you could do. They simply don't respond to reason. They don't know what you're saying. You, you can't reason with them. All, all you've got is, you've got like a bottle of milk, and you've got like a snack, and maybe you've got like a toy. And you, you cycle. You're like, milk, toy, snack, snack and milk, snack and toy, toy and milk, clean diaper. Like, you don't know what it's like to have uh, 12 teeth cutting through your gums at any given moment. I'm just saying, this, I guess what I'm trying to say is I have some sympathy for the fact that it's frustrating to deal with a crying baby because fucking I uh, deal with a crying baby. It's my baby. It's probably less frustrating when it's your baby, but it's still fucking annoying. You think you, it's awesome to wake up at like 3.30 a.m. To, to the worst alarm clock of all time when you were also up at 1 and 11? This shit is garbage. No one would sign up for that deal if, if evolution hadn't tricked us. If, if you're the neighbor, you got to put in like a damn, put in some earbuds or something like that or move to a detached house. I know it's not that simple, but like, you know, it's the way of the damn world. And then you, you look the other way when the baby's crying and I look the other way when it's a fucking random Thursday and you got divorced, so you're playing EDM at 110 decibels at 2.30 a.m. for some reason. You wouldn't look the other way? No, I would definitely, I would knock on the door. I wouldn't call the police, but I would knock on the door. I feel like a withering glance from a neighbor is, is more effective than a, than a police noise complaint. At least for like an adult. If they're in college or something, maybe the police are more effective. But if you're like the same age as the person that you're noise complaining, complaining, and you're like, really, brother? Like we're the, we're fucking, we were in the same second grade class. Your ass is out here drinking alone, listening to EDM on your speakers at 3 a.m.? What, what happened? Knock it off. They, I don't even need to read the comments. They're obviously... They're just, they're, they're just insane. Wait a minute. How about this? Am I the asshole for, not, for including my coworker in Secret Santa when she clearly does not want to be in it? Now, this is a good one for me because I need to ask you some clarifying questions. If you add your coworker in the Secret Santa, doesn't that fuck up like the whole rotation? Isn't that one of those things where everybody like needs two dance partners? I hate buying gifts. I would puke if this happened to me. I'm like a pure ass gift giver for sure. I don't know if Kate's still in chat, but she'll tell you like every year for Christmas, I don't get her like a bowling ball like Homer Simpson, but around like the end of November, early December, I'm like, hey, I need to get you a Christmas gift. And then she, to her credit, I actually think it works pretty well because she's like, okay, here's something I want. And then I get it for her, which is great because it takes the guesswork out of it. It's not, admittedly, it's not romantic. It's like purely like fulfilling a transaction, essentially. But it works for us. I, but I, and as much as that makes me sound bad, let me make myself sound worse. I think I'm actually worse as a gift receiver than as a gift buyer. Because as a gift receiver, I'm useless. I am devoid of material wants. So whenever someone is like, hey, I need to get you something for Christmas, I'm like, I don't really even like buy myself anything. Like I buy myself food and that's basically it. I don't, I don't, I don't buy like a lot, I don't buy a lot of media or like, you know, I'm not into fashion or anything like that. I'm just... So I, that's why even my parents end up getting me like, you know, Subway gift cards and stuff like that. <laughs> but I'm like, most of the time, spousal gifts a little different. But for anybody that's not literally like my spouse, I'm like, I would actually, don't be mad, but I would actually be happier if you didn't get me anything. Because if you get me something, I'm going to then feel compelled to have to get you something and I don't want anything, and I hate buying gifts. So, like, you basically, by getting me a gift, you've actually given me, like, two, and I know how this sounds, but you've created two very, very mildly unpleasant things for me, which is okay. Tis the season, but, like, now I gotta go out and I gotta be like, what do I get for my uncle who I haven't fucking seen since 2013? I'm like, I don't know. I'm not saying nobody should exchange gifts. I'm just saying there's a different 
I'm not, I'm not Ebenezer Scrooge. I, I love, it's the most wonderful time of the year. I'm just, I would actually, genuinely, I would be happier buying someone a gift and not receiving one in return. But people don't believe me, and I understand why they don't believe me, because if someone said that to me, I would be like, yeah, right, you're trying to trick me into not getting you a gift so that I like owe you a favor for the rest of my life. Of course, you gave me a gift, I gotta get, there's no way I'm not getting you a gift. No, no, you don't get me a gift. You don't get me a gift, and I, I will get you a gift. I, my ideal Christmas arrangement would be, like, again, people you're very close with, gift exchange. Otherwise, at family Christmases, children under the age of 14 receive presents from parents, grandparents, aunts, and uncles. Everybody over the age of 14 two glasses of white wine and a meal that somebody else cooked for you. And that would be a beautiful, that would be my ideal holiday experience, I think. Not me and my, my great uncle exchanging $20 HMV gift cards to each other for no reason, letting that shit rot in our wallet for the next 10 years. Anyway, regardless. Am I the, so we, we got lost in the sauce a little bit there. Am I the asshole for including my coworker in Secret Santa when she clearly does not want to be in it? My work has seven female employees, including the two bosses. That's pretty based. Needless to say, we're all very close. That's not needless to say. That is... You need to say that. I would not assume that just because there were seven women working together, they were all friends. I'm sexist. I would assume that they, are, they all talk shit about each other behind each other's backs. I'm, I'm problematic like that. I think it needed to be stated. We interact with each other on the daily, even hanging out outside of work. My F20, wait, but you're literally talking shit about, their back right, or behind them, about them behind their back right now, now that I think about it. <laughs> I, I knew it, I knew it. This confirms my, my problematic biases. <clears throat> we had split Secret Santa into three weeks for the last three weeks of December. Week one, trinket. Week two, trinket. Week three, final gift exchange and staff dinner. This company is not going to last through the bear market. This is a company that can only exist in near zero interest rate environments. You are not getting any work. Uh, December, you got three, three weeks of Secret Santa? This shit sounds exhausting, man. I would accept one for sure. That, you know, it's December. Take a long lunch, exchange gifts. It's festive. But like once a week for three weeks is crazy. Also, where do you buy trinkets? I don't know. <laughs> Like, I know where to get, like, a, like a main... Like, what? This is, Secret Santa is, what, like, under 30 bucks? Under 50 bucks? You can go to, like, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond or something like that. You can get somebody, like, a candlestick. Where, where are you getting trinkets? I don't understand. 50 bucks? I, listen, I'm in Canada. Inflation's 10%. Canadian dollars at uh, 1.37 USD. You can't buy shit for, like... I know people are saying under 20 bucks. You cannot buy anything for under $20 in Canada. You could buy lunch for one person or possibly an adult and a child. <laughs> Here's my, everyone's like so into giving gifts. Then all of a sudden they're like 50 bucks. Ooh, that's too much. If you're getting a $50 gift in return, you're giving $50 and you're getting $50. Oh, it you'd rather have that extra $30 difference to get something for yourself? Ergo, my problem with the gift-giving experience unsolicited. You're making my point for me. A $50 gift I don't want? So you, you're preaching to the choir. We never disagree with you? Okay, then why am I yelling? Um, this year, it was, sorry. Her first two gifts came the following week, which ruined her experience of looking for her. It's a fucking scavenger hunt. Is it fucking stomp? She's, she's got to find her gift as well. Of looking for her gift and waiting for it to appear during the designated week. She also felt her final gift was below budget and not thought out a wallet. As everyone was having their own experience, admittedly, we didn't notice how bad hers was. This year, October, we selected the names for Secret Santa. That is when she told everyone about her experience, how terrible it was, mentioning multiple times to different people and saying she does not want to be involved this year. 
in charge. I still put her name in the generator. Okay. I would say this is the first misstep. <laughs> I didn't listen to all that, but uh, sorry that happened to you or congratulations or whatever. Me and one of the bosses hoping to persuade her as we made a rule in the generator, her and her past Santa would not get each other. It did not work. What do you mean? The rule didn't work or she didn't have a good time? Because if the rule didn't work, you got you to gotta work on your back end, I think. Also, why do you have a secret Santa generator? Whatever happened, it, it just cutting up. Also, it's not secret Santa if you know who she got. Can't you just cut up a piece of paper and write names on it and, and draw them out of a hat? There's seven people at the office. You're telling me they need a generator for Secret Santa? It's just getting too... We're too 21st century, man. We forgot about the, the mundane pleasures of the 90s. Instead, I asked her to show me who she got and, to, and decided to get the gifts for both her and my original person without telling her Santa that she was not participating. This was done so she could still receive a gift without having to put in the effort. I know we're going back to a callback here. Is nothing getting done at the office? You're overcomplicating the... It's just supposed to be a nice little diversion from the banality of the day. Now you got it turned into like a damn, it's a heist movie. Late November, after people started buying gifts, she made a comment stating she still does not only, that she does not only does she not want to be, that not only does she not want to be a part of it, but if she gets a gift, she will leave it there at work. There is no way that she would not receive a gift. Either I would have three secret Santas or the bosses would still get her a gift. What is happening? I, I don't understand. <laughs> it would be terrible for the next three weeks for all to be excited about a surprise, surprise gift, knowing she's not involved or receiving. Her past Santa would feel guilty and not be able to enjoy the festivities. We would feel awkward brandishing gifts with her right here. The final brunch would be weird after we closed work. It's a, it's a brunch too? I know, wait, I just keep getting more surprised by the logistics. That shit starts at like 10 a.m. on a work day? I thought it was like a, maybe like a 1 p.m. office lunch or something. Nothing's getting, nobody's getting anything done, man. The fine, and also I know that we've, we've been through this before. Stop me if I've said that 10 times today. But this is the classic like person who honestly says, I don't want to receive a gift. People are like, I heard all that, but I don't want you to feel weird. If you didn't want me to feel weird, you would respect my wishes and you would not get me a gift. If everybody's opening presents and I'm sitting there, I'm fucking, I'm an adult. I can see someone open a present and not be like, oh, I wish that was me. Most of the time, I'm like, I'm glad it's not me. <laughs> I'm glad. When I'm at a restaurant and someone's getting happy birthday sung to them, I'm like, damn, dude, I'm, I'm glad as hell it's not my birthday today. I'm not going to feel weird. I will feel totally normal. If you get me a gift, I would also like pretend to feel normal too. But I, like, I don't like when people sing like happy birthday to me either. When I, when I worked at that office in Korea, my contract was like November to November. My birthday is in November. So it was like two days before I left for home. All these people I'm never going to see again sing me happy birthday. And I've sung happy birthday to like 27 people I'm never going to see again either. What a waste of, of our limited time on planet Earth. They don't, I, I, without, I'm not saying that this makes them bad people. They don't care about me. They're, they're not, it's, I'm never going to see them again. Abigail teacher from Day John, who I've, I've exchanged three words with in the 12 months that I worked here, she doesn't give a shit whether I have a happy birthday. I mean, if you put a gun to her head, she'd probably be like, I'd rather he have a happy birthday than a bad birthday, but she doesn't really care. It's not like she's racking her brain, like, how can I make... And, and why should she? We're strangers. It's the same way when it's her birthday. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I guess in principle, I hope she has a nice day. But, like, it's not like I'm, I'm going to get anything for her. I'm just going to sing the song and let her take the first piece of cake or whatever. Not everyone feels the way you do. Yeah, but everybody that doesn't feel the way I feel, they'd sing the happy birthday for them. It's not for me. It wouldn't be that bad. And by the way, I had a happy birthday sung to me when it was my birthday on the cruise, 
I was having a great time. I wore, I wore a tie all day that said, it's my big day. Hey, happy birthday to you. Hey, happy birthday, dear Ryan. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Woo! Our room had a, a, a magnet on it that said, it's my 34th birthday. I was living it up. I was being festive. But those are, I was getting a happy birthday from my family at the table. Not from my coworkers who like, I mean, honestly, it's been 12 years. I couldn't pick them out of a lineup now. It's a different story. Like it's in, when people have to sing happy birthday versus like when they choose. Anyway, just let her not have a present. Like what's the problem? I understand her stance. But at the same time, I feel like we should be free to ignore it so that everyone can enjoy the festivities. My thoughts have even gone so far as thinking she is selfish because she knows how small work is and how it will impact the holiday season for her to not receive a fucking a soap, a liquid soap holder that says soap on it, a ceramic soap bottle you pour liquid soap into that says soap on it. It has like a little olive or something. Just accepting the gifts graciously is fine because we're only doing it to make her feel included. She wants to be excluded. She was. <laughs> she literally said, don't include me. What's wrong with you? You're not listening. And we're going to, hey, I know you had a bad time last year. You don't want to do it this year. We're going to force you to do it this year to make it up to you. We aren't forcing her to buy anyone a gift. That's even worse, man. Because now she's going to get a gift and have not given a gift to anybody else. So now if you were worried about making her feel awkward, her ass is going to feel awkward because she's receiving a gift, but she didn't pay it forward. She's going to feel like a freeloader, or she, at least she's going to feel like you guys think she's a freeloader. As her gym partner and someone who hangs out with her outside of work, I could never receive a gift and be excited to talk to her about it, knowing she can't enjoy it as well. And she'd have two bad Christmases at work, but maybe I'm being selfish. You've lost your damn mind. You've, you've gone insane. It is so s simple to just listen to another person for something so minor as this and be like, I don't want to be a part of it, and be like, that's okay, I respect that. Maybe I disagree with it, but I respect that you're also an adult with you know, an adult mind, and, and you can make a different choice than me, and it'll be okay. Anyway, I mean, like, I, it's not that big of a deal. It's just like, I just don't understand why you're not listening to her. Like, it's crazy. She's just chilling. Just let her enjoy her life. I don't understand the problem. I mean, I'm trying to think, when I worked in an office... In, in Canada, I enjoyed being a team player. I brought stuff to the potlucks. And you know what? I ate stuff at the potlucks. Can I tell you, even though, it, it, 20, I wouldn't say I was a picky eater, but more picky than I am now, I would eat some shit at the potlucks that I didn't even think I would like at all. But I'm sitting next to the person who made it. So you know I'm getting some potato salad. You know I'm getting, so they're all salads. Pasta salad, potato salad, etc., etc. And then you eat it and you go, wow, Lori, this is delicious. Because it's fucking, you're all spending seven hours a day checking your damn email over and over. You know, just anything to get the neurotransmitters pumping and get some happy chemicals. You know, you today, you, tomorrow, me. If Lori was like, don't eat the pasta salad, I'd be like, why? <laughs> what'd you do to the, Lori, what'd you do to the pasta salad? But I would listen to her. I wouldn't eat the pasta salad because... Even if it sounds like an insane request, you know, I respect where it's coming from. You're the asshole. Enforced fun is not fun. If she doesn't want to take part, you should have left her out. Yeah, but... You're the asshole. Secret Santa sucks because people often say it's voluntary. Then there still ends up being situations like this. Can I tell... I, I think this is a very unpopular take. I can only tell you that this is coming from a genuine place for me. I find Yankee Swap more fun than Secret Santa because... Yankee Swap has, like, gameplay. Secret Santa is like, thank you, thank you. Oh, I, this is what I wanted, thank you. Yankee Swap is like, I wonder what the fuck is in that one. I'm taking the, I'm taking the medium, I'm giving up my big box to take a medium-sized box because the big boxes are always disappointing. I've never heard it called Yankee Swap. Yankee Swap is, is a white elephant where, like, there's a pile of gifts and then the first person takes a gift, and then the second person chooses whether they want to take a different gift or if they want to swap their gift with someone else at the table or at the, at the event. It doesn't have to be at a table, I guess. 
And I, I think people are like, it's bad because it could like hurt feelings if you get a great gift stolen from you. I'm like, no, that's why it's fun. Because nobody knows who's going to get the gift. So you're not like trying to soul read them and be like, oh, do they want a deck of cards with minions on it? Or do they want like a bottle of perfume from Shopper's Drug Mart, right? Instead, you're just like, fucking send it. What, what box do you think looks the best? There's always one guy who brings something cool. Well, that's the office one is like, doesn't Michael give Ryan an iPad or an iPod back when the iPods were the top of the line? Everybody else bought like, you know, a deck of playing cards and a $5 gift certificate attached to it. I remember that the first time I played Yankee Swap was in sixth grade. I remember, I, some, and this is, I swear to you, is true. I was in the position of power. On last swap, it was me. And I said, I'm going to take uh, Danielle's because it's the biggest box. And everybody was like, whoa, he's, he got the big box. And I remember the person who bought it was like, you don't really want the big box. And I cracked that shit open. And it was like just an outrageously large novelty pencil like that you couldn't even write with. It was like a pencil you had to hold in your hand like this. And I was like, you know what? I was owned, but also I think that gave me a new respect for the game. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I, I have to apologize to you. I wasn't familiar with your game. I thought this was a big box must be the, the best gift. I didn't realize. You got to go with a medium-sized box. Maybe. I don't know. We should do a Yankee swap. It's just being harassed into spending more money at a time of year when money's already tight and inflation is killing everyone. Also, that you can buy someone you barely know or may not even like something they probably don't even want. Yeah, that's true. I do want to say there's a caveat here that, like, it's, it can be fun. The way I always thought about stuff like this when I worked at an office was, like, yeah, I got to spend, like, 20 bucks to buy Susan, who I know nothing about, like, a little tchotchke or whatever, but... Then we get to have like an extra 45 minutes at lunch one day where we all get to actually like socialize with each other. So, it's, I mean, it's, it's kind of a shit deal, but at least you're, you're getting like something out of it on the back end. But I can understand not everybody thinks it's, it's, I mean, I don't think it's that fun, but I think it's, you know, I'm just not that serious about the secret Santa, I guess. Forced personal events at work are unprofessional and toxic. People should be given the choice to say no. By all means, run extra events and invite people, but this is not her job. Okay, true, so t true, but like, come on. Hey, all right, let's do it. Hey, you're the asshole. Do you typically force your holiday things on everyone or just your coworkers? Even if the company is tiny, you can't do that. Especially a trinket one week, real gift the next, then dinner. What are you trying to court them or something? You'll be lucky to get a homemade car from me. Shit, you'll be lucky if I text my coworkers anything related to happy. I'd be lucky if you shut your damn mouth, dusty mother. I don't even know who you are. You speak to me like this? Well, you're not speaking to me. You're speaking to me. That lady might be crazy. You don't have to be this mean in response. This is too much. Can't you just write like you're crazy? Lol. <laughs> Can't you just write something withering like Lamau lady you really thought or something like that? That would be so much more effective than this like millennial manifesto or something like that. Here's one that this, this has got to be bald posting, right? Am I the asshole for saying I won't come to Christmas at my in-laws if I can't wear a hat? This is a petty little thing, but maybe you guys could help me know if I was in the wrong. For context, I, 25F, got married in November. Okay, maybe not bald posting. My mother-in-law doesn't really like me, even trying to steal the spotlight at my wedding, but it's still overly traditional. At Thanksgiving, I was having a really bad hair day, so I wore a black leather cap, a dressier newsboy-style one. Oh, no, dude. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. Everything's, we're going to be okay. Which my husband said looked great on me. The holiday was hostile, even more so than prior gatherings that I'd been to, and my hubby said her mother-in-law, his mother-in-law said it was because I wore a hat, but I know it was just an excuse. I told mother-in-law I wouldn't come to Christmas with them, and then blocked her number and her Facebook. My husband is trying to keep us both happy because he doesn't like conflict. He wants me to come to one more celebration to see if maybe people are getting used to me. He told... His mother, she needs to be nice and treat me as part of the family, since I am. And if I feel unwelcome at Christmas like I did at Thanksgiving, that we won't attend future events, and she won't see him much anymore. I understand why he wants me to go give them one final chance and haven't had any conflict with him. Marriage is about compromise, and I get that he doesn't want to cut her off since she's his mother, but I just don't want to be involved with her unless I have to be. Okay, but like, what does this have to do with a hat so far? Like, it's... 
it doesn't really seem like this is entirely driven by the head. It seems like she was just like disrespectful to you. I will say, and like, I outside winter summer, I'm wearing a hat. I do have to. I had to remember that, like, there are people who consider hats disrespectful. Like, I remember Kate. We had dinner with my parents' friends, and the the dad was like. Because you're the son of my friend, I'll let you wear your hat inside, but otherwise I wouldn't. I was just like, some people are very, you know, it was his house. I was, you know, in my head, was I like, that's a little bit weird? Yeah, but at the same time, I was like, all right, I mean, it's your, it's your house, your rules, and I'll, I'll probably never see you again anyway, which is fine. And then I've also, like, uh, you know, I realized I shouldn't be wearing... Uh, the, the, my Canadian hat on the Disney cruises because apparently my server thinks I'm wearing marijuana-based paraphernalia. But anyway, that, you know, that's beside the point, I suppose. I'm mostly just looking for a chance to reference it and tie it back into earlier content. I was rocking like a, a serious beard and skullet combo, man. I didn't even want to go outside. I was wearing my damn baseball hat everywhere. Nobody thought it was a Canadian flag. Everyone thought it was a damn marijuana leaf. First day on the cruise, the server comes up to me and says, Hey, man, I like your hat. I say, thank you. He says, I'm from Jamaica, so I get it. I say, uh, what? <laughs> and then I, it dawns on me for the next seven days, this dude's going to think I'm a open marijuana enthusiast on a family-friendly cruise ship. I'm just trying to... It's just the only hat I had, man. I was... Dude, don't hit me with the copium. I was doing the copium myself, Okay. I was like, maybe it's just North American solidarity. Thank you. I was doing the, the copium. I was like, maybe he was like, you know, because we're both from North American countries, he's like, I see that your country is in North America as well. I'm sure he thought, look at this, look at this damn pothead. Going to eat dinner with his two-year-old and his two, uh, like, 11 and 7-year-old nieces on a ship inhabited by... Characters from the Mickey Mouse Empire. Can't, has to let everybody know how much he loves cannabis. I wanted to see if mother-in-law was listening to him, so I asked my husband to request that I be allowed to wear the same hat at Christmas. Hubby said I thought I'd worn it because I had a bad hair day, but this time it's as a statement that they shouldn't treat me as an outsider, either because I wear hats all the time. Right now it's just the sports visor which I'd never wear to a holiday. So it's not like I'm doing that. She, like when, when she says right now it's a sports visor, she's talking about the hat that she's wearing while she's writing the post. Am I correct in, in putting this in context? Yes, okay. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> all right. Uh, or they just don't like me. If they won't let me wear a hat, what else are they going to restrict about me? Let me be me or I won't come, period. My husband agreed and realized this. <laughs> of course he did. Because you're like, no offense, you're a little insane. Which is fine, everybody's crazy in their own way. But I understand, he's like, it's, you know, just let her wear the hat rather than get in like a two hour long argument about whether a visor is, a, is really a hat or, you know, et cetera, et cetera. My husband agreed and relayed this to his mother and she's been asking him why he married the devil. He's growing tense with me and I told him he'll probably have to pick a side sooner or later and that I never intended it that way. He spent last night at a friend's house because he needed to think. I feel bad because I care about him and I know conflict stresses him out. Well, at least you're picking like some serious battles. At least you're not stressing him out for no reason over something petty. You waited until you just couldn't take it anymore until some very serious... Differences in values came to a head, and, 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 you know, it's important. It's important to work through this stuff. Update. My husband just texted me, saying he got off the phone with his mother. He told her off for calling me the devil and said if I can't wear a hat, he's not coming either, and that she really should get over her antiquated BS. She did not respond well. I don't think we're going to Christmas there now, so we'll, maybe we'll have a friendsmas? I don't know. We'll think of something. So I think that this person is not necessarily picking their battles appropriately, I don't really think that they're being an asshole. I think that we it, like it's the same situation or a very similar situation to maintain some form of like you know cognitive resonance as when somebody wants to bring their own food to a holiday. If I'm okay with somebody bringing a garden salad or samosas or you know 
Kanak abroad or whatever to Christmas, why should I not be okay with someone bringing a, a hat? If they're, the, if they're most comfortable in a hat, why not let her wear a hat? And then, you know, like maybe after you left my house, I might be like, if I was her husband, I'd be worried because I don't have a flat brim and a snapback. Um, I'd be worried that maybe like one day she would like leave me for her hat or something like that. I might make some sort of joke about it, some sort of <laughs> some sort of insults, you know, but I would still welcome them to Thanksgiving and then just maybe make one hat based joke about them after they left to which the other people at the party who were still there would say, you're bad. And I would go, eh, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I shouldn't say it. I shouldn't say it. I do want to see the hat, man. I hate how she described the hat. I think that's, that's really why I have found myself almost wanting to say everybody sucks here. Is when she was like, it's a dressy leather newsboy cap. That's where I was like, I can't. You remember when those, those photos on Twitter that are like, what, was, what were we thinking in 2009? And it's... Uh, you know, 50 Cent, where he's dressed like uh, he's in Peaky Blinders and stuff like that. 1990s Christina Aguilera vibes. There's that's definitely, I'm picturing Christina Aguilera from, uh, from the Dirty Tour. The Dirty Tour. Everybody sucks here. You took a situation that could have been a first step towards a less contentious relationship with your mother-in-law and made demands which intentionally antagonized her. Of course you should be able to whatever wear be able to wear whatever you want and your mother-in-law is being insane. But do you want to be right or do you want peace in the family? Well, she wants to be right. Absolutely. Just the way that she said if it's not the hat then what else is it going to be? Well, it seems like it's going to be whatever else you let it be, but that's fine. I mean, you it's the same you should be able to show up for the holidays like whatever you're comfortable in. I I again, I don't know if it's just like a generational difference, but I feel like most people like my age if you if I went to Christmas dinner and I was like wearing a suit and then my brother-in-law was wearing like a bathrobe, I would be like, "Get it, brother." Oh, I wasted all this time putting on a suit and you're wearing a bathrobe? Who the fuck cares? The earth is warming at like 0.25 degrees annually. We got other shit to worry about. Like, I'm just, you just eat the dinner? It's not a big deal. Like, the animals are leaving and... <laughs> just seems like this... Like, I, did, I don't care. Maybe he just wants to be comfortable. If someone wants to show up to like their family's funeral in, in socks and sandals and cargo shorts, like the day's already hard enough. Like who, who gives a shit? Oh, you're not taking it seriously because you don't have sleeves on your legs. It's disrespectful. Bro, it's respectful to like answer your family's calls. You know, it's respectful to when it snows to like shovel their driveway. Who cares what you wear to the funeral? Like, listen, I would wear a suit. But if somebody showed up in like a Hawaiian shirt, I wouldn't be like, oh, they're celebrating. I would be like, their ass was probably late. And they were like, well, it's between the, it's between my pajama shirt that says baby dick and uh, the Hawaiian shirt. And at least the Hawaiian shirt has buttons. You know, it's just, I'm judgmental, but I'm not judgmental in that way. I'm more judgmental that like, you know, I'm like, why are you walking down the middle of the grocery aisle when implicitly there's supposed to be like a left side and a right side for two different directions of traffic to move through. Like, are you nearsighted and farsighted? So you have to be standing exactly in the midpoint of the aisle so no carts can get past you in either direction? Some of these I'm just not going to touch. Am I the asshole for excluding my parents' throuple party from my wedding? That's one I'm just going to be, I have the shrewdness to stay away from that one. Just one, one too many issues that I don't want to get involved with. Why not call it a triumvirate? Does every thruple have a, a Pompey, a Caesar, and a Crassus? Because I, dude, I don't think I would want to be... I would have to get my ass out of there. If I, if I looked and I was like, he's Caesar, and she's fucking Pompey, that means my ass is Crassus? I gotta, I gotta form like a new triumvirate, man. I, gotta, I, I don't have to be Caesar, but I at least got to be Pompey, okay? 
If you are in a throuple and you find yourself being the, if you look at the other, if you look at the other couple in the throuple and you don't see a crassus, guess what? You the crassus. Am I the asshole for exposing my coworkers' bathroom habits? I, 25F, work at a smaller company of around 15 people. I get along with pretty much everyone, the exception of someone we'll call Alexis. Couldn't afford a car. No, okay, let's not go down this. <laughs> Sorry, I keep forgetting. Alexis is very socially conservative, and I am not. I do my best to not talk about some things I know will cause an argument, but they sometimes happen anyway. One time I used the bathroom right after the cleaning crew finished cleaning it. It didn't bother putting the toilet seat down because I was just going to squat the pee. I washed my hands, and when I exited, I bumped straight into Alexis. I apologized and went on with my day. For the next two weeks, I thought Alexis was being particularly sanctimonious, but I didn't say anything as it wasn't too out of character. The subject of women's sports came up during lunch, and she made a snide comment along the lines of people like OP ruin them for everyone else. What the hell?! All right, well, we're not going to touch this one either. Um, I'm going to say you're not the asshole. <laughs> I didn't know where... That is not how I thought this was going to go. Holy cow. Wait, but then, hold on. Because she gets owned at the end of the story. Let me just see how. I squatted Alexis. The energy of the room got very awkward, so I decided to make a joke. Are you telling me that you park your bare ass on the toilet seat in public restrooms? She turned bright red. Apparently she did, because she started muttering something about not being weird before bursting into tears and leaving the room, at which point Albert Einstein appeared. Serge, what's the guy's name from the ABC show, What Would You Do? Regis Philbin appeared from behind a curtain and said, you were on candid camera. We were testing people's morality and you... Did the, yeah. John Quinones? Why did I think his name was Sergio Garcia? Am I the asshole for letting my son get fast food and bring it to a wedding reception? Okay, maybe this one is like... Well, you know what? No, I was thinking wedding ceremony. Wedding ceremony, not okay, because it's you're in the church and nobody else is eating. Wedding reception, that's okay. I mean, it's like a little weird, but my son is a picky eater. He's 22. Okay, he's, he's an adult. Look, I, I'm not going to go to bed for the picky eater necessarily. Why? I don't think it's... It's weird, but the question is not, is this weird? Obviously, everybody on the website is is weird. It's, am I the asshole? And it really depends on what they said to the guy that brought the McDonald's, okay? In my opinion. My cousin was getting married and had a lovely reception with a nice buffet. Johnny wasn't a fan of what was served, so I let him leave and get some food. Word spread amongst our family. Okay, listen, you couldn't find something to eat at the buffet. That's what it's there. It's, it's got everything. Even if it doesn't have everything, it's got something. It's, it's a buffet. It's not even like a, you know, a la carte or something like that. Word spread amongst our family where he was going. And a few people asked him to bring things back, so he did. Okay, now that is, listen, that doesn't make you the asshole. First off, your son is 22. The question should really be, is he the asshole? But then also, he should have realized you can't bring stuff back for other people. Because now you're undermining the day. One person can bring their own food. Independent parties can bring their own food without colluding with one another. But you can't run like a, a guerrilla rum running operation to undercut the caterer, okay? We are at the table near a dance floor and you could probably smell it there. But nobody in our immediate family had a chance problem, even the bride and groom. Apparently, the venue and the family of the bride were appalled, and I don't understand why. It was a great party, but he wanted something different, and other people did too. So am I the asshole? He's 22 years old and in college. He has no medical issues. He just has a limited palate. When I said let, I meant I let him take my car since we all rode together. I, info, info. What did he bring back? It better at least have been another country's cuisine. Who's KFC? Oh, no. Oh, no. I see now. Everyone else who partook in the fast food did so because it was there and tasted good. They didn't have a problem with the venue's food. Also, as some people said, one or two chicken bones did end up on the floor in the venue. That was unfortunate. Oh, come on, man. So I don't know. First off, I like KFC. But being like I'm, 
I can't eat this garbage. I have to go get something like KFC is insanity. Your son does have a medical issue. He needs to be in the sanitarium with, with Renfield from Bram Stoker's Dracula. I would not take KFC over, over this meal, for one. But also, I'm not a picky eater. But also, if you are that picky of an eater... But there, there's something known as the picky eater's curse, okay? And I know this... I, I got over picky eating when I was like 17, but I still have many, many instances where you go somewhere and you're like, I can't eat anything. So you know what you do Like, if you want to maintain a, a copacetic environment where everybody's happy? You fucking starve. And then, like, when you leave, you go through the drive-thru and you eat really quick. Like, that's the, that's the secret. Or you yeah, drink a bunch of milk or something like that. Just <laughs> you're not going to die. You're just going to be, like, a little hungry. And, like, then you're, you're not going to be there all night. You're going to leave at some point, And then you're going to go get some food. It's not that big of a deal. That being said, I mean, I don't think... I mean, this is maybe a technicality. I don't think that OP is the asshole. I think his son is 22. And I, I didn't think that I was going to come into this and, and take the side of the, of the, the venue and the, the bride and groom. Because normally I'm like, you know, it, people got to be comfortable however they have to be comfortable. But the son made so many bad choices. Like being a little bit of a picky eater, whatever. Being a lot of a picky eater, whatever. Going to get your own meal because you're, you're hungry, but you can't eat the buffet food. That's like you're getting into the ESPN red zone. That's where we flip on the TV and we're, I got to see how this goes down because it's either going to be a big stop or uh, it's going to be a score, okay? Where you cross the line is when you started bringing stuff back for other people because now it's like you're running like a, a gray market catering service underneath the catering that the bride and groom had already paid for. And then on top of that, like you double down on the badness by getting the messiest fast food essentially of all time, like food that is greasy and has a, a, a strong aroma to it and also leaves bones everywhere, uh, and then also leaving the bones on the floor. So I, I think that, yeah, I think the 22-year-old is, is the asshole here. How could they, next time it happens, well, I would love to say... Take, give yourself time and take a decade and slowly expand your palate so that you, I, I promise the water's fine on the other side. Secondarily, if that's no longer an option, because oftentimes it isn't, what you're going to do in this situation next time is you're going to go through a drive through of a burger joint and you're going to eat the food in your car. And then if anyone asks when you come back, just say that you shit your pants and you had to go home and change real quick. That's it. As long as you, you don't need to bring back a, a, a bucket of fried chicken into the party. You just go eat really quick and then, and then come back. No one will question your story if you say that you crapped yourself because that's already like as embarrassing as it could be. He's cracked the code. That's, dude, you can use that for anything. Hey, Johnson, why were you late today? Sorry, sir. I got halfway to work and then I shit my pants. I had to drive home and change. Well, don't, so, Jesus, just take a sick day next time. All right, go, go to your desk. You can't use it every time? Well, no, you just have to escalate. It, you could probably use it like three times in a month, but then after that, you got to start pretending to have like ulcerative colitis, which you should probably should not do because it's immoral <laughs> for one, but also it's going to get, it's going to make your life like mighty complicated. Johnson, put down those potato skins. You know what makes your greasy food, makes your irritable bowel syndrome flare up. Oh, sir, thank you. What would I do without you? Son of a bitch. Could have just left the house 10 minutes early that one day. Did you see the tweet today that was uh, George Costanza in the car with Uma Thurman from Pulp Fiction? That was her heroin in my coat pocket. It was heroin. No, I never said the word cocaine. You thought cocaine and you snorted the whole thing. I never said cocaine. It was such a, a great post. Also, that was the first time I actually understood what happened in that scene in Pulp Fiction. I always thought she just took too many drugs. But to be fair, the first time I saw Pulp Fiction, I was 16. And the second time I saw Pulp Fiction, I was like 18. And that was the last time I saw Pulp Fiction, which is a great movie. But I was like, I've already seen it twice, so I don't need to see it again. 
It's a great, it's a great film. You're the asshole for sure. You should have arranged something. Wait, he's not an asshole. The, the 22 year old is the asshole. I don't know if I'm getting caught up in the semantics or something here, but he's 22. Like, are, okay, is, it depends. Like, is a 22-year-old a kid? Well, like, in the sense that I would trust them to pick their own meal? No, they're an adult. I would expect them to be able to, like, handle a situation like this and, and not fuck it up. That's a pretty small amount of responsibility. Would I trust them to, you know, like run a company well only if it was like a cryptocurrency exchange what's the worst that could happen am i the asshole for not wanting my ex-husband's new daughter to have a complimentary frozen name to the one our daughter already has frozen name i mean it has to be anna and elsa right like it's the only or it's olaf and <laughs> what's the reindeer sven my 31F ex-husband, 35M, got married less than six months ago with his girlfriend, 25F, and she got pregnant very fast. Recently, he told me they were having a girl. All of these details were not required, except for the, the, the pregnancy part. I don't understand why that had to be. <laughs> this stuff, I'm supposed to be upset with the husband implicitly because he got married and had another child too fast after the, after the divorce. Okay, I understand. But I'm not, because I don't know anything about him. I get that I'm supposed... I, get, I know a lot about you based on the way that you wrote this sentence. You, you, you tried to prime me, Shane Carruth. You tried to prime me into disliking him. I'm going to be a more sober judge. I'm a huge fan of the movie Frozen, which is fine. You can be a... I know people are going to be like, Disney adult, Disney adult. You can like a movie... You can bad chest it as well. I think both of those are within the spectrum of normal behavior right now. I'm not offended by either. So when our daughter was born, I wanted to name her Elsa. My husband agreed to that. I know it's a little dumb to name your kids after things like that, but it is not a super unusual or ugly name. It is pretty and it means a lot to me. In the whole scheme of names after media, this is not that bad. I wouldn't. Do it, but it's not that bad. It, it, it's, it's better than Khaleesi. Exactly. It's better than Dovahkin. Absolutely. Probably a bunch of people in chat right now are probably named Ness. So don't, don't step to me. I would never name my kid Elsa. Okay. Super Mario Koopa. <laughs> Bullet Bill. Bowser. Fuck you is what I'm trying to say. You piece. You think you're better than Elsa? She's six. Have some respect. My husband and I divorced when our daughter was three. We don't hate each other, but we're not best friends either. We don't hate each other. I just hate him. The issue with the new baby is that he explained to me that after he told his new wife the story behind the name of Elsa, she, I would have thought that, honestly, she probably could have pieced that together herself, but that's okay. I don't think she needed the step-by-step -step process. <clears throat> she proposed that their daughter should be named Anna. So they could be sisters, like in the movie. For me, it's totally unfair. They're stealing my naming process from a movie that made $1.1 billion at the box office. What if I have another daughter? It would have been perfect to name her Anna. Hey, guess what? You still can. And now I wouldn't be able to do it without looking like I'm stealing from them. You think you're the first Anna out there in the world? What about uh, Kendrick? Kornikova? Wintour? Overwatch? Yes. <laughs> They are Moss, exactly. Karenina, there's dozens of them. There's dozens of them. Of the Green Gables, very true. My husband doesn't even like Frozen that much. He always said his favorite Disney animated movie was Bolt. That's just crazy. Bolt? I'm not saying it's like horrendous, but it's not even in the, in the ballpark with the classics. You, you take a Bolt over like the Little Mermaid. <laughs> Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, the original Lion King, Jungle Book, Snow White, Cinderella, 101 Dalmatians, Bolt with John Travolta as the dog or as the dad. I can't remember. <laughs> I only know it because it comes up like early when you go on Disney Plus because it's in alphabetical order. I don't know if the mother likes Frozen, but I'm totally sure she doesn't like it as much as me. I demanded to him that they choose another name, but he thinks I'm acting crazy. I called my divorce lawyer, but she doesn't think there's anything we can do about this. 
My mother just laughed at me. I feel so defeated. My sadness turned into anger, and in an impulse of rage, I called my ex-husband. I told him that if they insisted on using that name, I would make everything I could to sabotage the relationship between our daughter and theirs. So they were never real sisters like Elsa and Anna. You know what's crazy? This is a lot like the movie, honestly. Anna and Elsa were very close. Elsa, you know, as a kid in, in a bit of a, a, a juvenile impulse, uses magic and accidentally freezes uh, Anna's uh, brain or something. I can't remember. Then they have to go to the trolls and they, you know, thank God it didn't get her in the heart because only a true act of love can thaw a frozen heart. But then it's really the problem is that the parents keep Anna and Elsa separated, leading to them having a gulf just because they're trying to protect both of them. It's really, it's a cautionary tale about, you know, being overly cautious, I suppose. It's a cautionary tale about caution. It's not spoilers. This is all like, this is the prologue to Frozen. You know, I, one of my favorite lines in Frozen is when everything gets covered in ice, everything gets frozen, and then Anna's complaining, and then Kristoff says, you think you got a bad, I sell ice for a living. Dude, actually, like, he put her in her place. I mean, she had problems. Don't get, I'm not saying she can't complain because her sister did blanket the kingdom in snow in the middle of summertime and froze all the ships in the port when it seems like their economy is based on trading. But at the same time, like, hey, everyone's got a hard life, lady. Just chill out. My daughter asked me, like, once a month if they're making Frozen 3. That's cute. I don't know if they will. But... It's cute either way. I do like Frozen Who Asked. That is funny. Hopefully not. You know, you could just not see it. You know, Disney will, will do what Disney is going to do, whether or not 24-year-old single men approve of their movies that are targeted for, like, 8-year-olds. It's okay. Not everything has to be for you. You have almost everything. They're putting out, like, a new Star Wars movie or TV show, like, every 48 hours, Okay. It's okay. You can just ignore it. It'll be fine. I'm not 24. <laughs> I'm not wearing hockey pants. Anyway, I immediately regretted saying all that messed up stuff. And it is not true. I would never do that unless. But this whole situation has been so horrible for me. And now he's really angry too. Which is okay when it's me. But when he's doing it, not very nice. I think that I am ultimately in the right about what they shouldn't why they shouldn't use the name, but I was wrong in saying what I said. I want to insist on them picking another name without going too far. Am I the asshole? Well, like, listen, I think she's the asshole, but I do also think that they should not choose that name. It would be different if it was like, hey, my grandma was named Anna, and it's just a coincidence. But for them to kind of like force a relationship between the two kids... Just because the first one is named Elsa, you know, it's, it's a little bit too much. I think it's definitely weird. I definitely also think that she crossed the line. This is why you don't name your kid Khaleesi and then, you know, be mad if your husband knocks up somebody else and they name the kid Khal Drago, okay? Just because they're named Anna and Elsa too, they don't have to be friends. You can have like a really close relationship with your half sibling or you can have no relationship with your half sibling. The, I don't know. I'm guessing you guys probably live like two houses down from each other. So it seems like you're probably going to be in each other's life. But it's just weird, you know, like they're literally sisters. Why are you trying to gaslight me and saying I'm saying something wrong? They may never see each other again. I'm not trying to say they shouldn't. They're like, li literally, they're six and like negative two months. Like, I'm <laughs> all I'm saying is there's a lot of variables here. I think they're both a little crazy. I think the husband has a type and the type is crazy. Also, the fact that the mom is saying, I think she likes Frozen, but she doesn't like Frozen as much as I do is, is the truly insane part for me. This person might have been on the cruise. It's possible. I don't know. As long as they're staying in a different room, I don't really care. But I will say, the people like this are the reason that I didn't make an effort to go to any of the, the trivia days. 
It'd be like, hey, it's Marvel trivia. Maybe you should go. You could win a free lanyard. I walk by the Disney lounge. They're reading out the, the answers. In which uh, Marvel movie does, is Wakanda first mentioned? My ass is like, uh, Captain America Civil War. Eh, fucking in Iron Man 2, Black Widow says something like, where'd you get that shield, Wakanda? 99% of the people that I saw in the lounge were like, yeah, I got that. I was like, all right, I, I see, I know my place. This is not my, this is not my crowd. You're the asshole, take a cue from your favorite movie and let it go. Okay, that's kind of funny. I'll give him that one. You know why it's funny? Because you, you got to commit to either the own or the, the breaking down. You can't do a breakdown and then an own. You got to choose whether you're going to be like playing the light side or the dark side. A one line own. I'll give you some credit for that. You're the asshole. Did he ask for your input on names for his daughter? If not, I'm sure he didn't. Then it's very inappropriate for you to even comment. Let it go. Let it go. See, not quite, not quite the same level of panache, but... I'm a huge, okay, sorry. Your naming process is copying a top grossing children's movie. If you think you are at all unique or special or that the names Elsa and Anna didn't get a huge worldwide bump after the film's release, you are deluding yourself. You are literally an evil stepmother in a Disney film. That's what you are right now. You are, of course, also an asshole. Okay, listen, there's, there's no point in reading these except to get a little dopamine, okay? It's a Disney adult. She's going to get torched by the internet. And she deserves it a little bit, but it's, that doesn't mean I... You know, you, you know what bothers me? I'll see like a video of like somebody falling down an escalator a little bit and then trying to get up and then falling down again. And I'll be like, that was a little funny. And people will be like, you're a horrible person. But then people will like sit there and jerk off to like this kind of debauchery. A fake story that like, oh, I know so many people like this. Okay, no, I don't actually, but I believe that they exist because I think the worst of people. And then I read, you fucking dickhead, you piece of shit, asshole. Your kids are never going to speak to you again once they turn 18. Send, upvote, upvote, this, this, this. User received Reddit rainbow for this post. And then you go out into the world and you're like, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. I don't watch videos of people falling down escalators and, and chuckle to myself a little bit while also hoping that they're okay. I don't hope that they're injured. Do you, you think you're better than me? Am I the asshole for not cleaning up our dog's pee quick enough? Honest question. I didn't know you could clean up dog pee. I thought you just kind of let it ride. I guess if they peed on like a, like a tile floor or something... No, I mean like outside, not inside. <laughs> Dog poop, you clean it up. Well, I don't know. Statistically speaking, like 25% of people clean it up, I guess. But like you should clean it up. I live with my boyfriend. We have a dog named Kito. He's a Pomsky. <laughs> is, is that like a is reincarnation of Bernie Madoff? Is a Pomeranian Husky? Is it okay to ask who was on top? <laughs> Ooh, um, we didn't get keto too long ago. He's about six months old now, and we got him when he was two months. He's quite hard to deal with. I've been told by people that we're not training him properly, and he's going to grow into a bad dog. There's no bad dogs, by the way. There's merely bad owners, I've heard. I've never owned a dog myself. The main problem, though, is he doesn't go to the toilet outside. I've tried whatever I can think of, but he just goes wherever he wants inside the house to pee and poop. We watch him carefully and try to prevent it as much as possible. We have training pads, but he just ignores them. There's a lot more stuff, but obviously there's a character limit. Oh, <laughs> is there? Is there? Is there? Okay. Recently, my boyfriend mentioned he's fed up of having to clean up dog mess all the time and fed up of the smell of it. He's also complaining about taking him on walks and other things. Luckily for him, he works Monday to Friday all day. <laughs> oh, dude. What a line. Luckily for him, he works Monday to Friday all day. So while he's working, I look after him. That is so good. Whew. 
One day, my boyfriend was at work. I was still in bed sleeping. I always keep keto in the room with me while sleeping. And I put a pad in the room in case he needs to, in case he needs the toilet. But like I said, he just ignores it. So he ends up peeing right next to the radiator, which, I, which was on. And well, it smelled really strong and it soaked into the floorboards. When I, woke up, I, when I woke up, I said to myself, I'll clean it. Evening comes and my boyfriend returns us home. When he goes into the bedroom, he gags and asks what the hell the smell is. So I tell him he was angry. I didn't even bother to clean it up. And that I, when I did get up, I still didn't clean it up. He was really upset. He tried to clean it, but it was soaked in. So the smell was lingering and he would not stop talking about it. I said, sorry, but reminded him, okay, this is bait. It's bait. It's a bait post. It is pretty funny. I, you know what it means is I give more credit to them for writing. Luckily, he's at work Monday to Friday all day. Because now that I know that that line is intentional, I have to give them some credit because it's one of the funniest things I've, I've, I've read in a long time, I think. To, to resist the temptation to like lead up to a bit like that, like to a, ascend to it and instead just drop it in the midst of like a lore dump is, it takes some restraint. Am I the asshole for requesting my wife cleans up after herself? Here we go. I, 28M, married my wife, 23F, who will call Danny. About a year ago, we were very lucky to get pregnant soon after. Danny is in her third trimester now and on pregnancy leave. Okay, well, you're making a Reddit post uh, uh, complaining about your pregnant wife. She's got, a, she's got a bowling ball in her tummy right now. She's got to be, I, she's going to have to be living a very filthy life for people to take her side, okay? Or for people to take your side, I should say. Once we got the good news, I started working extra hours in order to save more money for when the baby gets here. That means that I have to get up extra early every morning to get to work. You shouldn't have wrote this part because chat's going to be like, 6 a.m.? That's crazy. I get up at 3.45 a.m. I'm out the door at 4 a.m. Bro, can you imagine? Whoa, to be up at 6 a.m.? What is this, a Sunday? So I'm just going to do you a solid there. You should have left this out. I get home a little later, and I'm usually pretty beat, but I still contribute to the house by doing dishes, cleaning up after the cat because she can't. That's true. Cat Feline litter boxes carry a parasite that can lead to birth defects. You may not know that. I didn't know that in advance of our pregnancy. It's one of those things you picked. Yeah, toxoplasmosis. That kind of stuff. This new routine has been hard on both of us. <laughs> Buckle up, motherfucker. <laughs> You're in the damn pre-show, dude. Get ready. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying it ain't getting easier. Well, that's not... Okay, it's, definitely, it's about to get a lot harder. But then after like six months, it'll get a little bit easier for a bit. And then it'll get harder again. But like definitely you got to take a deep breath because the climb has merely, it's barely even begun, honestly. So far, everything's been fine. That is until the other day when I woke up to Danny crying. We only have one bathroom, which is downstairs, and lately Danny has been having a little bit more trouble going up and down the stairs. That's usually fine for me, but this time she didn't make it, so when I came downstairs, I found her in tears, standing in her own mess. She was very clearly embarrassed, and even more so that I caught her. I immediately felt bad for her and tried to comfort her, and I told her, it's all good, it can happen to everyone. Just clean it up and we'll go back to bed. She asked me if I could help her clean it up, but I told her that it made me uncomfortable. I would never expect anyone to clean up after my mess. Ooh, okay, that's, see, here's the, I get that you could say it's different when you're changing a baby's diaper because a baby doesn't have the ability to change the diaper themselves, but your ass is going to be like knuckle deep in urine and shit and vomit, and it's not just shit, it's like weird shit, even the normal shits are weird, but like the first few shits are crazy, like they're insane, um, you are not, if, if this is a real post, you are not ready for this. Plus, like, I'm, I'm just, I'm being completely sincere. 100%. I'm not a pee guy. But, like, it's just pee. I'm not a pee guy. I'm not. I'm not saying I would be, like, slurping it up. I'm just saying if she was like, can you help me? I would be like, I'd already be getting the, the straw. <laughs> I mean the towel. I mean the towel. It's just like, it's, it's, the pee is not that bad. There's like three bodily functions you're likely to see on the floor, okay? In, in a situation like this. It's either pee or it's poo or it's vomit. Pee is definitely 
the least bad for sure. Blood? I mean, blood is also, I would rather clean up pee than blood for sure. What do you think I am, a vampire? Semen? That's not even, like, whoop. That's nothing, okay? That's, that's not even a mess. This is an oversight at most. If we're talking about the three most common, you're going to see pee, you're going to see poop, you're going to see vomit. There's no question I would rather clean up pee than any of the other two. Now, I'll be honest with you. I would rather not clean up either of the other two. But if I had to, to rank it, I think I would rather clean up poo than vomit. But like vomit like scars you when you clean it up. Like there's, and it, especially I think when it's not your own, like there's foods I can't eat anymore because like a roommate in college ate them, got too drunk, threw up, and then I cleaned it up. And then for like the rest of my life, I'm like, okay, I guess I'm not having Swiss rolls anymore. Anyway, <laughs> we got lost in the weeds a little bit, but can we at least agree on that? Okay. Hold on, someone, this is a definitive source. I was an EMT for six years. Vomit is the worst. Okay, I, I'm glad I read it because you agreed with me. I'll take that. Where was I? To be honest, this has happened before when I had a couple, a couple too many beers, but I always clean up after myself. You, you routinely, uh, more than once, you've consumed enough alcohol to pee on the floor. Now, I don't want you to think that because I've cleaned up after my roommates in college that they never had to clean up after me. Because it was definitely a give and take. I've been in, heavily intoxicated. I've, I've thrown up many times, <laughs> quite frankly. Um, I've never gotten to the point where I, where I pissed on the floor. And I've been, I've pushed it to the damn limit in my younger days. I, I peed outside, but that's like a given. That's like, that's part of the, the upshot of being that intoxicated is, is, you know, letting it fly in the alley beside the bar. But I always clean up after myself. It would feel weird to ask Danny to do it for me in that situation. Yeah, because you did it to yourself, dickhead. That's, that's called shame. You drank too much. You peed on the ground like a, like a little baby. And then you're going to talk to your wife and be like, I, am, I can't handle myself. Can you clean up my urine? That's because you're it's, it's fucking embarrassing. Obviously, you wouldn't ask her to do that. She's pregnant. You guys are like 50. Well, you're not even 50-50, but like you did 50% of the, of the easy work. Now she's carrying the burden and you're, you're not even going to clean up her piss. I, she got really mad and called me insensitive for making me clean up after herself after an already embarrassing enough situation. I proposed a compromise. She would clean up the mess and I would get her clean PJs. That is uh, one, of the, one of history's great, greatest deal makers. <laughs> which, which implies originally you were going to let her get her own pajamas. Since I'd just done laundry anyway, she asked me if this was what it was going to be like when the baby made a mess. And I told her I'd be perfectly okay to clean up after the baby since it can't clean up after itself. I'm not saying I called it. I then told her I didn't have time to stand there arguing with her all night when I have to get up in like three hours to go to work and provide for us. So I walked upstairs, grabbed her PJs for her and went back to bed. The next morning when I got downstairs, I found her on the couch. She told me she barely slept and felt horrible about the night before. She called me an asshole. And said that by not helping her, I only embarrassed her more. She then told me she would be staying with her mom until I got my shit together. It's been half a day now, and she's not responding to my texts. I talked about it with my coworkers, and I'm getting, I'm getting mixed responses. But I just want to make sure. Am I the asshole? Edit one. So after about five hours, most of y'all seem to agree that I am the asshole. Danny's coming home tonight to pick up some stuff, so I hope we'll have a moment to talk about it then. I'll take you guys' verdict into account going into the conversation. I did see some people who would see my side of the story, so I do hope she'll take that into account too. You just can't, you just can't accept it, can you? Sometimes you just gotta eat it, man. Like if you're 85% wrong... You don't need to be like, yeah, but I'm 15% right. You just got to take the bullet on that one. I'm sorry. Like, it's, I've been there. 
I've been 15% right. You know what you say? I'm sorry, I was wrong. You know, you don't go, hey, I'm sorry, but also could you give me like a little credit? <laughs> like that's, I'm sorry, but also some Redditors agree with me. Like you just gotta, like if it's 55, 45, you could be like, we're both wrong. And maybe you decide if you want to fight for the, you know, the 50, 50. But if you're like, this is like a 90, 10, like you don't need the 10. Okay. You need to make up the gulf of the 80% difference there. It's crazy. Yeah. You're the asshole. Look at his username. She's pissed. <laughs> All right, maybe he's not the asshole now that I think about it. Because <laughs> that's pretty funny. Um, honestly, dude, you're the asshole. Man up and help the woman out who's carrying your child. You pissing yourself when you're drunk is not even remotely related to your pregnant wife struggling to move fast enough to get where she needs to go. If it happens again, help her out. For now, I just apologize and acknowledge her feelings. Man. I remember this one time my husband and I were dating and didn't live together. I got food poisoning and woke up vomiting. I called him frantic because I was being sick everywhere. Couldn't stop and was scared. He drove over in the middle of the night, cleaned up my bed while I cleaned myself, packaged me and a toddler up and bundled us up and brought us to his parents' house so I wouldn't be sick alone. FYI, OP, my husband has a squeamish stomach and is ill at the sight, sound, and thought of others being sick. He still totally cleaned up after me alone when it wasn't his house, when I wasn't his wife, when I wasn't pregnant just because he loved me and I needed help. Explain your excuse to me again. Hey, listen, lady, he had to be up in the morning to go to work. Okay, info, what was your husband, what, your boyfriend, what was your husband, what was your boyfriend doing in the morning, okay? Was your boyfriend going into work in the morning? Did he have to be in the office at, at 8.30? Because if he didn't have to, you, listen, he had a very important meeting that day to provide for the family. I can't miss my daily stand-up or Kurt will be, he'll throw a shit fit in the slack, man. He might work a real job like, on like software development or streaming, okay? If I'm going down, I'm taking 15% of you fuckers with me. <laughs> Can you please take a look at Abandon My Spouse at Costco? Okay, I'll, I'll look for that one next. So today the wife and kids went... I, the wife and kids, went to Costco to do some shopping. While we were strolling... Through the aisles, we got to the refrigerator section, and my wife picked up a pack of yogurt drinks. My little one saw the yogurt drinks and raised her hand as in asking for some, to which my wife said she was going to take one out and give it to her. My son saw this and asked for one too, which my wife proceeded to do. As of right now, I am on the side of the husband. This is not a, an enormous social faux pas, but you should, in my personal opinion, you should not teach your kids the habit of eating and drinking food in the grocery store that they have not paid for yet. You're going to pay for it. What's the difference? I don't, I, I wish I had a better reason for it, but it's, it's just not done. Okay. It, it feels wrong. It does. You're right. It doesn't feel right. I'm not, there's nothing really wrong with it. It's just like, you know, I wouldn't want my kids to get in the habit of doing it and then think like it's a normal thing that people do in society. It's actually illegal. Yeah, but like, not like a... I understand you could be like, you drink it and then you go to pay for it and your card gets declined or something like that. And you're like, oh no, I stole like that, you know, water bottle or whatever. But like, I don't know how it is in the rest of the world right now, but people are just walking into stores and like grabbing shit and then like walking out and nobody's stopping them. So if that happened to me, like a one in... 10,000 chance that that happened to me, I would probably just be like, can I just come back in like 15 minutes and bring you, bring you the dollar seventy five or whatever? And if they didn't let me, I would get a human rights lawyer on the phone so fucking fast your head would be spinning. I would drown you in paperwork from the ACLU. I, we probably have an ACLU in Canada. I don't know who it is probably called like the Lord's Tribunal for Human Rights or something. Canadian Civil Liberties Association. Why does that sound so much stupider? <laughs> probably because probably it's the first time I've ever heard of it. Anyway. So listen, I, I'm sure you can't abandon your family in Costco because of this, but I can at least see why he would be upset. 
The second I saw her do this, I told her to stop and would not give them the drinks as we had not paid for them. She said, no, it's okay. We're going to pay for them anyway. And I replied that if she does it, I'm going to leave her with the kids there as it's really embarrassing in case someone called us out. She didn't listen to me and did what she said she would. So I walked away from her, leaving her with the kids and started looking at other things. Moments later, she called me saying I should go back as the kids had finished their drinks. I was mad, but I know how my kids are. So I ended up going back. When I went back, we apologized to each other and kept going out with our day. Okay. I mean, that's like insane, but also normal. At least they, that should be the end of it, at least. Now we're at home and she was acting rude to me and just told me she thinks I don't care about her at all and I treat her like crap. All on the base of what happened earlier. Maybe some on the base of what happened earlier. So am I the asshole for doing what I did even though I gave her fair warning? Couple of reasons why I think I was in the right to do what I did. As far as I know, it's illegal to open merchandise without paying. For Listen, you fucking narc. Is it illegal? Yeah, it's probably like illegal. Speeding is illegal too, and like literally 99% of drivers do it every day, okay? There's a, there's a scale of illegality, and if this is actually, I don't know if, listen, if this is illegal, it's like the least illegal thing in the world. Drinking a drink that you haven't paid for yet, but are going to pay for within the next like 15 minutes. So is jaywalking? Okay, but listen. People aren't going to like this, but jaywalking is worse, not because it's like more offensive, but because it at least introduces a greater chance of injury. Like no one's going to get hit by a car because they were drinking a drink they haven't paid for yet in the Costco. But someone jaywalking could either like get hit by a car or, you know, cause the car to have to slam on the brakes and get rear-ended or something like that. Like drinking the drink in the Costco that you're going to pay for afterwards is a victimless crime. Atriot got arrested for it? I hope that he, he hired the ACLU, man. I guess they're a non-profit, but like, I feel like it's a genuine like human rights issue. That you're drinking an iced tea in the store, somebody puts you in handcuffs? That somebody restrains you like you're a, a threat to society? It's, it's complicated. I was gonna say if I saw like a family in the grocery store and they were like eating out of an open potato chip, like family sized potato chip bag, I would be like, ooh, I feel bad for the kids because their parents aren't raising them right. But then like when I was out with my daughter this weekend, I got her a croissant at the grocery store. And then we went to another store. She was just chowing down on that croissant in the grocery store or in the, in the other store. But I mean, the other store didn't sell croissants, but it also seems crazy that um, that would be a reason why it's acceptable if it's not acceptable in another... Like, it's, it's okay to buy a croissant and then eat it inside of the Best Buy or whatever. But if she was, like, looking at an iPad inside of the Best Buy, that wouldn't be okay. It's just weird. He, you know what my philosophy is now? And maybe this is... I'm coming around on that. He's definitely the asshole here. But, like... My new philosophy for the past couple of years, I used to be like, oh, like you walk into a store, you have like a half open drink. You like look at the security guard when you go in and you go, I brought this from outside. And they go, who fucking cares? Like, I'm here to make sure that there's no riots. Now, I just let it ride. And I, I know I've said this a few times. I welcome the day. I fantasize about the day when they're like, sir, sir. And then they, I'm like, I pay, I bought this at uh, uh, Savon. I bought this at Savon. And then they put me in cuffs, and I'm like, you guys are gonna regret this. <laughs> oh, you are gonna just give me one free hand so I can open up my online banking app and show you. Look, look at that receipt. You guys, I hope you enjoy this because this is the last day you're ever gonna experience peace at this business. I'm going to put the whole system on trial. Yeah, I, I would say it's definitely like a little crazy. But like it keeps me going. <laughs> just You know, shopping is mundane. Sometimes you have a little fantasy of getting arrested by a security guard and then proving that you actually legally did pay for this in a different store and then like, you know, suing the business for like, I don't know. We don't have to put a number on it because it makes it too real. Maybe like $10 million dollars. 
I've been pretty good at teaching them their, wait, my kids are not easygoing, as in they don't take no easily. But I've been pretty good at teaching them their limits. Giving them stuff this easily only makes the problem worse. However, my kids do understand that you can't open anything in the store until you're back at home or in the car. I don't want them to think it's normal to just open or use store merchandise. Please excuse my language errors as English is my second language. Kirkland Signature is the, is the true lingua franca of the world, though. Now listen, you are the asshole for leaving your family inside of Costco. That being said, it sounds like based on your wife's reaction when you got back and also your reaction in the first place to be like, well, I'm going to leave. Uh, it seems like, I mean, it's just life's hard, right? It sounds like you're trying to set stronger standards and regulations for your kids. And like all the work that you put into do that, whether it's right or wrong, is undermined by your wife being a little bit more lax, which probably is like a annoying. It makes you feel like, you know, what am I even doing here? So I might as well just go if you're going to overrule me all the time, which is not the appropriate reaction. But I can see why you would be frustrated. Then it also sounds like she's frustrated because, you know, you, you walked one aisle away and your wife was like, everything's fine. And then when you got home, she was like, psych. She's probably got some stuff bubbling over as well. Maybe you're not the, the great husband and father that you think you are. You're the asshole. I used to work at Costco. And nobody cares as long as you pay for it. That was definitely like a, uh, a wake-up call for me was when I realized I don't need to tell the cashier who's like 16 years old and making minimum wage at the grocery store that this is actually, I bought this iced tea someplace else. They're literally just trying to scan the stuff and like, you know, finish their shift without being yelled at too much, either by their boss or by customers. They're literally just like, they're just there. They might, if, if you stole it, they might even be rooting for you. I think you're overthinking it. You're way too concerned with some strangers at Costco might think of you. And due to that unnecessary anxiety, you're being a jerk to your wife and making a big deal over nothing. Sure. Well, <laughs> I think he's making a big deal over almost nothing. Because I don't want my kids eating the food in the grocery store either. There's no shot two normal adults are arguing in the Reddit comments. I don't know, man. I, it's so mundane that I could see it. So you think your wife is trashy and embarrassing? No! The action she took was trashy and embarrassing. That doesn't mean she's trashy and embarrassing. I'm not trashy. I do some trashy things now and then. I drink my coffee on the toilet every morning just to save time. I have a two and a four-year-old, and I'll tell you how we handle this. My wife goes alone to Costco during the two-year-old's nap, so we don't all have to go into a hellscape of chaos and big feelings and overstimulation together, and she brings me back a hot dog. You're the asshole for not being more like my amazing wife. This is like the heavy... Uh, remember that post from one of the best tweets of 2022, which was like, my amazing wife just got back from a 12-hour shift as an emergency room nurse, and now she's shoveling the snow. And then it was like a picture of him drinking coffee while looking at his wife shovel in the snow at 5 a.m. or something like that. Bro, you didn't do anything. Also, what's wrong with you? I, I don't have a two-year-old and a four-year-old. I have a two-year-old. I'll take her ass to Costco. It's no big deal. She likes it. You for what, that's what you do. Like, you know, when she was a, a baby, it was different. Like when she couldn't walk on her own, but now she loves going on errands and stuff. You take your, you know why you take your fucking two year old into Costco is because one day they're like not gonna be two. You might as well have them realize it's a normal. What are you talking about? It's a, a a hellscape of chaos and big feelings. I get that she's a kid, so like it's a much bigger event for her to go to Costco than you. But like, I don't understand. What do you? What, why are you making it sound like such a big deal? Also, like no. <laughs> Okay, now I'm becoming the Redditor. I'm going like too far. So your ass is just at home probably playing Xbox while your kids nap. She's going to Costco alone. And you're, you're, you think you're both helping? Like, why are, you, why are you adding like a superiority complex for this other guy? At least this other guy is fucking pushing the sled. You know, he's at the Costco with his wife and kids. But I also don't understand. Why can't you just go... Why, you don't have to go to the grocery store with your kids every time. You could divide the labor. Big deal. But like at the same time, why not just normalize going to the grocery store with your children? Why are you making it sound like it's, you're, you're dropping the one ring into the fires of Mount Doom? 
It's the grocery, literally like millions of people do exactly the same thing or worse every day. Grocery souls. Everybody sucks here. Perhaps the kids don't take no easily because they're not told no in situations where they should be, like at Costco. Excuse me, Costco is all about saying yes. It's one of the most yes stores on the planet. Every time you pass through an aisle, somebody says, would you like free food? All you have to say is yes. That's it. This is, if, if there's a single grocery store where it should be normalized to not say no, it's probably Costco. Your wife shouldn't have done that, especially if it made you that uncomfortable. And you shouldn't have just taken off. They're your kids, too. If they're really that difficult, you get to stay and help manage them. I'm not saying it would have been the end of the world to let the kids eat at Costco. The point is they clearly don't hear no often enough. The point is, based on this one story, I think they're bad parents. Um, also, mother of three here, so you can't criticize me, even if this is truly insane. I don't understand the mentality that he's an ass because I'm the opposite. I hate when people do this because how do you know you'll be able to pay for it? Even if you have money in your account, I've had issues with bank cards not working and having to leave the store empty-handed to go call my bank and deal with them, not to mention I think it's stealing and just plain wrong to do because there's no guarantee that you will pay for it. I've worked in Walmart and I've seen so many packs of things opened or only one taken out of it. I feel until you have scanned and paid, it shouldn't be open, but that's my opinion. The thing I think maybe you could be an ass for is leaving her in the middle of the store. Okay, good, strong reading comprehension. I would agree with that assessment. He, w he might be considered an asshole for leaving his family in the middle of a Costco. I have very bad social anxiety, so when my mom has done things like this, I leave as well, so I can understand not wanting to be around when it's happening. And for the people talking about kids and being hungry while shopping, that's why you feed them before you go out. I would just feed them for it. Uh, listen. Just a little too... It's like, I also have this problem and it's unsolvable, but here's how I would solve it. I would simply feed my children before they go out. I would make sure they've had proper nutrition 24 hours a day. Also, I might be crazy. I think if you bought under $50 of food at Costco and your card got declined three times at the register, don't quote me on this, okay? I feel like they might just let you have it just to keep the throughput going. Now, they might not, but like the metaphor, the comparison that I'm thinking of is like when you're in the McDonald's drive-thru, they, this is very Canadian, but they, they put the Interact machine out on a hockey stick and then you tap. As soon as you tap, they say proceed to the next window. They don't say wait for approved, declined, whatever. As soon as the, the beep comes out, they're like, get the hell out of here. So I feel like they're basically like, if it gets declined, we'll eat the $10 cost because what are we going to have you do? We can't have you back. There's 17 cars behind you in the drive through You know, we all get evaluated based on our efficiency. Like it should be like you order and then three seconds later, the food is in your hands, right? So they, I think they just, I think they just eat it. I bet that like one in 50 orders gets like transactions gets, gets declined and they just, they eat it. That's my expectation at least. Just in general, I would say I get declined one in, one in 50 times. And then like uh, they go, oh, our machine's a little busted, even though it might not be. And then I just tap again and it's like approved. It happens all the time. That's so much. I don't know. What this is. It's like half bad machines and half bad internet. And then the third half is like sometimes Visa is like, wait a minute. He's making a $4 purchase at a grocery store he goes to four times a week. That's probably fraud. And then you tap it again and they're like, never mind. The thief would not try twice. Like, I don't know. There's some kind of... AI, like fraud detection going on that hits false positives all the time. Yeah, play, dude, don't even give it. It used to be like every time I went to the US, I would like, I, I knew it would happen. I would like tap my card or do like chip and pin at a, uh, at a grocery store and then it would be declined and I would be like, okay, sorry. And then I would go call my bank and then I would come back into the grocery store and buy the food that I was going to buy. Like it can't, it, they're just like, hey, listen, hey, hey, excuse me, Mr. Letourneau, this is a very serious issue. Do you recognize this $6.04 transaction at Whole Foods Bellingham? Yes, that's me trying to buy uh, two apples. All right. 
How about these seven hundred dollars? These seven hundred dollars in uh, iTunes Apple gift cards. Those are legit, right? No, I've never heard of those before in my life. Okay, sir, have a nice day. Whatever you say. Update. <laughs> Hold on. Where's where's the original post here? Maybe it'll be better with just the update. Update. No longer cooking for my girlfriend. This is a rare post. Wednesday, after I served the plates, my girlfriend said she didn't want pasta and was going to make a salad. I was pretty sure she was going to do this, and it didn't bother me. Pause champ. I am pause champing. I waited for her to come back to start eating, and when she sat down, I tried to talk to her about her day. She asked if I was trying to make a point. I asked what point. She asked if I cared that she wasn't going to eat what I made. I said I didn't and would have it for lunch. She got frustrated, focused on her salad, and wouldn't engage with me. After dinner, I said we shouldn't make dinner for each other anymore. She asked why I thought that. I said, it's clear she gets upset when she makes food for someone and they don't eat it. It would be better for us to make separate meals so we each know what we will get, what, that we will get what we want and no one's feelings will be hurt. She said it wasn't okay for me to make a unilater unilateral decision about our relationship. I said I wasn't, but I didn't want to cook for her anymore or have her cook for me if she's just going to get upset. We kind of went round and round on it until the conversation petered out. She texted me at work Thursday that she was going to make salmon. I decided that if she tried to cook for me, I would just let her so she'd feel like she won one over on me and we'd draw a line under this. She ended up making salmon only for herself, which I was quite surprised by because I was expecting her to try to convince me to have some. I made a quick omelet and sat down with her. She asked if I was upset she didn't cook for me and I said no, even though I was. Again, she accused me of making a point. She asked if I was going to cook for her on Friday. I said no. She was put out. Friday, she was upset. I only made enough curry for one person and called me greedy. At this point, I'm over it all, so I just ignored her. What are you talking about? What is going on, man? Also, who makes curry for one? It's built for bulk cooking. I'm not saying anything's like... I don't think anybody's in the right on this one, but that it does seem a little bit like a shot across the bow to make curry for one. It's like, oh, hey, hey, for dinner tonight, I'm making chili. Mm, oh, yum. Nope, just for me. I'm making a single bowl of chili. I gotta read the original post. Am I the asshole for wanting hot food? Is this the same issue, separate issue? I don't know. How does it get to that point? It's, it's, it's crazy. They must be in love. Yesterday, I went ice skating with my girlfriend. Tuesday is one of her days for dinner, so she made chicken salad. When I saw the chicken salad, I admit I made a face. She was like, what? What's the problem? I said we were outside in the cold all afternoon, and I wasn't really in the mood for cold food. Bro. <laughs> That's so funny. I don't understand. <laughs> Aren't you in like a warm house? Like, what's the problem? I bet if you offered his ass some ice cream, he would be like, yeah, sure. I said we were outside in the cold all afternoon. I wasn't in the mood for cold food. She said we're inside. The heat is set to 74. What the hell? They're in a damn, it's like a, they're in the boiler room right now. You trying to close a deal on a used car sale? 74. We're both wearing warm, dry clothes, so it was plenty warm enough to eat salad. I said, sure, I just wanted something warm to heat me up on the inside. She said, that's ridiculous because my internal temperature is in the 90s and my insides are plenty hot. At this point, we were going around in circles because I couldn't argue with her biological, factual case. So I said I was just going to heat up some soup and told her to go ahead and start eating because I'd be back in a few minutes. When I came out of the kitchen with my soup, she was clearly upset. She asked how I would feel if she refused to eat what I made tomorrow, which is today. I said I won't care. She said that was BS because it's rude to turn your nose up at something someone made for you. Am I the asshole for not wanting cold salad after being cold all day? You're just an insane individual. Like, isn't life hard enough to not manufacture problems? Like you, sometimes in your life, you will, I get it when you're a little kid and your mom makes roast beef once a week and you don't like roast beef. You're like, I can't wait till I'm older and I can just eat what I want every day and never have to eat roast beef again. Well, two things. First off, when you get older, you're going to like roast beef. I don't know what it is. Okay. But the older you get, the more you actually derive enjoyment from food that doesn't taste that good. It starts to taste good for you for whatever reason. When I was a kid, my grandma would make roast beef all the time. I was like, I hate this. 
Even she even made gravies and sauces and stuff to put on top of it. I would kill for that roast beef now. Ain't nobody serving roast beef now. I don't know. You got to go to like an Applebee's or something. Regardless, the other thing is when you get older, you realize not every dinner is a sacred ceremony where daddy's special boy or girl gets to eat their favorite food. Some dinners are better than others. Some dinners you get to eat exactly what you want. Some dinners you compromise. You eat something that someone else wants. And you're not going to die if you eat room temperature. I don't know. if chi I guess chicken salad is not room temperature. I don't really know. I guess you'd probably mix it and keep it in the fridge so it would be slightly cool. But, like, it just seems like, like you don't need... I mean, I guess I'm, I'm beating around the bush, which is that just because your ass was in the cold all day doesn't mean you need to eat hot food to warm up. Also, your ass didn't have to cook, so just eat the food. Like, it would be different if she made you fucking, you know, like boiled shit or something like that. But that's the way that the dinner rotation works. If you want to eat what you want to eat, you can cook dinner every night. Otherwise, if you're alternating every night, then you cook the shit. You decide what to eat on your night, and she probably goes, mmm, yum, even though she wishes she was eating chicken salad. And then when it's chicken salad night, you eat the chicken salad, and you say, thanks for cooking. It's the easiest, like, relationship QTE you're ever going to have in your life. And then, it, look, at it's turned into, like, a 10-day fight. Am I the asshole for wanting hot food? <laughs> It's the rare, honest uh, title. Because yes, yes, you are the ass. That is what you wanted, and it does make you the asshole. You sound so... This is their comments. You sound so heartless. Actually, 62 beats per minute. I don't know why you're copping so much heat on here. You simply sound logical. Their reply, it's because some people are scared of other people not thinking exactly like them. It's okay. It doesn't bother me. You made the post, moron. Obviously, it bothers you. If it didn't bother you, you would have kept that shit to yourself. You were looking for validation from the internet, you 12-year-old. And you made an update! <laughs> you made two posts about this non-issue. It is a good resting heart rate, though. Am I the asshole for not letting our kids eat my wife's cooking? Let me see. I don't know. I don't have an answer yet. But here's a question. Is it cold outside? And did she make them chicken salad? Because that's over the line. I, 34M, have a wife, and we have two children, 4F and 7M. I work as a manager at a care home, and my wife owns a bakery with her mom. My wife cooks all the time because she's much better at cooking than I am. I cook sometimes. She is the one who takes care of the house, kids, and chores. You're, you're already behind the eight ball on this one, my brother. Want to see how it's, <laughs> it's going to happen from this point onwards? <laughs> Yesterday, when I came back from work, dinner was ready, so I plated it up for everyone while my wife was washing her hands. My kids like their food cut up. I was cutting their chickens into pieces, and it looked a bit pink. I told my wife to look at it, and she said, it's a little pink, but it's fine. I told her I'm not letting them eat this if it's pink. She told me to stop being a baby, and it won't kill them. I kept telling her it's pink in the middle. They shouldn't eat it. They could get food poisoning. It's dangerous. She told me if you don't like them eating it, you can cook their dinner. I made them cheese and ham toasties. Also made her one, but she didn't eat it. That's crazy. She told me she isn't talking to me if I think her cooking is horrible. So I don't think it's horrible. I just don't want our kids eating that. I told her to stop thinking she was right. So am I the asshole? Listen, I mean, as the resident expert on salmonella, I personally, I recognize that this puts me not as like the majority take, but I take food safety very seriously now. Like, if I'm cooking, I wash my hands, like, 20 times till, like, the skin is peeling off between my, my fingers. And I, like, I, it's cooked all the way through cause, just because I recently went through it, right? That being said, maybe this is too forehead. Why didn't you just throw the chicken in the microwave for, like, 45 seconds or something? If you were really, like, a, like paranoid about it, why didn't you just nuke it? Like, I know you're like, that wouldn't taste as good. They're fucking four and seven years old. They don't know anything. No disrespect if any four and seven year olds are watching this. I'm just saying. It's just, it's more about getting them like a, a healthy 
hot meal in a timely fashion and not blowing up your whole night, right? You definitely should not have taken a meal. That if, if I had to guess, I bet it's like 98% cooked if it's not 100% cooked. You should have just tossed it in the oven, tossed it in the microwave. Listen, she probably still would have been annoyed. I would be annoyed. This is like a fairly normal household situation. You know, you cook a meal and then your spouse is like, why are you trying to kill our children? And you're like, I'm not, that's done. And they're like, you are a murderer. Yeah, I would be annoyed. But I can also understand wanting to, to make sure that the, the chicken is fully cooked. Don't get me wrong. But definitely if they said, no, this is not good. And then they cooked an entire separate meal, then I would be super offended. So yeah, I would say he's the asshole. Why didn't you put the chicken back in the oven? In the meantime, you're the asshole. Pink chicken is not dangerous if the internal temp was high enough. Also, instead of saying, oh, honey, I'm worried the chicken's a little pink. Can we cook it a little more? You said, I'm not serving that to the kids and made a new meal altogether. Chicken might still look pinkish at 165, but it's still totally fine to eat. I didn't know that. It's, you know, on a, I should just buy a meat thermometer. Why is my ass like cutting into a chicken breast and then trying to put it under like the most objective light source that I can find? And then being like, is there a little pink in there? I don't know. Is that what chicken looks like when it's, is that a, is that a little, and then, uh, it, it, you know, just get a meat thermometer. What's wrong with me? You got to get one. Darn it. It's pretty, I mean, I can't imagine it's too expensive. Should I just use the one that, uh, that I use to take my temperature rectally? <laughs> so I couldn't figure out how to make the sentence. I'm joking. Can I just, okay, so two working parents. I got it. My wife cooks all the time because she's much better at cooking than I am. I cook sometimes. Dang, it's so unfair how women are just genetically better at cooking than men are. Women don't... Larry, this is you motherfucker! He's just describing their home situation. He didn't say all women should cook more than me because I'm a man. He said his wife is a better cook and maybe she likes cooking, she cooks more. Also, she works at a bakery. She's not... I know we, we went through this last week. It wasn't even React Court. I can't remember when I said if my wife was a janitor, I'd make her take out the garbage because she's so good at it. And then people were like, boo, even though it's true. <laughs> but if she works at a bakery, she's probably good at cooking. So, you know, why isn't... Sure, you play to your strengths at home. I take out the garbage. I have more muscle mass in my upper body. So when there's... the shit weighs fucking 300 pounds in one bag because we cleaned out the fridge... My ass automatically is on the hook. Edit. For everyone saying what I wrote was sexist, it's a statistical fact that women are responsible for 75% of unpaid domestic labor worldwide. But, <laughs> but he's, he's not the world, though. He's just the guy. I'm like, what? I don't understand how that applies to the situation. Also, you, do, like, you could probably make an assumption that he's not, you know... Helping out in that around the house. I guess she, he did say she does most of the chores. All right, you know what? Never mind. Roast him. Get his ass. Also, yeah, who cares about worldwide? No, no disrespect. This this shit is in England. They're making toasties. It might be it might be eighty percent in England for all I know. My bias is that it's probably lower than seventy five. But I guess what do I know? My appreciation for people who take the time to create these beautiful comment treatises with quotes from the original post and beautiful snarky responses for each terrible piece is truly infinite. That is, uh, I don't even know what that emotion is. You have made my morning a bit brighter, smiling emoji. Thank you. It's my superpower. Ungaslighting the world, one comment at a time. Holy yuck. Gaslighting isn't real. You're crazy. Thanks. I was beginning to think that. I almost downvoted you, you beautiful scoundrel. Holy cow. Just a bunch of people making stuff up to feel superior. Like, the dude made a mistake. It's not, he's not, like, emblematic of every problem on planet Earth. He's a misogynist because his wife does most of the cooking, plus she works at a bakery. You're probably both technically right, but there's other issues at play. Yeah, okay, no, don't put, leave a comment unless you're going to be crazy, okay? Don't leave reasonable comments after insane comments. Am I the asshole for snapping at my friend who keeps ditching me because I now have a child? This is a fun one. All right, I'll take your word for it. 
Just over two years ago, I, F29, unexpectedly got pregnant and now have a beautiful 18-month-old daughter, Ciara. Over that time, my friend circle got considerably smaller, but my best friend remained Mia, doesn't have kids nor wants kids, but she's been brilliant with Sierra. I am a stay-at-home mom. Obviously don't have as much time to hang out as I did previously. Mia and I live on the same street. We're in Manchester, England. It's a walking distance between our houses. I've told Mia numerous times she could just pop in whenever she wants to. She works from home, but she rarely does. She did at the beginning, but it's been happening less and less. Instead, she keeps suggesting we go out for coffee or pee. Yeah, because it's not, like, no disrespect. When it's your kid, it's different because that's your fucking life. You got no options. She's got options. Most people would not... Some people are psychos. They like love babies. Most people are not willfully going to be like, oh, it's Saturday morning. Let me go spend time with like a, a, a stranger, not a strangers, but like my friend's 18-month-old. When they're like five or something, they're cute. They can talk. They can walk around. They could come out with you to fun places. When they're like 18 months, they're just crazy. Why does stay-at-home mom sound like an automated ground to air missile platform <laughs> anyway i don't have the time and always just tell her to come over and we'll have a coffee at my place she asked if i wanted to go out with her and her other friends for a drink last week and i said no but she's welcome to come over and we'll have a few drinks at home she said she already had plans and it felt weird to drink when she knows there's a child around honestly i feel neglected i feel like she put me on a back burner and doesn't want to be friends anymore i'm always available but she rarely comes over i don't think that's fair listen i'm i know i'm like a complete hater here but like of course you're always available. You have an 18-month-old because you, you can't do anything. Duh. Like it's... Today, I saw her photos from Saturday night and I was fuming. My friend ditched me so she could go and drink like she's 20 again. I feel rejected and horrible. I thought we were best friends, but she clearly doesn't value me when she won't even have a few drinks at my house. Why does it matter if your friend who doesn't have a kid was out partying like she's in her 20s on the weekend. She doesn't have a kid. What do you want her to do? Come over to your place at 7, 15 a.m. and watch, you know, Bluey with you? You're, you're, you, you? Even though you're the same age, you got different stuff going on in your life. You got different priorities and responsibilities. Bluey, don't, listen. Bluey, good show. Maybe this will be my most controversial take. Good show, overrated. Once a month, I'm going to keep beating the drum until I get some people on my side. It's not that Bluey is bad. It's that when people talk about Bluey, they're like, I love Bluey. Me and my totally sane spouse sit down and watch an entire season after my baby falls asleep just because it's so entertaining, even for like a 35-year-old. Other shows like Sesame Street and Peppa Pig are full of bad examples. Peppa Pig is, she's jumping in muddy puddles. That's crazy. Every episode of Bluey is about how uh, the dad got uh, diagnosed as pre-diabetic by his doctor and he needs his family's help to get his blood sugar back in check. Every episode of Sesame Street is like, hey, we're introducing you to the concept of water with a bunch of songs that are like Broadway inspired. She drives me crazy. Peppa Pig does stay goaded. I'm not saying it's even as good as Bluey, but it's just not... People that they, they think Bluey's here and like all other kids' shows are like here. It's like fucking Bluey, and then like on the same level, or maybe even a little bit higher, is Sesame Street. I'm sorry to tell you. And then like Peppa Pig's probably like a little under Bluey. That's why Bluey has like 23 episodes a season. Sesame Street has like eight. They got celebrity guest stars. They write their own songs. They're building puppets every year. Bluey could never. Aren't there 4,000 episodes of Sesame Street? No, there's like, I don't know, there might be like a thousand, but this shit has been on the air for 53 seasons. It's been on the air since 1969. You know, Elmo didn't even exist until like 1986 or something like that. Like Elmo is like a late season edition. Okay, there are 4,000 still. How many episodes of Bluey are there versus the fact that this shit's been on the air for eight months? 141? Exactly. <laughs> What's the episode to season ratio? That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, it's not about good, more episodes equals worse show. How It's Made's got like 10,000 episodes. This shit is better than, I don't know. I was trying to think of a show that doesn't have a lot of episodes. Um, what is any Netflix original post-2018? Because <laughs> they get canceled after one season, regardless of how many people watch them. Anyway. 
When she finished work, she called and asked if I fancied going for a coffee to town, but I asked her to come over again. She said yes. Before she disconnected, I heard her mumble, like always. This really annoyed me. When she came over, I decided to be open about everything. And while not my proudest or most mature moment, I shouted at her that she's an awful friend right now, that she barely comes over. If she doesn't want to spend time with me, then just say it and stop playing around. She, sh she said she's always been accommodating, but it's been two years and she doesn't want to spend time with me when there's always a kid, especially now that she has to watch her language because Mia likes to swear. I said that she knew I had a child and responsibilities, and she said that Tom could take care of Ciara once in a while so I could have time off. This felt really intrusive. I told her to mind her own business and not meddle in my marriage. I was really angry with her and kicked her out. She called me a selfish asshole on her way out. Normally, I, wouldn't expect her, I would have expected her to call by now with apologies, but she hasn't done, show, done so, and I'm starting to wonder, was I the asshole or was she? Perhaps I was too harsh and should have been more careful with discussing it. Yeah, like, you're the asshole. Like, no disrespect. I don't know what else to say. Like, <laughs> can't you have your husband look after the baby for a little bit, by the way, and then just go, you don't have to go to a bar and party until like 3 a.m. But you could have like two drinks and be like, oh, it feels like we're back in uni. And then like an hour later, get really tired and take an Uber home. Like, I don't understand. But your friend is an asshole for not having a kid at the exact same time. Because then you guys could have hung out all the time. If she had just gotten pregnant, like right when she found out that you were pregnant, you guys would have like a friendship that's unbreakable right now. So I guess she's kind of like the asshole in that situation. You're the asshole. She did not ditch you. She asked you to go out with your friends as she'd made plans. She's not drinking like she's 20. She's drinking like someone who doesn't have a child. P.S. She's right. Your partner can go look after your daughter once in a while and should tr try to bond with her. But you don't know. It's always the dads, man. There's literally like one sentence in the story that's like, by the way, I have a husband. His name is Tom. All the replies are like, Tom doesn't have a relationship with your child. When your child grows up, she's going to never talk to him ever again. He's literally just, he's not even in the story. Tom works 14 hours a day in an asbestos mine. He's the union head. Fuck you, Tom. Can you look after Sierra for a night? I know you got to wake up at 5.15 a.m. to go to your, your third shift or whatever, but I want to drink like I'm in my 20s. I'm not even sure if parents realize how much of the conversation when there's a kid around revolves around the kid. No, we know. We're not stupid. Probably smarter than you, quite frankly. I, oh, is Kaylee a big girl? Does Kaylee need to kiss her mama? Mm, peek-a-boo, peek-a-boo. Yeah, so anyway, I was down at the bar, and I was like, Jager bombs, Jager bombs, fucking, uh, and then I was like, oh, I shouldn't drink anymore, but then I drank some more, and then I fucking threw up. It was crazy. I had a great time. Fuck you. Think you're so interesting? Every time I'm out for a walk, I see all you, all you childless fuckers FaceTiming all the time. And then I said, and then she said, and I was like, why would you say something like that? Like, do you think that she would say something like that? If it, maybe I'm just being crazy. Shut the fuck up! <laughs> and they were roommates. Do you need a snack? Where's Bear Bear? Did you lose Bear Bear? Do you need Aunt, friend whose brain is turning to jelly, to help you find Bear Bear? Oh, Kaylee, it's okay. Mama will give you a kiss. It's unbearable. Then fucking who asked? Live on five user received 8,000 Reddit awards for this post for no reason whatsoever. Info, why can't Tom take care of Sierra once in a while so you can have time off? Hey, don't be meddling in OP's marriage. Sarcasm tag. Yo, but no sarcasm tag. You don't know anything about their marriage. But we have a happy marriage. He babysits my kid while I cook him dinner. Sarcasm tag. It's literally, you source, you fucking made it up, you psycho. You're crazy. Was anyone else surprised she had a husband? I thought from the most of the posts that she was a single mother. Honestly, she sounds like a single mom. And instead of dealing with the source of frustration, her partner, she expects everyone else to accommodate her. What are you talking about? Just like, maybe Tom is horrible, but like, can we at least wait for her to post like he's horrible before we say he's horrible? Sounds like the kind of guy to consider taking care of his kids babysitting, a.k.a. an absent father. He's literally not doing anything. Like, I don't mean he's not doing anything in the life of his child. I mean, literally, he's not even part of the story. Um, am I the asshole for telling my family they can't use Spanish on Christmas Day or my husband and I aren't coming? Uh... <laughs> 
Probably. It'd be worse if your husband was doing it, that's for sure. Do we even have to read it? I like the crazy ones. My family is Mexican and we live in Texas. Everyone in my family is bilingual. They tend to mix English and Spanish constantly. My siblings' spouses have all learned some Spanish, some better, some worse, but they can still participate in all conversations. I've been with my husband for 10 years. He took a few classes but found it too difficult and decided that he can't learn a language as it's, just, as it's his thing, just like math isn't his thing, and he dropped it. Okay, what's his thing? Because we got two things that are not his thing. What is his thing? Can I, I need to jump to his defense a little bit, okay? So I, you know, I've been married to Kate for nine years. Her family all speaks Korean. I don't speak Korean. Sometimes people are like, why don't you just learn Korean? Because I fucking don't want to. No disrespect. I got other shit going on, you know? I got like a, I got a job to do. I got a household to manage. I got like my own hobbies and stuff like that. It's not if if they could just like jack it into my brain and it would be there, I would sign on the dotted line. But it's like a big undertaking. So you know what happens? They at at Chuseok and Solnal and Christmas and whatever, everybody speaks Korean, and then my ass just like eats the food and it's completely fine. It's not a problem in the slightest. They have conversations, I'm sure, about people that I am not. Even aware it exist, distant uncles and cousins and so on and so forth. And I just eat the yummy food and have a great time. Every once in a while, they want either Kate or maybe Kate's sister or, or brother-in-law. They'll translate for me and say, like, this is what we're talking about right now. And then I'll add, like, a comment or something like that. And then they'll go back to talking in Korean. And I just go back to eating the food. And it's... There's, like, actually nothing wrong with it whatsoever. <laughs> I never feel slighted. In fact, one time I went to... Kate and I went to her parents' house for Chuseok, which is, like... It's Korean Thanksgiving, but it's also, like... There's a religious significance to it. It's to having to do with your, you know, honoring your ancestors in particular, instead of just the food that you're eating. Um, and while we were there, you know, they set up the feast for the ancestors and stuff like that. And then we, we all sat down on the floor and they handed me a Bible. And then her parents like sang hymns with us. But like my ass is not religious and a bad singer. And their English is not very good. They clearly would have been happier to be singing it in Korean. So I just felt like actually I was an imposition. They, they should have just been singing it in Korean and my ass would just be eating the food again. Also, like, no disrespect to, uh, to uh, the religious. The hymns don't follow the conventions of music that have been set out in 21st century pop and rock music. The syllables are all... You have to have heard the song, like, they're like, oh, the words are in the book. Yeah, but, like, the notes are not in the book, and then sometimes there's, like, a run-on sentence, and sometimes there's, like, a... They, they drop a syllable on a word, and... Sometimes you're, like... You, you say over the mountain, you look like an asshole because everybody knows it's o'er the, man, the mountain. Every valley shall be freaking exalted and, and, and the hills laid bare. So it's, you can't just give them the book and then be like, just follow along. I've been to church. I've been to weddings. A few funerals. I got baptized, which is crazy. I never got confirmed, which is crazy because if they had just... Like, I don't remember my baptism... But they should have just gone through with the confirmation because then my ass will be snacking every single time. I get that I could... And nobody is like asking for your ID when you go up to take the sacrament, but it just doesn't feel right. Like if, you know, it feels like too much of an edgelord thing to do for me to like walk up and be like, mm, just kidding, father. <laughs> the stolen sacrament. Like I'm not... I don't think that it's going to create... Uh, you know, a problem for me in the afterlife or whatever. I'm just more like, you know, it just seems disrespectful. Anyway, I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> what, did I even read this whole thing? I didn't even come close. I'm just saying, it's just, it, to me, it's the same energy when people are like, oh, if I had, uh, if my spouse's family spoke a different language, I would simply learn the language. Yeah, sure. And if you lost your hair, you'd be jacked with like a 6% body fat. If your ass could do it, you'd be doing it already. I don't know what language it is. Oh, what if, I, what if I picked the wrong language and I accidentally just happened to learn a useful language, but it's not the right one? Then I'd feel stupid. Yeah, listen to yourself. 
anyway. Also, the other thing is, because I lived in Korea, I know enough to at least laugh when it's time to laugh. Shila Hamida. Burger King Odeo Juseo. Burger King. Dude, I know. I recognize that word. I can't. Burger King. I can't. What's a vampire's favorite drink? <laughs> Kopi. <laughs> I can't. Because Kopi is Korean for coffee. But Kopi is also two words. Ko is nose and P is blood. Nose blood. What's a vampire's favorite beverage? Nose blood. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, I can't. I can't. The kids I was teaching used to go crazy for that one. Teacher, do the vampire joke again. I've been with my husband for 10 years. Right, he, he simply can't learn Spanish. Okay, I accept that. I'm, I'm in the same boat. I mean, I could learn Korean. I just, I mean, honestly, I don't want to invest the time. I don't know what you want me to say. I'm not going to make up a bunch of fake excuses. Here's the thing. It's hard, and like, my ass is just, I don't have the desire <laughs> to be honest <laughs> i'm not gonna say it's not my thing i'm sure if i dedicated a lot of time to it i could i, I got a head start i, I you know i'm i'm, a, I'm a ahead of the, the average for sure i would love to speak it but i don't want to go through the work of having to learn how to speak it and i think that's okay every family gathering he feels left out okay well there's your problem idiot you should look forward to being left out you can think about your own stuff. You could, you know, look at your phone now and then. It's no big deal. He feels left out because everyone switches back and forth and he doesn't understand them. I have to translate for him and it must be really uncomfortable for him. This year he said he's not coming. He feels excluded. What is wrong with you? Just, it's okay. Different people speak different languages. You, if you're not going to learn, the, you can't have it both ways. You can't be like, I'm not going to learn the language. But also, I'm going to be mad that they're speaking that language. You know, like you might th think about it this way, okay? They're one generation up. They're speaking Spanish, okay? You're like, I don't want to learn Spanish. Please talk in English. You don't know. You might have three kids. They might marry people from three different parts of the world. I would just get used to not being able to understand what everyone's saying. It frees you from the chains of, of the social contract. Your ass could just be watching TV. They all speak English. I, it's true, but at the same time, I think like if one person that's not bilingual comes and then is like, hey, can you guys just like completely, you're supposed to be relaxing, right? It's the holidays. Can you completely uh, change the way that you speak naturally when you're relaxed uh, just to accommodate me? My ass would be like, no, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy too. Because you, you probably weren't talking about his ass to begin with, but he was like, hey, can you guys speak English? Next time they speak Spanish, they're definitely talking about his ass. 100%. And it's not going to be flattering. I, this year he said he's not coming. He feels excluded. Even when he talks with non-Mexican spouses, they mix and match languages, and he feels like it's to mock him because there's no need to. Who even are you? What do you mean that you just go... You feel like you're being condescended to when somebody speaks a different language? Just, like, what's, you're not the main character. It's okay. You think they're like, whoa, check this out. Never seen this one before. Someone who doesn't speak Spanish. Crazy. Can you get a load of this guy? Anytime I'm saying anything not in English, it must be they're shit-talking me for not speaking Spanish. I called my mother and told her, they must promise not to speak Spanish because it's excluding my husband or we're not coming. My mother was angry. She told me they're not going to police their speech and they were accommodating for the first few years. And it's, it's, he made no effort. It's ridiculous. He doesn't even try. I told her he did try, but she knows it's difficult for him. She said he's no longer invited. I can come on my own. I was really angry and repeated my ultimatum. This did not go <laughs> good. Let me know how that goes. Uh... This did not go down well. My whole family's pissed off. My husband is on my side and I don't know anymore. Am I the asshole for giving them the ultimatum? Yeah, I definitely think it's messed up to basically ask your family not to speak their native language at the holidays just because one person doesn't speak it. Like, I, I do. I think that's crazy. 
And I'm kind of like, I don't know if, if this makes me less based or more based, but I'm in the same situation in the sense that, like, I don't know what is being said at a lot of these dinners. I mean, here's the thing. It would be insane if I talked to my wife and was like, hey, your parents need to speak English when I'm around. It's disrespectful. That shit is crazy. I would never have the stones to do it. And I have too much of a brain to ask for sure. But then secondarily, if, if Kate's parents were like, he needs to learn Korean, I would be like, fuck that. <laughs> like, why? Yeah, how about we both learn Farsi? Let's compromise. I speak Korean very poorly. My English is fantastic. Your Korean's amazing. I'm sure your English isn't that good. Let's learn Farsi together. That could be a good bonding experience. It is, it's a little King Solomon, but let's all learn a third language together so we're suffering equally. I don't even need, like, I, I just, I'm trying to telepathically express to this guy that, like, it's just normal. Like, it's not weird to not speak, like, you, in life, I hope that you're blessed enough to travel to places where not everybody is going to be speaking the language that you know, especially if you only know one language. Like you should travel and be in like another country and, and get used to the idea that, you know, when you're out at a restaurant, you can't understand what's happening around you at all times. You can't kibitz on every conversation, you know, instead you have to make conversation with your spouse. So it's just not... It's not weird. The fact that he thinks it's a solution that needs to be rectified and without any effort on his own part is the crazy part to me. Because the way I see it is like there's a couple of other options, or the, a couple of options here. One option is like learn Spanish. And if that's not possible, the other option is just shut the hell up. I also, <laughs> I don't want to get myself into trouble, but if I lived in Texas, I might put in a little extra effort to learn Spanish. There's a lot pushing in favor of that, you know? Just knowing the Korean alphabet is enough for me to get around in Vancouver. I went to the Korean supermarket by myself, uh, well, with my daughter, actually, on Sunday, and the Korean, the grocery list was written in Korean, all the foods in Korean. You know what I did? I learned the alphabet, like, 12 years ago, and I was just like, shabu, shabu, sogogi. Okay, that's, sh that's hot pot beef. Let's grab that. Put it in the, oh, we need some, we need two packs of gedni. You know, we need two, we need a little kimchi. We need some miaochi. You know, we need some uh, samjang. We need some gochujang. We need some gochugaru. We need some, and then uh, we're going to go to Delaware. Then we're going to go to Washington. And Hangul is really easy on the alphabet side, for sure. I was stunned. My nieces, like their parents are Korean. They were born in Korea. My nieces don't know how to read the Korean alphabet. I was like, I could teach it to you in like an hour. Yeah, we're, we're teaching our daughter how to speak Korean. Like, it's slow going. Because here's the thing. People also say, like, if I had a kid and, like, I was bilingual, I would teach them both languages. Well, yeah, but, like, sometimes you've got other shit on the go. Sometimes you're just like, eat your damn grilled cheese. Yeah, no, we! I mean, I say I don't speak Korean, but I speak enough Korean to teach a little bit to, like, uh, you know, like a two-year-old. I'll say, like, honey, that's grandma on the phone. Can you say, Anyang Haseo, how many? Anyang Haseo, how many? And when I'm at the, like, when I'm at North Road Plaza, Corey will back me up on this one. When I'm at North Road Plaza, it's like being back in Daegu. I'm walking into convenience stores. Say, they're saying, Anyang Haseo. I'm saying, Anyang Haseo. No matter what they say, if I don't understand what they're saying, I just go, nay, nay. Nah. And then they present me with a bill. I tap my card. And then they say, And then I walk out the door. I know a little bit of... I know enough Korean to get around, at least. That's all you need to know how to do in Korea. I, I worked with a woman in Korea. We were both ESL teachers. One year living there, she never learned how to say thank you. It blew my mind. At that point, it's like a willful ignorance. Like, I can understand not making an effort to learn the language, but to not even know thank you when everybody says it to you four times 
every time you go to a store is just crazy. She was not American. <laughs> she is Canadian. <laughs> You're the asshole? Well, your husband is the asshole. A couple classes isn't enough to claim he can't get it. Sure, okay, true. Him being upset people dare speak a language he can't and feeling mocked also isn't anyone's problem but his own. Everyone, the asshole. E ETA with this getting attention, I want to say there are some... Edit to add. Edit to add. With this getting attention, I want to say I know some people simply can't learn languages, and that's not their fault, but to me it seems like the husband is not trying at all instead of trying hard and failing. Listen, Mothman NFT, you're like right for the wrong reasons. Why should he have to learn the language? I know that this sounds like I'm, I'm coming at this from like the worst faith take possible, but like, why should he have to learn? Even if he only spoke Spanish, let's start there. And it was Texas. I still don't think he should necessarily have to learn English just because his spouse's family speaks English. If you were to flip the, the languages, I still think that it like he's living his life. If he's able to live his life and the only consequence of being monolingual is like three times a year he doesn't know what people are saying at dinner, big deal. There's nothing it, like, and I maybe it, it hits me a little closer because people are always like, well, you've like been married for nine years. You don't know how to speak Korean? No, and I don't think I'm going <laughs> to learn. <laughs> it's like that shit is not easy. That doesn't mean it's not worth doing. But I got like, you know, I got other shit on the go. You had nine years and still haven't participated? They've had nine years. They're still not participating. We're both not participating. It's not a cold war. It's like a cold peace. We're all having a great time. I'm sure if they wanted to better their English, they would be bettering their English, but they're busy. I would love to have better Korean, but I've got other shit on the go. Like we both would live in our lives. Just because you're married to someone, you don't have to speak the language that their parents speak. That's, that was not anywhere in the agreement to begin with. Okay, but 10 years? <laughs> Listen. You know right now that you should exercise more. You know you should eat right. You know you should learn how to cook. You've had 10 years to figure it out. Why are you not doing it right now? It's different for me. It's different for me. It's different for me. If my spouse's parents were both professional personal trainers, I would make an effort. Okay, you probably would. And maybe you'd stick with it. But statistically speaking, probably I'll catch you in the same chair 10 years later, looking roughly the same. Maybe a little worse. Just that's how things do with the, with the passage of time. Also, you get as you get older, at least you know, if you're roughly around my age, the older you get, the busier you get. So if you weren't going to knock that shit out when you were 21, TikTok, motherfucker, your window's getting even shorter. Because you're going to have way more shit on the go in 10 years than you do right now. So I'm just trying to say, I don't think there's any reason he should feel like he has to learn Spanish. Listen, if they're talking about him, they're not going, why would, are you stupid? Are they going to talk about you in front of your face in Spanish? That would be so uncomfortable. Hey, Daryl's here. Let's save up all the shit that we've been storing and just unleash it in his face while he's sitting there. Wouldn't that be funny? These people are not evil. They'll talk about you after you leave. They'll be like, I can't believe this motherfucker hasn't learned Spanish yet. <laughs> yeah, knowing his wife is sitting right there and at any moment could be like, uh, what the hell did you just say about my husband? He shouldn't have to learn how to speak Spanish. It's not, it's not a, a moral failing that he doesn't know how to speak Spanish. It's a moral failing that he thinks absolutely everybody should be speaking English around him at all times so he doesn't feel left out. That's the character flaw. Seriously, 10 years and the most Spanish he probably knows is nacho cheese chalupa por favor? Bro, he's literally like, what is wrong with people? He literally did not say that. He might be in incredible shape. <laughs> it's so fucked up. I think I was behind him at Taco Bell. Ordered a quesadilla, extra mild sauce, please. So true, so true. 
I was there. I was there and OP knew how to say quesadilla. That's how I know they're cultured. They like their uh, Mexican cheese sandwiches to be pronounced authentically at the Taco Bell. Mild sauce would be too hot for him. I thought that, you know, when he said extra mild sauce, I don't think a lot of people picked up on the joke. I really appreciate you spelling it out in a, in a more obvious way. Ketchup is too spicy for this dude. Okay, we're going back for thirds. Salt's definitely pushing it. Fourth, put some pepper in his meal. I bet he'd cry. Dude literally made like one mistake and he's, it's the vultures are just circling around him. I always thought people who say they suck at math tend to, be, tend to say they're good at something else like English or languages. What is he good at then? You're both the asshole. What if I told you that there are more things on earth than just math and language? There's, there's a few more. Hey, for example, like how do you think like all the walls in your fucking house and the roof and the pipes, all the plumbing, all the, all the wires, you know, how do you think that that shit came together? The roads, all the infrastructure you rely on every single day. That's math. Well, at one level, but like, you know, it's also a lot of hot shirtless guys just hanging drywall all day. That's not math. That's just, that's blood, sweat and tears. And maybe a, a Budweiser in your lunchbox. At first, I read that to say he's a math person, but he isn't great at English or the humanities or language. But if he sucks at math and he sucks at language skills, then what the fuck could he possibly be good at? Maybe he's good at fucking your mom. It's another skill we haven't talked about here. I bet he could talk your ear off about the intricacies of the Civil War. Just that war. But he's an ace at that for sure. Okay, because he hasn't learned Spanish, now he's uh, flying a Confederate flag everywhere. Or he's a historian with a very narrow level of, exp uh, of a nar narrow area of expertise, and then we're insulting historians for some reason. I don't really understand. Whining and complaining. He's good at whining and complaining. He's got a true talent for that. He also seems to be good at finding a wife that is good at catering to his whims. I can't see how he wouldn't have accidentally learned enough Spanish to get by after 10 years just by being around them. What are you talking about? This mother motherfuckers will watch the 13th Warrior and be like, that's how that shit works. Are you crazy? Um, in the movie, this reminds me of the movie The 13th Warrior where Antonio Banderas gets kidnapped by Norsemen and just from being a prisoner of war in one year, he picks up the Norse language. That shit was written by Uwe Boll, man. Right? I've been with my mostly Spanish-speaking boyfriend over a year, and even though I don't speak it very well at all, I can at least understand enough to get by and answer C, oh no. That's, you don't speak it, you liar! I've been with him for a year. I don't really speak Spanish, but I know yes and no. That's nothing! GF and I were having dinner at a restaurant when she got a text from her best friend who recently gave birth. And she said, OMG, she got a C-section. She works as a nurse, so she explained it to me, the type of incision they make for that and how it leaves a scar. I then, as a joke, said, at least she'll still be tight down there. Nope. All right. You are the asshole. Uh, like, instantly. Why? Why would you say that? It's just, it's ridiculous. Why? It's just a joke. I had another great idea for a tweet this weekend, which is every group of guys has some M effort that says, I'm in the gallows humor. That's the end of the joke. But the, if I had to add like alt text to an image or something like that, it would be like every group of friends has one guy whose uh, sense of humor is basically just being weird and then thinking that that's a personality. Anyway, like this is, it's just a very strange thing to say. Like it, it's inappropriate and I know that it's like, so what? But it's like, I mean, like, imagine if he had said, it, so he, it, let me put it this way. It's almost like there's an illusion in there. Like, at least she'll still be tight down there. But the double entendre, the, uh, the euphemism is doing no work. Because he's basically saying, at least her pussy's not blown out. Like, it's, it's, A, the subtlety that you're applying to the joke is like basically like a meat tenderizer. There's, there's no subtlety whatsoever, but you're trying to be like a little cute with it. Like, look at how clever I am. And then on top of that, um, she just had a baby. Like, it's just a second thing to add to the situation that makes it like super inappropriate. Thirdly, you're at dinner with your spouse. Why are you talking about her friend's vagina? Like, that's just really weird.
Anyway, my GF looked confused and then said what a weird comment to make about her friend. I said it's a very normal joke to make and she disagreed. TLDR, there was some back and forth. I asked her to drop it. She kept trying to talk about it. I said to her, you're so insecure. Then she goes, does it make you feel good to call me that? So then I got really frustrated, got up and walked out of the restaurant and drove home. She called me several times. I drove both of us there. Come on, man. This is too much. <laughs> You didn't leave her. You didn't walk out of the restaurant on your GF. You abandoned her there. She's got to get an Uber back. I was so frustrated. I just wanted to get home, so I turned my phone off. She showed up at our, apart at our apartment 30 minutes later. was really pissed. At our apartment? You guys live together? Every single sentence has, like, another treasure to un uncover. And was really pissed, called me an asshole and overreacted. Then she waited in the cold for 20 minutes for an Uber. Am I the asshole for walking out on her and leaving there to be frustrated? Yeah. I mean, like, you could just, the human brain is not a perfect machine. You could just make a, honestly, here's how you play this off. At least, in my opinion, at least. At least she'll still be tight down there. What a weird thing to say. You know what? You're right. I don't know why I said that. I'm sorry. Now, is, are you going to have a great dinner? No, it'll probably be like a little awkward, but you're the one who threw the nail bomb into the interaction to begin with. At least you'll like leave with only minor scarring. Instead, you escalated. The, I, I mean, I've been there. You say something and someone is like, why the hell would you say that? And you're like, actually, you're the idiot. You're the person that was wrong. And you just amplify it because like your pride is hurt or whatever. But... It's, a, it's very much like an I think you should leave style situation where like a social faux pas is committed and then rather than walk it back, they just amplify it like over and over again. You're the asshole for the sexist comment about her friend's vagina and for your lack of understanding about basic biology. Wait, are you saying she won't still be tight down there? I gotta, I've got to consult with, with anybody in chat, an obstetrician slash gynecologist. In no world is that a normal joke. It's really weird to comment on the vagina of a woman you aren't sleeping with. For, all, for the love of all that is holy, a woman's body is not just for men's sexual pleasure. Listen, I think that he knows that. I think he's just stupid. Maybe I'm projecting a little bit. But I think if you asked him that, he would be like, of course not. But in the moment, he was like, I'm go I'm an entertainer. Da 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 da. Like he made one comment. Let's not make him out to be irredeemable for the comment. The comment is just something stupid that he shouldn't have said. The character flaw is refusing to apologize and then doubling down even further. Anyway. This friend just had major surgery. She had a six-inch incision. Edit. They went between. Wait, 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 you can do that? Betwixt? Betwixt? Her abdominal wall and cut her uterus and five other layers of tissue. I think my uncle had a smaller incision for his first kidney transplant. And your first comment is, at least she's still tight down there. Not, ouch, I hope she's okay. Or, hey... We should take her dinner when she gets... Oh, come on, F fucking Saint Mother Teresa. You ever see the video or the, the reaction image that's like, I don't care that a good thing happened to you. It should have happened to me instead. Like, the, I'm, I'm almost feeling like the inverse of that. Like, if Kate was like... Well, you know, so the similar situation, not, not even close to the same level, but similar thematically... Um, Kate's sister's family, they lost power when we had those blizzards or the, the, in the windstorms and stuff for like three days. They lived three hours away. When Kate was like, oh, they haven't had power for three days. I was like, oh, that must suck. Ne not for a second did it dawn on me that like, oh, we should like pack up our car with a bunch of food and drive across the border and go give them like some i don't know give them some c batteries or something so that they can uh use flashlights and and get, you know, i don't even know give them like borrow their phones and fully charge their phones for them or something like that instead i was like uh whoa that sucks i don't know how we would deal with that and then the food came out and we went mm, this is pretty good I'm not saying you shouldn't care about other people, but like the second you hear like, oh, someone had a C-section, you're like, stop everything. We need to immediately... Listen, now we would have loved for that if somebody came over after Kate had her C-section and was like, here's a bunch of like home-cooked food. 
That would have been amazing. But, you know, anybody who didn't do it, I'm not like, what an asshole. I'm like, you got your own shit going on. Oh, thank heavens for modern medicine that we can get healthy babies here, even if it means from a C-section. That would be your first comment? You're not invited to the damn barbecue. Hey, my wife's friend just had a C-section. Thank heavens for modern medicine that we can get healthy babies home, even if it means a C-section. I don't, that's that's a robot's con. That's like a Chat GPT three Android comment. Like that's why even be part of the conversation at that that point. You know, like the the fun of a social engagement is not necessarily just whenever someone says something to you, thinking of the most socially respectable way to reply. You can have a little bit of fun with the conversation. You know, and you don't have to get naughty with it, but you just don't have to be saying like ridiculous stuff. Like, yeah, everybody's thanking or thankful for modern, well, not everybody, but most people are thankful for modern medicine. Don't need to say that. You see, if, if I was at a, a, a situation and uh, someone said to me, hey, my wife's friend just had a C section, I would say, ooh, best of luck. My wife had a C-section too. I know what the recovery is like. I wouldn't say, thank you, uh, Carolus Linnaeus, for inventing... Uh, I, don't, I don't even know the medicine involved in the process. Every day I get down on my knees and I genuflect that in 1906, Dr. Jonas Salk invented the process known as the cesarean section. Were it not for that, so many complications would have... Like, you, of course, you, you... I mean, this is one of those things... This sounds maybe ungrateful. But in a social situation, you should take it for granted. Wow. Oh, these jalapeno poppers are amazing. Yeah, isn't it a wonder of modern agricultural practices that we're able to get deep-fried jalapeno peppers north of the 48th parallel in... January? No, it's fucking just, oh, spicy. It's, like, learn to talk like a human being a little bit before you give advice about what this guy did wrong. Everybody knows he did it wrong, but you, like, don't get how to do it right. Or even make a joke about the movie Alien. That's, what's the joke? I, like, okay, so there's chest bursters in Alien, or... Uh, um, Shaw gives herself a C-section with the, the auto doctor in Prometheus. Hey, a C-section, that reminds me of my favorite movie, Prometheus. It's just weird. Also, you can't just say or make a joke about. Like, what's the joke, George Carlin? Well, if, you, if it's so easy to do off the cuff, why don't you do it right now instead of just saying just make a joke about it? If it's, if it's that simple. An alien joke would have had me in stitches. LOL! Or ripping out my stitches. I can't remember if laughing hurt after my C-section. I do remember getting out of bed wrong one night. That sharp pain is burned in my memory. Okay, I mean, I believe that. I do hate that this guy is... Like, he deserves a lot of heat. But he's getting so much heat for, like, the patriarchy. And I'm like, this he's just one guy. He's probably, like, 24 years old or something like that. This guy what didn't invent, you know, obstetrician surgical practices. He's just he's a loser. <laughs> Cut him some slack. <laughs> They're like, you're the reason the husband stitch was invented. I'm like, what do you fucking mean? He was probably like negative 92 when that shit was invented. How could he be the reason? He's he's literally just an idiot. I the asshole for calling my girlfriend cheap. Not necessarily. I mean, I would take it as a compliment. But I gotta, just listen, okay? My GF makes six figures as a pharmacist and is still the cheapest person I know. She recently bought a new Toyota RAV4 and wanted the bars above to mount her skis. No, she is not the cheapest person. Like, she bought a new car and she skis. That's an expensive purchase and an expensive hobby. Like, that's... It immediately undermines your, your sentiment here to begin with. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> and that's an SUV. They quoted her at 2K. She decided not to get it, even though she really wanted it. She spent about four months drooling over a handbag that cost 600 bucks. She uses a tattered bag from college and says she needs one, but can't bring herself to buy one. I bought it for her for her Christmas gift. And when I gave it to her, she got mad at me for wasting my money. She did apologize after saying she loves it, but $600 is too much to spend on a bag. 
Okay, it sounds like that's a non-issue, so I'm not even sure why that's involved. She gave you an, the easiest Christmas gift of all time and liked it. Okay, congratulations. Why are you turning this into a problem? She never wants to eat out, like, at all. I usually eat out two to three times a week, but it's hard to get her to eat out even once a month. She always says she can make the same thing for cheaper and will only eat out after some pleading from me. She doesn't tip very high either, only 15% usually. Is this, this is bait, right? If you want to get Reddit upset, you just bring up tipping. Either way, 15% is like the worst number you could bring up because half of people are like, you should leave zero, and half of people are like, 15%? What did they spit on your plate? She only drives when there are a few things to do. For example, for her to come over, she also drops off mail, buys things, goes to the gym on the same trip to save on gas. I'm sure it's eco-friendly. You, if, th if this is real, you just hate your girlfriend. These are not necessarily like crazy behaviors. Like it's not like she's hanging up her tea bags on the clothesline to reuse them or something like that. It's like, it's just fairly reasonable like cost savings to make without impacting your quality of life very much. Like that's not that crazy. She's just the normal person. She won't ever buy coffee and even brings her own coffee maker kit rather than buy coffee for road trips. And she won't buy bread or oat milk. She insists to make it to save money even though it takes so long. She only buys things on sale, blah, blah, blah. She refused to buy things in Ikea. Okay, now that's crazy because Ikea is like really cheap. That's like one of the cheapest furniture stores you could go to. She's, I'm starting to see his point, honestly. <laughs> Not as cheap as other places. It's, it's pretty cheap, though. It's super expensive. It's like super not, though. My bookshelf was like 60 bucks. It's a piece of garbage. Like you would never, <laughs> you would never be like, whoa, check out this bookcase. You won't believe where I got it. You're like, you know, it's more like that's where my books go. But it's pretty cheap. Ikea is expensive. Is this like a regional thing? We, our last bed, not the bed we use now. We bought a bed from Ikea. It was a double bed. It cost $200. That's something you literally use for like a third of your life. It costs half of what like a PS4 cost at the time. I've seen tables for $2,000 in Ikea. Yeah, but you've probably also seen tables for like 70 bucks. And they'll tell you which one they're moving more of. They also have like a $1.79 breakfast. I'm just throwing... <laughs> sorry, I'm not trying to... I'm not trying to say anything socially by saying this. I'm just saying Ikea prices have gone up 30% thanks to lumber. Lumber round trip, motherfucker. You think I don't listen to Odd Lots with Joe Weisenthal and Tracy Alloway? Try serving me. So, oh, this costs more because of the lumber. The lumber went up and it came right back down. Because of the lumber. Good for the tuna. Anyway, this person is just crazy. Now, I will say, and, and like I, I've annoyed a certain subset of people, I'm going to annoy the other subset of people. I do also get annoyed when people treat never spending money as like that person is like more moral. Shit drives me crazy because, I mean, on the internet, at least, you know, when you're, you got the spotlight on you like I do, sometimes you're like, I went out for a sandwich yesterday. And then people are like, go out for a sandwich. Wow, must be nice to be, you know, the price you paid for that sandwich, I could have bought uh, two loaves of bread and boar's head cold cuts and cheese and had sandwiches for a week. And then someone else is like, oh, bread from the supermarket. Must be nice to be uh, in the upper middle class. I could have bought four kilograms of baking flour and used that to make 17 loaves of bread at my own house and then stolen a chicken from a farm and use that to make an egg every single day and I could have eaten sandwiches for three weeks. Like the idea that spending money is always immoral and then like saving money is always moral. I, I think that there's some kind of like conditioning there that has led society down a, a, a what I would consider a, 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 a path that is not necessarily accurate because I deal with it with my parents. Like Anytime my parents come out for dinner with us, my dad will say something like, holy cow, like $26 for spaghetti? And I'm like, just, I know you can make it at home for like, listen, they always say crazy stuff too. Like I can make it at home just as good for half the price. And I'm like, no, you can't. 
you could probably make it pretty good, but there's like eight bucks worth of butter. You would never do that to yourself. You, you care about your cardiac health. You can make good spaghetti. You're not making it this good. I'm sorry. They, they're making this spaghetti 20 times an hour. They know what they're doing, okay? I've had your spaghetti. I've had their spaghetti. Their spaghetti wins out. You can't compete with the pros. So nobody looks at like uh, they, they don't get arthroscopic surgery and go like, wow, I could probably do this for 450, you know? But then the chefs, they're always like, they, people always look at it exclusively in terms of ingredient costs. They don't consider it like an art. Like if you go to Subway and you're like, I can make this sandwich cheaper, you're like, yeah, no shit. It's just like literally all they're doing is doing what you tell them. Of course, you, you, got, you get it for convenience. But if you go to like a real restaurant and you're like, I could get this shit cheaper. Okay, then fucking go to Le Cordon Bleu Institute of Culinary Education. Go to the American Culinary Institute. F fucking waste your 20s going up to going to the restaurant at 7 a.m., leaving the restaurant at midnight, smoking 400 cigarettes a day to learn how to make, a, you know, a burr blanc. It's just insulting to say you can make this cheaper at all. Anyway, all I'm saying is it's not immoral to spend money and it's not moral to save money. It's, it depends on your lifestyle. It depends on what, you're, what you value. I'm picking on this one because this post basically says, am I the asshole for hating my wife? And, but then they're not the asshole. So I got to know. Am I the asshole for following my wife's request at letting her fail and a problem bite her in the ass? I try and protect her from harsh realities or things that will turn out badly. Sometimes they're big things, sometimes they're little things. Slow down, you're going too fast. No, I'm not. I drive here all the time. Stop telling me what to do. Speed trap, speeding ticket in the mail. Owned. Thank you for your service, officer. Giving my wife a speeding ticket, winning me the argument. Don't buy that drink. You won't like it. I'm going to buy it. Gross, it's pineapple. I hate pineapple. There goes $20 kind of things. I'm going to buy it. It's so good. Oh, man. She's insistent I let her fail so she learns a lesson and stop protecting her from it. I do because I love her, not to shelter her or keep her in a box. She gets so upset when she fails, like emo teenager, curl up in a ball and sulk in the darkness vibes. And it's really hard for me to just let it happen and fight trying to rescue her. So these holidays, I let her fail. She pays the utilities for the house. She left out a lot of lights on, including the tree around the clock. I do what I can to negate it, but never said anything. I didn't purposely run around and burn electricity to prove a point. I just didn't fuss about it. When lights TV are on in a room and no one was in all the time, I'd simply turn things off and not say anything. She just got the bill and is flabbergasted at how expensive it was. I told her I wasn't surprised because of all the electricity we used in December. Now she's mad at me for not being sympathetic of the bill she has to pay? Am I the asshole for letting this happen and not being sympathetic? Oh, 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 he wrote it twice. Okay. Sorry if it comes across as condescending. It's not my intention. The bill wasn't exponentially higher. It's just like 80 bucks higher. I generally pay around 80... See, this is what it's like to be a man when you make an Am I the Asshole post. Immediately... If the roles were reversed, people would be like, let, let him, he needs to learn that he's not mommy's special boy. Let him suffer the consequences of his actions. I guarantee the reason he's making this one is someone probably posted info. How exactly, give me a, a, an itemized double line ledger breakdown of the bills in your house. Because if she's paying the utilities, it sounds like that you're probably a bad husband and think that she should pay for everything. Now he's got to come in here and justify himself. I gotta pay, I pay 85% of the bills. She chose what she was able to afford and handle as she insisted she help out with the bills. Utilities are her responsibility by her choosing. I didn't just assign them to her. It's not a punishment for her behavior. It's her first time paying actual bills besides her car. There's no parental child kink here, just a difference in personalities. You don't need to, resp you're not beholden to respond to every insane person that talks to you. You, you, you smart enough guy to look at the message that would suggest that and just go block like that's someone asked you you as the op you are the satellite dish that collects and i say this as a streamer i see more insanity than you i'm sorry i know you see crazy stuff on twitter but like just by virtue of the fact that thousands of people interface with this i become like a conduit for collecting insanity now, I let some of that insanity go out into the signal, and it always feels good at the time and regrettable later, but I'm just fucking absorbing like 99% of it. Like, ah! And that's my responsibility. 
when you're the OP, it's that in a microcosm. People can type anything they want. You don't have to respond to it just because they asked. You can say, hey, loser, get out of my thread. Am I crazy for saying who cares is $80? Like, at first I was wondering what, uh, like, how expensive electricity is. Because, like, our electricity plus water bill is, like, the same price year-round. It's like the heat and the air conditioning cost the same amount, I guess. Maybe it's a little cheaper in the fall, a little cheaper in the spring. But it's like it's about 120 bucks a month. I will say when we lived in a shithole in college, our utility bill was like, in a seven-bedroom house, it was like 100 bucks per month per person in the winter to heat it. Probably because the insulation was put in the house in like 1931 or something like that. The shit was leaky as hell. The landlords don't care. They're just charging you like 600 bucks a month rent per room times seven people for like a house that should probably be condemned. <laughs> Corn in the walls. <laughs> right, it got me... That got me laughing. Corn in the walls. Corn in the walls. Corn in the walls. This just doesn't seem like that big of a... It doesn't seem like that big of a deal. It seems like you hate your, your wife or your girlfriend. Does she really talk like that? Does she really say, I'm a buy it? Or is that just something you wanted to make her appear stupid to make your point stronger. So you wrote it in all caps. I'm a buy it. Gross, it's pineapple. I hate pineapple. There goes $20. What drink was she buying? Pineapple juice for 20 bucks? She's shopping at Whole Foods. She's like as dumb as I am. Not the asshole. She wanted to fuck around and she found out. Me when the electricity bill is $80 higher than it normally is. Fuck around, find out. Well, just the most re overused reaction image of uh, 2022 and 2023 so far is the, the the guy with the whiteboard. Hold on, we could do it. It's, it's mirrored. I can't... Me, when I'm like, oh, I haven't eaten in six hours and I'm hungry. A thousand people replying with... Fuck around, find out, reaction image gif. Yay! No, not the asshole. He fucked around and found out. I don't know. I just Why are people so giddy taking pleasure in this? Also, can I tell you another overused phrase? And normally, I'm not hip with the, with the culture, but I respect it. When people say no cap, when people drop the gritty, when people do stuff like that, I say it's kids being kids. I don't get annoyed. I don't get annoyed at the younger generation. You know what has been annoying me a lot? People tweeting insane shit like eating lunch right now and then putting hashtag IYKYK. If you know, you know. If I know, you're not that interesting. Yes, I know about lunch. Do I know about lunch? I don't know. Eating lunch right now. If you know, you know. I hate that shit. Mm, I'm getting real busy replying to emails. If you know, you know. I don't know any, what do you, that you're supposed to tell me. That's the first step of social media is you're supposed to tell me something and then I react to it. It's not, why are we leaving out all these, this breadcrumb trail? It sounds like you don't know. You know what, Jerry? Not only do I not know, I don't want to know. You don't want to know. Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell off and bonked his head. Mama called the doctor. The doctor said, No more monkeys jumping on the bed! How do you think the doctor felt when she called him four more times? You guys, we are the worst mother of it! Baby's favorite bit. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Can't tell if the wife has the naivete or competence of a child or if OP has such an infantilized view of her we can't get an accurate idea of what's going on. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. Oh, here we go. He's almost 40 and very educated, apparently. You're the reason that the husband stitch exists. You're the reason that uh, heteronormative primogenitor was the dominant form of monarchical inheritance in the medieval era in western europe bro he was negative 700 chill out he's literally just a guy okay 
He's just like the, the one we had earlier. He's just an idiot. He's not responsible for all idiots everywhere just because he shares a similar mistake. <laughs> and let me guess, she's 23. Let me make up like completely fabricated story. I couldn't find an answer, but that's the scenario I'm picturing. Then you're fucking crazy, idiot. Then you're insane. Hmm, I couldn't find this information. This is information wasn't provided, so I'm just going to assume it was the worst it could possibly be. Because how do you not know how to manage your utilities after 20 years of living on your own, unless they raise the rates on you, or you move to a bigger living space and aren't used to it? It's just like... People just make mistakes sometimes. Sometimes people take a big dookie, forget to the, forget the flush the toilet. It happens. OP is very educated and can't help it. He sounds so smart. I mean, most of the time, I, I deal with this to like a much smaller extent. Sometimes I'll be doing something stupid. And then my wife will be like, why are you doing that? It's stupid. And then like, I would say about half the time, I go, you're right, this is dumb. And the other half of the time, I'm like offended that she's right. And I'm like, even if it is stupid, you should just let me be stupid and make a mistake. You should just let me get into a car accident instead so I actually learn my lesson. And then like a minute later, I'm like, no, you're right, it's stupid. So I get it, like, you know, I get not wanting to be told what to do all the time when you're an adult. It would be annoying to be outside and be like, I want to drink this pineapple juice. And then someone goes, you don't drink that pineapple juice. You don't like pineapple. And then uh, I'm like, well, you, I'm 25 years old. You think I can't even figure out what drink I want? I'm going to drink it. And then I buy it and go, I hate pineapple. <laughs> Am I the asshole for refusing to help my neighbor and her two young children when their wipers were frozen? Canada spotted. I, 59 male, live in a major city in Ontario, Canada. I live in a small subdivision and have five neighbors total on my street. Not a major city. Studies of, wait. Sorry, there's no... You, you don't live in a major city if you're on a cul-de-sac with five other detached houses. You might be in... You might be in Oshawa. You might be in Burlington, Mississauga, Scarborough, um... Richmond Hill, something like that. I'm telling you, it, it, don't flatter yourself. In, enjoy the fact that you've got a, a house that I'm sure is worth more money than it's actually worth. And you, you get to tell people, you get to steal the valor of being like, yeah, I'm from Toronto. But actually, you're like, I'm 75 minutes on the go train away. I'm just, I, we're out here in the, in the urban sprawl making it work. I'm keeping non-Tim Hortons coffee shops open so that the two times a year you actually make it into the city and you condescend about, oh, wow, there's so many people and, oh, wow, well, there's so much traffic, blah, 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 so that you can be like, ooh, but it's so nice to go to J.J. Bean instead of Starbucks for once. I, 59 male, live in a major city in Ontario, Canada. I live in a small subdivision. I have five neighbors total on my street for the past few years in winter. We're getting a lot of snow or bad storms. As I'm leaving for my overnight shift around 8 or 9 p.m., I'll put my wife's windshield wipers up on her car and do a quick walk around to my other five neighbors and put their windshield wipers up on their cars. Obviously not if they're outside or something, but if it looks like they're in for the night. Many of them will forget to do this, as many of them have children, and it typically slips their mind, and their wipers will be frozen to their car in the morning. So this is like a little weird, but it's nice. It is a nice thing to do. I wouldn't be mad as long as he told me that it was him that did it. If I like was at the you know neighborhood town hall meeting with him and he was like, hey, did you like how your windshield wipers were up instead of down? I guess there's some sort of like windshield wiper fairy that's going around doing that. I would be like, that's weird. But I don't think this is like, he's not offensive right now. It's not like he threw dog poop in, uh, in my garbage can or something like that, which is we all know is unforgivable. It's just something nice I like to do to look out for my neighbors. But here's where there's like, um, I, I, I'm, there's got to be a condition, right? It's just something nice I like to do. And like I can leverage it and hold it over their head if something that they do doesn't appeal to me. They're always grateful of this and thank me. Many of them started doing it too. There'll be nights where I'll forget to put mine and my wife's up. And in the morning, one of the neighbors has done it for us. 
Anyway, recently one of our neighbors moved in, a new family moved in as of last week. It's a young couple and their two young children. The other night I was leaving for my overnight shift at around 9 p.m. It was snowing really heavy and we were supposed to be getting almost 30 centimeters and it was freezing out. So I put my wife's wipers up and did my usual quick walk around to the other neighbors. I was hesitant when I reached my new neighbor's house as I've only introduced myself once but did it anyway. As I was putting the second wiper up on their pickup truck. See, this is I'm getting whiplash because at first I was like, he hates this young family. But now that I know the young family has a pickup truck, I'm like, well, not the asshole. But what if the husband actually is one of the 1% of pickup owners that has a job where like towing or hauling materials is actually required? In that case, I might say that he is the asshole. I don't know. I, I need more context. Info. What is the husband's job? Hey, what the F are you doing to my truck? I tried to explain to him. I was just putting his wipers up to help him. He continued to scream at me to get the hell off my property and don't touch my S again. The wife then came out and started yelling at me too. I apologized and started walking away. Some of my other neighbors heard the commotion and came outside to see what was happening. They tried explaining to him too that it's just something we do. Both of them wasn't having it. Fast forward to this morning, I'm arriving home from my overnight shift, and as I'm walking in, I see the wife of this couple struggling outside to break the ice off the windshield wipers of the truck. Guess she was trying to take her kids to school, and both of the wipers was frozen solid on the car. She sees me and yells over, hey there, do you mind giving me a hand, please? I look over to her and yell back, no sorry, thought I was never to touch your shit ever again, ma'am, and walked back inside. She yelled it back at me, wow, A-H told my wife about this. She thinks I should have helped her because she's just trying to get her kids to school. I disagree as I was for just following what they told me. A-I-T-A. I believe that here, I believe that this story is real up until new neighbors moved into the subdivision. And I believe that the rest of this happened in this man's head when he was in the shower. He did not put the windshield wipers up on the new neighbor's truck because he imagined that they might say, what the F are you doing? And then imagined, pathetically, even after that, coming home from work. And of course, the, the young lady who yelled at him is now struggling with their frozen windshield wipers. And then you get a malicious compliance in there where you say, I'm just doing what you told me. Sorry. He probably lives in Windsor and is bored. Classic Windsor L. I would have to give this... Uh, I mean, it, this is like every boomer's power fantasy, right? And maybe it'll be mine when I'm that age, too. But isn't every boomer's power fantasy like you didn't, you didn't appreciate what I did for you and now, you know, fire and brimstone is going to rain down upon you? I held the door open at Walmart for, for a Gen Z kid who was on their phone. They didn't say thank you. And then an anvil fell on their head and smushed them down until they were so flat that they had to plug their nose and put their thumb in their mouth and then go. And then they blew up to the size of a balloon and started floating away. And somebody took a needle and went boop. And they went. Am I the asshole? This post. Am I the asshole for making our daughter clean our horse's stalls against her will? Is it, is it, is it, you own a polo club or something? Builds character. Your horse's stalls? We recently got two horses. My Oh, the, now that I know there's two of them, not the asshole. I was picturing like an entire stable or something. Now that I know it's just a modest two horses, then I, I think that builds character. We recently got two horses. My younger daughter wanted them as she's been learning to ride. My older daughter was against them. Okay, follow-up question. In that case, why did you buy two? You have one daughter who wants to ride horses. Why'd you get two horses? Do they keep each other company? I don't know, honestly. I'm not a, I'm not a horse guy. My older daughter was against them. She's much more princessy and didn't want to deal with the mess and chores that come with horses, but we told her it wouldn't be something she'd have to deal with and that her younger sister promised to take care of it all. You got, you're working from behind the eight ball already because she didn't want the horses. Her sister wanted the horses. Two adults made the decision to buy the horses, and yet somehow she ends up cleaning the stables. Make it make sense. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to me. 
We wanted her to... Wait, sorry. Recently, the older daughter has been disrespectful at home and staying out too late and her grades have been slipping. We warned her to shape up, but last week when we heard she'd been needlessly insulting to her younger sister while I was running errands, I told her she'd be cleaning out the stable each day for the next week as punishment and that her sister would get a break. She got really upset and offended and said she promised she'd never have... We'd, she pro we promised she'd never have to go in there or have to scoop horse poop. I said, I promised it wouldn't be one of your chores, of course, but obviously a punishment is supposed to be something outside of your normal chores and something you won't like. She's been doing it for three days now and seems to be very resentful of our broken promise, acting very disgusted and keeps begging to get out of the rest of it. But I said, I thought it's very fair and she's overreacting. Am I the asshole? I don't know how it happened, but somehow I'm like, nope, not the asshole. A punishment is supposed to be something that you don't like to do. Admittedly, it sucks that she didn't even want the horses and now she has to clean the, the horse poop and, and clean the stables or whatever. But you should have thought of that before you were being a little you-know-what. A week of doing something that you don't like to do. I go, oh, there's a contract, but I didn't even... It's a... The punishment doesn't make sense. Instead, you should do something that would, there was a reasonable expectation, like make me do the dishes twice as often or something. No, I think this is... I think this is completely fine. I, I don't think this makes you... I don't think this makes you an asshole. I'm surprised Reddit didn't side with him. I'm not. Because Reddit and the internet in general is like... If you promised, you can never break the promise. A promise is like legally binding. The only thing more severely fucked up in Reddit's opinion than breaking a promise is not respecting a contract. If you made a promise to break a legally binding document, the website would explode. They would have to take it offline. Because they'd look at it like the same way a lawyer pours through like the criminal code in order to determine, well, yes, maybe your daughter threw boiling hot water on her sister, but at the same time, you promised she would never have to clean the stables. Well, like... I guess you sh I should have made you promise not to throw boiling hot water on your sister. I, I think that even if he is the asshole here, I think he's the asshole in a, in a very, very small way. And I think the comments are going to blow him out. I think they're going to say things like, how are you supposed to, how is your child supposed to ever trust you ever again when you told her she wouldn't have to clean the stables and then she had to clean the stables for a week as a punishment? I think that they are going to, I think they're going to go off on this dad. I think they're going to suggest, I think they're going to say things that are like, um, I hope you enjoy the next six months of her living with you because as soon as she turns 18, don't be surprised if you never hear from her ever again. Info, horses can be a pretty big gift. Does your oldest child also get the same treatment as your youngest child? It could be resentment building up and causing her to act out. Okay. As an only child, I didn't think of that. But, I mean, like, I don't think this should necessarily be the top post, but that's okay. You're the asshole. You bought two horses for your younger daughter and promised the older daughter she wouldn't have been involved in, the, in their care. Italicized, you broke your promises. There were plenty of adequate and appropriate punishments available you could have given your daughter for staying out late and letting her grades slip. Are you deliberately trying to stir up resentment between the two sisters? Because this is how you get resentment between two sisters. Are you, do you want ants? Because this is how we get ants. You broke your promise. Younger sister also ben benefits from the punishment and may accuse the older sister of stuff to retain these benefits. 15,000 upvotes. Yeah, or she fucking maybe didn't because that's not even in the post in the first place. 15,000 people said, yeah, that insane headcanon definitely, that sounds right to me especially when it seems the straw that broke OP's back. It was when he heard she had been needlessly insulting to the younger sister. Seems good old dad here was relatively fine with the other issues, but how dare his horrible eldest be mean to his precious golden baby. Also, I wonder where he heard that from. I'm betting next time little sis gets tired of taking care of her gifts, OP will hear of something bad his eldest did to her once again. The, the, this kid didn't do anything. At least there's like no, I don't even want to say no proof. There's not even the suspicion to begin with, but people are convinced. Seven and a half thousand people are like, you cracked the case wide open, Sherlock. 
How badly could she have needlessly insulted the younger sister that a reasonable punishment is cleaning up for two horses for a week? Am I the only person that does chores? Most you gotta someone's gotta do it for the entire lifespan of the animal. One week is like it's 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 a flap of a hummingbird's wings. It's gross. I and she didn't buy the horses in the first place. This shit is one how often do I clean up shit? Like literally every day. Sometimes more than once a day if I gotta change my baby's diaper. <laughs> she explicitly didn't want the horses. Don't insult your sister. I'm not saying there aren't better punishments. I'm just saying that this doesn't seem that bad. Do you have any idea how bad it smells? That's why it's a, it's a punishment. What is it supposed to be like? Oh, it, oh, hey, you have to watch like 30 minutes of Netflix every night? I don't understand what the... It's supposed to be annoying. It's supposed to... The first three days of the punishment are so that you can stew and be like, well, I can't wait to never fucking see my dad ever again. He's such an asshole. And then like sometime around the fourth day, you're like, you know what? I probably shouldn't have been so mean to my sister. And then the last three days are like, okay, I'm, I've learned my lesson and I'm just going to serve my time and not let it happen again. That's, that's why it's a week-long punishment. If you gave her a punishment for 30 minutes, she would just lean heavy into the resentment energy. Minus two, only child take? I, I'm losing it. Like, what, do you, what should he have done? Don't be mean to your sister. Don't be mean to your sister. I told you not to be mean to your sister. Hey! You got to listen to me. Stop being mean to your sister. You got to do so you got to put some kind of punishment in, in it to make it stick. He shouldn't have given her a punishment that benefited the younger sibling. Motherfucker, these people got shit to do. Go get out my fucking like Google Calendar, 8 p.m. Let me spend an hour brainstorming the perfect punishment that fulfills like 25 different criteria. It's like life's too short, man. You give her, you, you, something insane pops up in the top of your head. You go, that's too crazy. Then you dial it back a little bit and you go one week in the stables. She's not making her sleep in there. She's got to shovel some poop. You guys are so lucky that I don't have a sibling. Because if I had a sibling, there would be no argument against me right now. The only thing that people are saying against me is, minus two, you're an only child. If I had a sibling, you would have to accept that I'm right. Because the, you're attacking my character instead of my argument. It's called an ad hominem. So you're making her clean up shit as a punishment? Yeah, you're the asshole. You've deliberately chosen something you know she will hate. That's just spiteful. It's not spiteful, she has to hate it! It's a punishment! I thought I'm losing my mind here. I'm not saying you should like make her not eat dinner or just give her like those stale crusts of bread and like brackish water or something like that. But that's what you're supposed to somebody. If you have to teach a lesson to your child, you have to give them something that they don't like to do. Punishment is revoking privileges or taking away electronics, maybe even grounding slash loss of allowance, not shoveling shit. Listen. I'm not a 17-year-old girl. I think if you gave me the choice between shoveling shit for 30 minutes a night for a week or taking my phone away, I would shovel the shit for sure. Maybe that means that taking the phone away is a better punishment. But I, I, I feel like removing her ability to socialize with her peer group is, is like more damaging than, oh, that poop smells a little bad and I got to shovel it into a bucket or something like that. You might be, you know, socially turning her into a pariah. She's going to have to catch up with... I, I, again, I'm not 17 years old, but I imagine the group chats probably have like 5,000 messages in them a night. By the time she gets her phone back, she's going to be reading like a, you know, in search of lost time or something like that. She's going she's gonna to be non-contemporaneous. You're the asshole. Why does your 13-year-old get a break from her responsibilities when the 17-year-old fucks up? Well, the 13-year-old didn't do anything right. Liz, I, it's not perfect. We can all agree that it's not a perfect punishment, but at the same time, why are so many people resentful of the younger sibling that, as far as we know from the facts of the case, was merely the victim of being insulted? 
I'm the scapegoat. Oh, that's why. I'm the scapegoat child of my family, and I recommend you look at your biases. Well, I recommend you look at your biases because you're inserting your own biases into the post where the, the, the information that you're insinuating is there doesn't exist. The 13-year-old has two horses, and you think the 17-year-old is the princess. Okay, Your Honor, let me write a, a biography, an itemized list of everything I've ever given to both of my kids over the last 17 years, and then you can see if I'm treating one that's uh, with in superior treatment to another. It's driving me crazy, man. Right, I also noticed that. I also share the same bias as you and made something the fuck up without even seeing it. I physically cringed when I read the word princess. Ironically, horses are generally associated with princesses. It almost feels like some sort of projection. It almost feels like some sort of projection. Princesses are not associated with horses. Princesses ride horses, and then there are a, a 10x the amount of royals that work in the stables that are shoveling the shit. You could be a princess and not want to shovel horse shit. The princesses weren't the ones taking care of the horses. They're the ones after the horses are taken care of, they put the brush on their hand and go like this. Pretty baby, pretty baby. It's driving me insane. You're the asshole. She's going to resent her sister more and trust your promises less. You should have kept your word and found an alternative punishment. Why don't you suggest one, Spike 2021, if it's so easy? You should eat less and exercise more. Any tips to make that happen? Gotta go. Trust is so fragile. If you teach your child that you will go back on your promises intentionally to hurt them, that's a lesson they're going to remember. The point of the punishment is learning a lesson. I think the lesson is, if you're rude to your family when you're still under your family's care, you're going to have to shovel some shit. It's going to be unpleasant. You can be a capital B word when you're on your own, when you're paying your own rent, and then you can suffer the ramifications of nobody wanting to speak to you because they think you're mean. What the parents are trying to do is set up like a, a scaffold where you can make mistakes, learn from those mistakes, and then be like, oh, I didn't like the way that feels. As an adult, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to endeavor to not do that. You're the asshole. You made a promise and you broke it because you have a golden child. I always forget that I'm definitely getting a vasectomy, man. It's not that only children are weird. It's that everybody with a sibling hates their parents and their siblings. They're like, you have to have a second kid so that both of your kids can be as fucked up and resentful as I am. I love everybody, man. Minus two, minus two. It's only making me more confident in my, in my decision here. Your oldest daughter isn't the golden child, obviously, so you want her to be Cinderella. Edited to change Cinderella to Cinderella. <laughs> this shit is so good, dude. It's crazy. Info, have you asked your 17-year-old why her grades are slipping and she's acting the way she is? Okay, reasonable question. Honestly, followed by insane reply. My guess is that her parents bought her younger sibling horses that cost thousands of dollars and call her a princess because she wants nothing to do with them. Hey, hey, just wondering why your grades... What used to be like a, an A student. You're getting C pluses lately. What happened? Oh, I, I've been going through a lot lately. My parents bought my younger sister two horses. Is, do you, like, it doesn't stand up to, to the smell test. It doesn't make any, she, grades are probably slipping because she's 17 and she's got her first taste of like independence in a social life and that shit is like more entertaining than school, especially when the benefits that you get, the rewards for being a good student are like off on the horizon. You're like, oh, don't you, hey, you should really study instead of hanging out with your friends. You'll probably never see your friends here again after high school, but if you do well, you get into a good college, and then in 15 years, you could have a good job, which has a great uh, opportunity for a promotion, and then you could get retired, uh, you know, by age 60 or something like that. Like, she's probably, grades are probably slipping. She's got more immediately exciting things going on in her life, is my guess. Or I don't know, maybe she's playing Final Fantasy XIV. She's obviously dealing with something if she's acting out and getting bad grades out of nowhere. She, I mean, she, maybe she, I wouldn't say obviously, like, she's 17. 
I was like a good teenager. There were still times when I was like, you know, 15, 16, 17, where I like, you know, was just mean to my mom for 15 seconds. And then later that night was like, why did I say that? Or like, was the, oh, I don't want to do my biology homework tonight. I'm just going to play ESPN NFL football 2K5 and take the L on this. Like, you know, you just, your, your brain's not fully developed. You make mistakes. Why do you think your, her grades are slipping and she's been acting out? You buy your younger daughter two horses. They're not cheap. What did you get your older daughter? Edited the ad because this one's really angered me. You called her a princess because she said no to wanting horses when actually that's a very mature decision because it shows she's aware it's a big responsibility and doesn't want to take it. I think you're an ass of a parent. Why? I guess I'm mature because I've never wanted horses either. You got your younger daughter two horses, and yet on your older daughter's 16th birthday, you merely got her a Tesla Model 3. <laughs> you piece of shit. Proceed directly to jail. I had to get like out of that one. Or You're right, I was going to have like a stroke. I'd be asshole for making my daughters wear dresses when they visit their grandparents. I don't know if I can do another... Am I the asshole post with kids? Especially multiple kids. The people in the comments are losing their, their damn mind, man. I don't even need to read the post. Oh, and the boys merely get to wear slacks and a button-up shirt, but the girls have to wear dresses? You are living in the... Do you misogynist, male chauvinist? It's not 1949 anymore. Anyway, let's give it a chance. My in-laws are what you would call traditional. They seem to think the world should have stopped 50 years ago. 1973, really? Usually, usually you hear about that being like, I mean, it tends to stop around 1959 because as soon as 1960 starts, it's all, it's the time of the season for loving, you know. But maybe they were really into disco, for all I know. They aren't racist that I know of, or outwardly bigoted, but they are just very old-fashioned. My husband and I have three children. We go to visit all their grandparents since they live close. Here's the issue. They don't like the idea of women wearing pants. <laughs> Me neither, brother. High five. My mo I'm joking. I'm joking. My mother-in-law says it's showing off, and my father-in-law always says it isn't Christian. Now, I'm pretty feminine, so I don't mind throwing on a dress when we stop by it, but our daughters are not. They don't like visiting my husband's parents, which breaks my heart because we make them put on a dress before they go. They're both pretty tomboyish and they never wear any dresses otherwise. I had to but put each of them, buy each of them a few dresses specifically so they can go. To be clear, it's not like they aren't allowed over if they wear pants. It's just they won't shut up the entire time about how much they hate it. Our daughters hate this and think it's unfair. I guess it is, but in a lot of cultures, women only wear skirts and dresses, so I don't think it's a big deal. Plus, it isn't like it hurts them to wear a dress a few times. A few times a week for a few hours? You're the asshole! I thought this would be like once every two months or something like that. A few times a week for a few hours? That's too much. I was like, for, for half of the, well, 95% of this post, I was like, listen, sometimes you got to wear things you don't want to wear to ensure that you're enshrined in the inheritance for life, okay? But it's multiple times a week is definitely, like even th there's got to be some casualness. The issue is our oldest is planning to never speak to her grandparents again after she's 18, and I'm worried it's affecting them. What? My mother-in-law says it's showing off, and my father-in-law says it isn't Christian. Yeah, okay, that's not, that's, that is insane. I would, uh, truly not uh, sensical. You're the asshole. I know it seems easier to get them to wear a dress, but it's sending them the message that their feelings and comfort aren't as important as other people's. Their grandparents should love them for them, not if they wear what they consider appropriate clothing. It's not 1950 anymore. G parents need to accept things are different and you need to support your kids. Okay, well, can't disagree. You're the asshole women wore pants 50 years ago and why are the girls over at their place so much if your in-laws don't respect them? Anyway, just to keep moving on. You are on the wrong side of history here. Okay, like, listen. <laughs> I don't disagree, but I probably wouldn't have phrased it that way. My grandmother was born before 1900. 
She, your, your grandmother was born before 1900? Your grandmother was born before 19... Okay, let's assume she was born in 1899. She had a kid at age 20. Your mom was born in 1919. Your ass was born in like 1946 or something like that. You're 80 damn years old on posting on Am I the Asshole? I don't buy this for a damn second. No shot. No, no, no. Like this is a... Sorry, I, I took the screen off. This is a comment. This is not the OP. Not everyone has kids at 20. Bro. It's 1919. They didn't have anything else to do. 1989 to 1940 to 1980? I, I simply refuse to believe it. I don't believe... I, honestly? <laughs> scroll me. I refuse because I'm just, I'm crunching the numbers in my head right now. My grandmothers were born in the 20s. Yeah, they were not born in the 19th century. My grandmother was born in 1949. That's literally 50 years after the earliest, there's the latest that she could, this grandma could have been born. Minimum, minimum. They have to be at least like 65 years old. I just don't see a 65-year-old posting like this on Reddit. I just don't see it. My grandmother was born before 1900. She had some very outdated ideas. And my dad was not exactly a hero dad, but in this aspect, he stood up for me against his own mother. But on this, he would not allow her to try to teach me that I had to follow these ridiculous expectations. I overheard it once and it stayed with me for life. It mattered in many ways. It's really important to stand up for your girls on this. I don't think you understand how significant it is that you're failing to do this. What the hell? I mean, like, it's... All I'm going to say... <laughs> it's, just, it's just really dramatic for an old person to write this. I'm sorry. I would like to think that if I lived through the War of 1812 the American Civil War, the First World War, and the Second World War, I would probably be okay with my grandkids wearing, like, whatever they wanted because I would just be tired. But I guess not everybody's in the, in the same boat there. Anyway, no, I, obviously you're not the asshole. I mean, obviously you are the asshole for making your, your daughters wear dresses four times a week for multiple hours to see your grandparents. No scroll? No scroll for what? What did you want to see? There was a comment about the timeline. Hang on, hang on. I didn't know that. This is, this is what you wanted to read, just for the record. This is, this is why we came back for. <clears throat> My grandmother was born before 1900, which is the only time a person can be born where having those attito attitudes is remotely excusable. Every woman relative of mine that I've met in my lifetime, including the ones that were born when the Titanic was the latest thing, has worn pants. Worth it. Well worth it. Glad we went back. You got to trust the scroller, okay? Am I the asshole for taking my dog into the grocery store for no more than 10 minutes? Hey, someone in chat said NL must be off his game today. Here's a, he's had a lot of bad takes. This, I, don't, I don't know if you're familiar with the concept of variance, but like every person out there is a little different. There is a person for every single React court that has been like, this guy agrees with me on 100% of issues. And there's been a person on every React court that says, I literally disagreed with every single one of them. That's just what happens when you got a few thousand people watching, you know, eight 50-50s here. You want a take, though? Here's, here's a take for you. I think we should allow pets in grocery stores. I don't uh, care. Do you care? you care? I mean, do you care that there's a dog in the grocery store? I guess I would be a little annoyed. I want to make sure like my shopping cart's not running over like a leash or something like that. But whenever I see like a, a dog tied up to a, a no parking sign outside of the grocery store, I'm always like, I feel, I feel bad for the dog. I feel bad for the owner. Also, it's Vancouver, so you can't have shit, honestly. Allergies? I don't know. Just, you know, you could sniff it up a little bit. <laughs> they, sell, they sell reactant and claritin in the grocery store. We all got to suck it up. There's things none of us like, but we, we do it anyway to keep the fabric of society running. Little dog hair on a, on a mango or something like that. I don't know. That's why you wash it. 
I, F33, am a proud owner of Peanut, my Yorkshire Terrier. I took Peanut to the dog park today and PetSmart. In the same complex as the grocery store I go to. It was a warmer day and didn't want to leave Peanut in the car, so I leashed him up and took him in with me. I had planned on a quick trip, no more than 10 minutes. I went to the produce department to grab some stuff. A guy in his 30s, not an employee, rudely told me pets aren't allowed in grocery stores and asked why I had my dog with me. Before, before I could respond, he told me it was gross as F to have my dog in the produce section. I explained it was hot out and I planned to be quick in the store. I apologized and said the most convenient thing for me was to come in here with Peanut. He told me to F off and not to be a lazy pet owner. Then he stormed off. It was a bit of a scene. Feeling uncomfortable, I just left. I thought it'd be no big deal. Peanut didn't misbehave or have an accident, and I didn't think I was being an a-hole. I don't know. I don't think she did anything wrong. Please keep your dog away from my food. I don't know. Like, we eat, like, eight spiders every year when we're sleeping, right? I'm not worried about a little dog hair getting into my lasagna. Stop playing this bit. I genuinely... Okay, listen. I would rather not eat dog hair. That I guess that's a bit. But, like... I, if, if I went to the grocery store and there were a lot of dogs in there, I would just buy my food and then leave. But may, maybe that's a privileged take because I'm not allergic to dogs, I guess. But the only time I get annoyed by dogs is when like I'm pushing the stroller on the sidewalk and then like two strangers who both are walking their dogs meet each other going in the opposite direction and then end up like blocking the sidewalk because their dogs are going like... <laughs> That's, uh, and I just accept that because that's what dogs do. I'm not like, oh, those selfish dogs. I'm like, that's what are you going to do? You can't stop them from sniffing. I don't know. I'm just, I mean, I don't. <laughs> if I saw a little Yorkshire Terrier in the, in the grocery store, I would mind my own business. But maybe that's just me. I, w I, wouldn't, I wouldn't make it my axe to grind. YTA is someone who works in a grocery store. Don't break. Why are they throwing around the F word? Like, it's, like it doesn't mean anything. So they this word used to hold some power, and now we're just, hey, if you ever bend down to tie your shoes on an escalator, fuck you, I'm trying to get to work. Everyone, they, they, it's just they're exaggerated. It's, everything's blown so far out of proportion. Edit, I'm getting countless what about service dogs comments. Obviously, this is not about service dogs. This is about pets. OP's dog is a pet, not a service dog. A service dog isn't going to piss in an aisle. Bark at a small child, try to bite other customers or run loose throughout the store. But here's the thing. I think that you have... Don't punish the, the many dogs for the sins of a few. This is why I get annoyed that, like, every time I take the garbage down to the garbage compactor, there's, like, a thousand uh, signs. Don't leave your garbage on the floor. Don't po poke a hole in your garbage bag and let the garbage juice drip everywhere. I'm like, I know. I'm, I'm a... I'm a citizen. I'm, I'm trying to make sure that everybody's doing this. The sign is not going to stop the people who are the dogs, I guess, in this case, that are not going to abide by the rules of society to begin with. A lot of great dogs out there getting punished because, like, a, one dog might piss on the veggie straws or something like that. Is it just because I live in a city where some people might piss in the aisle in the grocery store? Is, is this why I have this take? It would be a pretty good day for me if I saw some animal shit in the grocery store. Instead of like a, a dehydrated turd the size of my forearm in the parking lot. Okay, small dogs can go into the grocery store, but big dogs can't go into the... Your dog has to be witnessed pissing or shitting before it goes into the grocery store. Is this a fair compromise? The store, okay, I'm starting to think that there's maybe good reasons that they don't allow dogs in the grocery store. I was going to say, how can you stop people from pissing in the grocery store? But, like, if I'm being honest, it's kind of like, it's not a common problem. They can hold it. They can ask for the bathroom code. I'm not saying it never happens, but it's kind of hard to convince a dog to do that, I guess. All right, fair enough. I was still, if I saw one, I, listen, I don't work at the grocery store. I wouldn't mind if there was a little bit of dog piss in the aisles. I would still just buy my food and mind my own business. But I understand if you work there, that's kind of a, it's a different story. <laughs> on the floor, is a dog piss on the floor. If it's on some food, then I would definitely pick it up and smell it and be like, oh, that's piss. And then I would put it back with the other apples and then I would grab an apple that had not been pissed on. I adore dogs. I don't want to see them in grocery stores. If it's too hot for the dog in the car, you run those errands later. Or do a drive-up pickup. 
I often schedule it so it's at the end of dog park time. COVID gave us so many options without needing to bring dogs places they aren't allowed. I think it's true. I think COVID did a lot of good for society. That's what you're trying to say, right, Bunny Love 13 Yeah, you're the asshole. No pets doesn't mean no pets until it's inconvenient to follow the rules or no pets except for a few minutes. Uh, but, like, okay, what if you made a little mini grocery store in the front of the grocery store that was like an exact replica of all the products available, but with much smaller size, like with smaller quantity. And then you just put like rubber floors there. And then, all right. I think you're right. It's probably, I would like it for the dogs if they could be allowed to go into the grocery store. And I would not mind if I saw some dogs in the grocery store, but I can now understand. I can understand why it's not allowed. But I'll be honest. I'll be taking my kid into the grocery store, putting her in the shopping cart. She probably filled her diaper like a dozen times over the course of the past two years. What are you going to do? You're going to ban babies from the grocery store? <laughs> F you. I can't stop her from shitting. If I would, I could, man. Am I the asshole for telling a girl to stop wasting food? This shit drives me crazy. Especially, did, I haven't told this story in a while, but I remember Kate and I got food at the Whole Foods cafeteria like four years ago. Kate got a burrito bowl and then she ate like half of it. And then she went to throw it in the compost and like a septuagenarian came up to her and was like, you know, you should really eat that rather than just throw it in the compost. It's like, well, yeah, you, how about you should like mind your own business? It's not her fault the restaurant served her twice as much food as she needs to eat. You, 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 you want to take it up with someone, why don't you take it up with the Whole Foods? I'm sure they throw out like 500 loaves of bread every night. You should eat it for her. Yeah, I guess I'll just get like diabetes so that this lady doesn't get sanctimonious about the fact that my wife's not eating one and a half pounds of chicken in her burrito bowl. I don't think you should ever tell a stranger that they should finish their meal. I don't even, honestly, like especially at a restaurant because they serve you too much food. I do tell my daughter to finish her meal, but that's because for dinner, I give her like what she normally eats. I'll give her like a, a slice of toast with peanut butter and then like some strawberries. And if she's like, oh, I don't really want to finish the strawberries, I'm like, come on, finish the strawberries. They're giving you like a one and a half pound burrito bowl and they're like, you know, it's a really bad habit to not finish your food. They should serve human sized portions. Or at least, can I get 80% of a burrito bowl, please? I'm not that hungry. Anyway, I hope she's doing okay. I should have hit her with a who asked. But I was raised to be polite to my elders. Unlike, unlike my prime demographic in chat. I usually sit with the same group of people in my university's dining area. There's this girl who I've talked to a few times, but I'm not really friends with. She's kind of quiet, but when she finally talks, she seems normal. I sat across from her a few times and noticed how she was eating because it was weird to me. She eats maybe half her food. Keep in mind, you control the amount of food. It's cooked by the cafeteria staff buffet style. She could easily take less and kind of plays with it with her fork when she's done, a.k.a. eating half of it, but sometimes less. I didn't say anything for a while, but a few weeks ago I had to ask her why she always only ate half her food. She seemed a bit embarrassed, but then she said she thought she was more hungry and laughed it off. I then asked her why she made this mistake every time we ate and that she must have learned by now. She didn't really answer and left pretty quickly. She doesn't really show up that much anymore, but when she does, she still eats like this and I couldn't hold it in anymore. I asked her once again and also asked her if her parents never told her not to play with her food. It was a genuine question. Some people are raised in households where manners are not important. But obviously they are for most people. She got really mad and told me to stop commenting on her eating habits. That was none of her business. I told her it absolutely was since she's sitting at our table and obviously wasting food. She told me to go frick myself and left and threw out the rest of her food again. After she left, one of my friends told me to leave her alone as it seemed like she's having a hard time. And maybe I had some, or maybe had some sort of issue with food. Yeah, obviously she has an issue with food. She keeps wasting it. She hasn't shown up again. I'm assuming she buys her own food now, which might teach her not to waste it. So that's good. The same friend who told me to leave her alone keeps pestering me to apologize to her. But I think she should apologize to me. She's unnecessarily rude when... I gotta take a different tone here. She's unnecessarily rude when being asked the most basic and obvious questions and also told me to go frick myself. That's way more harsh than anything I've ever told her. Keep in mind that I care a lot about food waste and the environment. Am I the asshole? 
Okay, I'm the asshole. Sorry, I'm not studying to be an eating disorder specialist. I looked up stuff about her and I'm realizing I was too harsh. I'll apologize next time I see her and try not to be so condescending. But also, in the same breath, you guys should follow your own advice. If people genuinely don't know something, you should tell them nicely instead. And I realize I should have tried to educate her nicely and not have commented at all about how she was eating. Yes, I was mean to her and should have been nice, but you should have been nicer when telling me not to be mean, you hypocrites. Yeah, I mean, this is just mind your own business. I'm not going to insinuate that, like, the person has an eating disorder. She might, but, like, it's, what do I know? Maybe she just is like, ooh, that looks good, that looks good, that looks good, and then she eats a little bit, and she's like, I'm full. Maybe you should mind your own business and realize that, you know, wasting food deliberately is, like, it's not a good habit, but at the same time, we got bigger problems, and you should mind your own business, you psycho. Minus two? What are you talking about minus two? Nobody on earth should waste food. When you buy a family-sized bag of Doritos, it's a net societal good to eat the whole bag of Doritos and not, even though it's probably contributing to ill health, that's not the same. What do you mean it's not the same? This is a 70-year-old lady at Whole Foods. I eat a whole burrito bowl. It's probably 1,100 calories or something. 70-year-old lady is like, you should really uh, eat that burrito bowl. Kate doesn't want to eat the burrito bowl. She's full. What am I supposed to do? Eat an extra 550 calories I don't need just so she can go home? You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to be like, okay, I'll take it home. I'm going to take that shit home. I'm going to throw it in our compost instead of the compost at the grocery store. I'm not going to eat more than I need to eat just to make a stranger feel good about themselves i love having leftovers too i ate my whole burrito bowl her quarrel was not with me my quarrel is with her you should just mind your own business me on the highway roll down your window hey i saw you driving 71 kilometers an hour did you know that statistically speaking the most fuel efficient speed that you could possibly drive is actually around 63 i really care about the environment unlike some people you could actually be saving milliliters of, of gasoline every single year which i mean i know it's not a lot but it adds up okay thank you you're coming at the wrong you're blaming the wrong people for the right problems especially with gas prices these days <clears throat> have you ever tried Costco poutine? You son of a bitch, I'm back. I have tried Costco poutine. It's very good. Am I the asshole for telling my girlfriend to go and ask to be adopted by the couple she's so obsessed with? Huh? <laughs> how old is your girlfriend? Info, how old is your girlfriend? Is she six? And like living in foster care? My girlfriend Katie made a new friend a few months ago. Mary, <laughs> Mary, Mary, Katie talked about her a lot. Mary said this, did that, started teaching her something, etc. I thought it was a bit weird how much Katie seemed to look up to Mary, but I didn't think much of it until Mary's husband, Joe, entered the picture too. From then on, Katie said, Katie talked about their relationship all the time, how they do things, how they divide the chores, how respectful they are to each other. <laughs> oh, red flag. Basically how they are just the best couple ever. I've met them, and they honestly seem like nothing special, maybe even a bit on the boring side. Yesterday evening, Katie was once again going on about them, saying things like, Mary and Joe are true soulmates. Theirs is the healthiest relationship she'd ever seen, blah, blah, blah. I had a really fucking long day at work, so I told her, I don't want to hear about them. I don't care about her creepy crush on this random-ass couple. If she likes them so much, she should go and ask them to adopt her or ask if she can be their third. Katie then gave me the cold shoulder and left to go home to her apartment instead of sleeping at my place like she was supposed to. I need to know if I'm right and her obsession is creepy or if I'm, if I'm not seeing something right and I'm the asshole here. Update. She finally texted me back. She wrote a long-ass message. Chicks, dude. She wrote a long-ass message saying, saying she tried everything with me and she thought if she was patient and clear about her needs, I'd eventually change for her. But she realized, thanks to Mary and Joe, it's not her job to raise a man and get her boyfriend to respect her. She wrote a lot of other things about Mary, too, like she's truly proud of her husband and looks up to him. Meanwhile, Katie can't find it in herself to look up to me and anything and so on. So, yeah, I hope you're happy. You got what you wanted. This is bait. Fair enough. I hate that there's never, like, a, a top post that's like, this is made up. Am I the asshole for refusing to punish my son for calling his classmates food weird? 
mods don't allow it? Ah, it's an inside job. IF32 got a private text this morning from the mother of my son's classmate. She told me apparently my son has been calling her daughter's traditional lunch weird and things as such and apparently that is making her daughter feel uncomfortable and insecure. She asked me to please talk to my son about being more sensitive so her daughter doesn't feel excluded. Okay, seems normal. Now I feel for this woman as a fellow mother. No one wants to see their child feeling, feeling sad. But in my son's defense, the lunch was a little goofy. Overcoming insecurities is a big part of growing up. Me, me when my child is bullying another child. Have you ever considered that uh, overcoming your insecurities is a big part of growing up? Additionally, I thought it was ridiculous of her to criticize my son as a seven-year-old for making relatively innocuous and curious, albeit culturally insensitive, comments about food that is not familiar to him. He's at a curious age, and he's discovering how it feels to make someone else feel bad with personal attacks. I refuse to try and limit him and shut him down for not having the emotional sensitivity of an adult. Politely, I told the mother I was sorry her daughter was struggling with insecurities. I found some online parenting articles about building your child's confidence to send to her so she could use some tips to help her daughter out. She replied and said I was acting completely shamelessly and disgracefully, and I am not able to text her anymore. Am I the asshole? Yeah. Probably bait again, if I had to guess, but yeah, that's, that's really bad. You should never send anyone an article. I was, even if you're friends with someone, do not, never send me a link to an article. If you want to introduce a, a, something from an article... Do not send me the link. Just write, hey, did you see relevant information? Even if it's made up, I'm never going to check the source. I'm not clicking on your, your link. I'm sorry. Also, food being weird. I mean, like this is it's in danger of being like too... I'm fishing for base. But I, I go back to the Tokyo Drift comment that, that Lil Bow Wow said. It's all based on your frame of reference. Lil Bow Wow says Japanese food is like the U.S. military. Don't ask, don't tell. Literally, like the classic example of Japanese food is like rice and vegetables and maybe like some soup and like a fillet of fish that looks like a fish. It doesn't, it hasn't been like processed and turned into like a perfect rectangle that's breaded with like breadcrumbs, right? It's just like a is literally just the, the, the food looks like what it is. So I like, I, I like processed food. I'll eat some garbage. I'll eat some frozen food you could just chuck in the air fryer. I'll eat a frozen pizza now and then and stuff like that. But like North American food is kind of fucking weird. Like it's way weirder to eat a... a piece of fried fish from the frozen food section than it is to eat like a, a mackerel or something like that that looks like a fish. How is it weirder to eat the thing as it is, which is food, than to like, oh, we put a 10,000 tilapia into a big vat and then like process them. We like mill them up and chunk them up and then extrude them into perfect rectangles and then like have an industrial egg wash, spray them with egg yolk, and then the bread crumb. You get the idea. It's not weird. Now, that being said, is there some weird... <laughs> are there some weird Japanese, Korean foods? I'm sure there's weird foods in, in every culture. I can't really get down with the, with the natto in Japan, but I don't think that the kid was bringing natto. I mean, they might have been bringing natto to school, but... And the, the the weirdest food for me in Korea is the, not to, again, just pander to my audience, but it's the stuff that has the American influence from like the 1950s when the soldiers came over for the, the Korean War. Like 95% of Korean soups, I'm like, this is delicious. And then like 5% of them, they're like, this has American cheese, Spam, Vienna sausages, and ketchup in it. And I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Here's what you do, okay? You start... You get a beautiful fish stock, okay? You boil it. You put in a blend of locally grown herbs and spices. You add a, a beautiful pork backbone with all the meat in between the spinal joints and then the pièce de résistance. Three cans of Heinz baked beans in sauce and you just pour that right over the top. No thank you. 
Am I the asshole for telling my nephew the truth that nobody in the family likes him? This involves me, my sister Diana, and her son Darius, 10 male. <laughs> <laughs> oh man this one is super heavy by the way really how could this be super heavy i dumped my boyfriend for leaving my closet door open for context i've lived in my apartment for about four years the mutual friend stayed in the beginning now listen i'm not trying to create family drama here and this is so much not related to the actual content of the post we need to have a revolution in the education system to teach people how to tell stories. This story may be interesting, but you have to get me there because you're not, I was going to say you're not paying me to, to listen to you. Like if this was a therapist, then sure, you add all the context and stuff like that, but you got to hook me early. This, it reminds me of like my, my wife was talking to my niece when we were away on vacation and she was trying to explain, she was trying to ask my niece uh, the details of a vacation that she took with her sister. And the first thing that my 11-year-old niece said was, well, two months ago, my cousin was staying with us, and I was just like, what are we doing with the, the English teachers in this country? We're from two different countries, but, you know, we share a lot of culture at least. It, it's a simple question where I want relevant details, and then you're giving me Peter Jackson's The Hobbit first. Like, you got three movies that are leading up to the actual stuff that I want to see. And there's a good, you know, it's nice to build a moment. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know who any of these people are. I've lived in my apartment for four years. The mutual friend stayed in the beginning, but they moved three years ago. So since then, I've been living on my own. I was originally going to have my boyfriend move in with me once my lease ended, but of course, change of plans. Okay, okay. So my ex posted on, am I the asshole for leaving my closet door open? Yet he missed very important details. One question that kept appearing was why didn't I close the door even though I never leave it open? Ever since I was little, I've trained my brain to always make sure the closet door was closed. All, okay, when I was six, I was sharing a room with my older sister. One night she went over her, to her friend's house for a sleepover. My parents and I got home a little bit late. I kept hearing a noise from somewhere but wasn't sure where and just assumed it was the AC. I laid on my back just staring at the roof and heard my closet door being opened. My bed was faced towards my closet, so when I moved my head down, I could see this old man coming out of it. I screamed, and my parents came running in. My dad grabbed me, and I saw my mom hitting that man with one of her favorite pans. We called the police and later found out the man was homeless, must have snuck in while we were away, and hid in my closet when he heard my parents' car come in. This is crazy. Like, I'm... <laughs> They're never beating the... Po this post is fake allegations on reddit why why her favorite pan since then i've suffered from ptsd in fear of someone coming in my closet again i mean i think that if this story is real that makes perfect sense <laughs> that's that seems pretty fair that was until my current therapist she suggested i could use something by a nightlight and place it by the closet. And then I asked if I use something else, like something that could stick onto the walls. It was first these big glow in the dark dino stickers. I felt kind of silly about it first when I did put it up. But when I had my sleep paralysis, I was still scared. But now I was able to tell what was sleep and what wasn't. And it gave me a sense of comfort. I changed the themes occasionally to dinos, planets, and now stars. For the past seven years, it's worked for me. Moving on. I'm sorry. I'm because you know what I'm trying to not say is that this sounds like the person writing this is eight years old. I'm not I'm not suggesting like that this is fake necessarily. I'm, and people are saying like, no, this is a real thing that you do for sleep paralysis. I'm not touching that issue at all because I don't have any expertise on that issue. I'm just saying I don't think that the average like person in their 20s would add the detail of like, I used glow in the dark stickers and then I changed them from dinosaurs to planets and now stars. Like that most people would know that that is a, an element that is not really relevant to the, the story at hand. Like there's the, the, this post could have been a meeting, which could have been an email, which could have been a text, which could have been an emoji, maybe skull emoji, closed door skull emoji. 
I moved out of my parents' home at 20 to live in an apartment with a friend who I met in college. I only went for two years. It, no, it doesn't matter. It's a Reddit post, not an English assignment. Yeah, but it's like, this is not how people talk to each other. Now to me, X. We pretty much clicked when we met, had similar hobbies, liked exploring new foods. It was fun. I also told him about my trauma, asked that I didn't mind it open during the day. But at night, it needs to be closed no matter what. He could still put or take something out of it, but close it back up. He complied throughout the entirety of our relationship. It wasn't until a few months ago where he started to act very controlling. He would say small comments about certain foods I would eat, like how it's affecting my liver or something, and recommended other things. It started getting to the point where he suggested I quit my job at one point when he finished college and moved in, but I told him it'd be beneficial for both of us to be working. He never asked again. However, he did start asking things like if I could cook for him, even though I said I was tired from work, would I stop working if he made enough money for the both of us if I still wanted kids? I think he wanted to ask me to become a stay-at-home wife mother, but I could be overanalyzing. What happened to the closet door, man? This is the top post of the month? I don't know what to say. I'm a little lost because I feel like I'm inundated with details. Your boyfriend left your closet door. The, the only relevant detail here is that um, your PTSD related to your closet, which is that seems completely fair. I don't care about the dinosaur stickers, glow in the dark, nightlight, planets, stars. Your boyfriend wants you to become a stay at home mother, even though you don't have kids. You went to college, but only for two years. Um, he wants you to eat foods that are good for your liver instead of bad for your liver like this has nothing to do with anything am are you the asshole is this is, is there a question involved in this post is, is she the asshole i don't know if anybody's the asshole i feel like your boyfriend made a mistake and didn't close the door and honestly without being rude like your story is too insane for me to possibly give a verdict on your behavior i can't add anything more to the post so i'm answering some questions people keep asking why did he keep, why is this shit written in like a creepy font? Why did he keep going in the closet? I feel like people are assuming he would go in every hour, but no, he would come in just to get his textbook if he was studying an exam. And it was like once every few weeks and I'd still be awake watching a movie on my phone. Why didn't I close the door? I do, I always do. Right before I go to bed, first thing I do is close the closet. It's like if you turn off the lights, you who turned, this is like without, <laughs> I'm not trying to make light of this person's trauma, okay? These are the things that you concern yourself with when you're like eight years old. The, the PTSD associated with the closet is a different issue. But like if you're getting into an argument with your boyfriend about like you turn the light on. So you should be the person who turned the light switch off is is insanity. This like little kid social dilemmas like this is it's just too much, man. Why am I going to get up from bed to close the closet if he's the one who left it open, especially if I'm dealing with sleep paralysis? What was his alternatives? He commented on how the closet squeaks. I told him I did find it annoying at first when I moved here, but our friend said it would be a good way to hear, to hear if someone was moving it. So this is why I was... It's squeaky. The door is squeaky. I don't want to close it because the door is squeaky. He wanted to remove the door or put a lock on it. I told him I did want locks, but my landlord wouldn't allow any changes to any of the doorknobs. Are we still together? No. Are his friends and family on his side? No. Turns out his just told him I got angry about him leaving the door opens once. What are you talking about? She's responding to questions. My take as a, as a streamer, so we're not in the same boat because I don't have the same kind of PTSD. But I get asked questions like all the time. It's up to you as the person with agency in the situation, as the, as the quote-unquote OP, in order to choose which questions need to be responded to. Like sometimes I'll be in the middle of a rant and someone, for example, you see it right there, there's some self-awareness, someone typed, when is Isaac coming back? I don't need to surface that into the narrative right now. Just because somebody asks you a question doesn't mean the response is warranted. You know, it, if I was playing Spelunky and someone said, when, when, Isaac's, when is Isaac coming back? Then there's some relevancy there, especially because it's a one word answer. Tomorrow. Hang on, librarian, can I get a, you know what I'm asking for here, right? I read the title and I clicked instantly because, ooh, girl, I want to read your update because he's definitely the arsehole. It does sound like he's, I mean, he made a mistake, but I, why are they, I mean, they're, they're dragging the dude like so much. 
I think I'm, I'm just, I'm still, I only have a single toe in the culture of two hot takes right now, okay? So I'm just, on regular Am I the Asshole, the top post would be like, you sound crazy and your boyfriend didn't do anything wrong. Uh, he should delete Reddit, get a lawyer, go to the gym, et cetera, et cetera. This, right now, just from post one, this seems like it might be an inverted version of that. Telling you he thought that you were lying about your trauma for attention from him, that's gross, that guy is icky. Notice, I'm adding it to my how not to give my wife the ick post, or uh, my, my notes app. Don't gaslight her into thinking she's pretending to have trauma for attention. That'll be under, it'll be item number 935. One item above it is leaving my seatbelt buckled on the airplane after the sign turns off that allows you to take your seatbelt off. One above that is uh, slipping on my shoes instead of untying the laces and then putting my feet into the shoes and then tying them back up. Right above that is um, drinking a soda by turning the aluminum tab so that the holes line up and then you can put the straw into that and then sipping on the Diet Coke like this, like Cindy Crawford in a, in a commercial. There's a few. Bringing my own cheese slice to a restaurant. <laughs> Keep cooking, he's on a roll. So much for you speaking out about not being broke up. Ha ha ha, she left you. How you feel? She dodged a massive bullet with this one for being insensitive about her own trauma. Holy cow, they're, they're snitch posting the guy who got dragged. This is crazy, man. I'm not sure who I should be on this subreddit. This is crazy. My boyfriend had to clean my poop. This was, was so fucking long, bro. This was about four years ago now, but was and still is hands down the single most embarrassing moment of my life. Back in 2019, I was training horses and was at a 12-week international competition for show jumping. For the first time in my career, I had a string of horses to show for clients, which in this field is a pretty big step. I'll be honest, I didn't have the sort of childhood that allows me to understand what's happening here. I did, there were, there were some horse-related individuals in my high school for sure, but I, I don't really understand, I don't even know what dressage is. Dressage is like a, a dog show mixed with a dog agility course, is that correct? It's just fancy walking horses. It's when the horses crip walk. I don't know. I didn't have the kind of childhood that allows me to understand what that is either. <laughs> to be honest, I need you to put it in rural Ontario terminology. One morning I was inspecting a horse's leg who had accidentally cut himself. While I was hunched over inspecting the wound, someone walked by and shook a tarp, which scared the ever living crap out of me. In his panic, he bolted forward and kicked out, catching me in the side and sending me flying. All right. <laughs> Punk Cake Raptor, thank you for the gifted subscriptions, by the way. Thank you. The people love React Court, don't they? Don't they, folks? React Court, Ripley, Chibley, Ripley, believe it or not, Ripley's here. Ridley, Olivia Munn. I did everything right, and they said I was the asshole. They indicted me. I quickly got up and ran away to avoid being stomped on, but it was then I realized I couldn't stand up straight. I tried to walk it off, but the pain only got worse, and eventually I couldn't sit or stand anymore, so I laid down in the dirt and discovered I couldn't get back up. I ended up taking an ambulance to the nearest hospital and learned the kick from the horse fractured two of my vertebrae, severely bruised my kidney, and tore many tendons and muscles in the area. Not the asshole! I spent eight days in the hospital as I was a fall risk and couldn't walk or really even move for that matter. The pain was so severe, my team of doctors had me on numerous medications. One was a notorious painkiller, Oxy. While the Oxy helped the immobilizing pain, it also made me extremely constipated. I wasn't able to pass a bowel movement until my final day in the hospital after pounding prune juice, milk of magnesia, and loads of laxatives. Nonetheless, after eight days, I was able to pass the most horrific bowel movement of my life, and they sent me home. I went back to my apartment. My boyfriend... Oh, I went back to the apartment my boyfriend of one year and I lived in as we didn't have the funds for rehab. We also did not have the funds for an in-home nurse to help me, so my paramedic student boyfriend graciously stepped up and became my full-time caretaker. He kept track of my medications, assisted me when I needed to get up, rotated my heating pad and ice packs, you name it. This sweet soul had it taken care of. Okay, where does it all go wrong? <laughs> did he not close the closet door? Is that too soon? Fast forward to day seven of me being home, and again, I had not passed another bowel movement. I was weaning off the pain meds at this point because I couldn't handle the constipation anymore. 
Around 9 p.m. that evening, I felt things shifting in my gut and told my boyfriend I needed to go to the bathroom. He carefully got me out of bed and up with my walker so I could make our way to the bathroom. Once I was situated on the toilet, he let me be. After 20 to 30 minutes of struggling, I called him back and said, it's not going to happen. My boyfriend lifted me on. By the way, can I say this story is long, but everything has been relevant so far. Thank you to the original poster here. In this case, there's not that much fat to cut. Everything so far has, has pushed the story along. He saw me turning white and sat me back down on the toilet. Now that I was sitting again, I started regaining consciousness and felt the monstrous bowel movement and voluntarily start exiting my colon with a scary amount of force. In that moment, I was so relieved. I looked at my boyfriend who was still holding me up and said, it's happening, I'm finally shitting, go, 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 and I attempted to shoo him away. All, as those words left my mouth, I saw my boyfriend's face drop and I noticed the god-awful liquid shit that had been brewing in my gut for the past seven days was in fact pooling around my bottom. That's when I realized when I had begun passing out, my boyfriend shut the toilet lid. Now I'm sitting here on a closed toilet with what seemed like gallons of liquid shit flying out of my ass all over myself, the toilet, the walls and the floor, while my poor boyfriend stood there petrified. I instantly started crying. I kept trying to make my boyfriend leave while still shitting and sobbing. You closed the lid? No, why did you close the lid? I'm so sorry, you don't wanna see this, get out. When all was said and done, I was sitting there desperately clenching the handles on my granny walker, sobbing covered with nothing but a shirt and my own seven day old diarrhea. <laughs> the first thoughts running through my head were, he's gonna leave me, this is the most disgusting thing ever. He's never gonna be able to look at me ever again. Between my sobs, my trooper of a boyfriend said, it's okay, I closed the lid because I wanted you to have a stable seat when you started passing out. In hindsight, I knew you came in here to poop, so it probably wasn't the best move. Let's get you in the shower and I'll take care of this. Nobody's the asshole. This is just a nice, I'm just, it's story time. He carefully moved me into my shower chair while I was still bawling and apologizing and started the water for me so I could begin cleaning up the horrific mess. Meanwhile, I watched this saint of a man calmly clean up the crime scene without so much as a single dry heave. After that, he got into the shower with me since I could barely move on my own. Okay, and now they're, they've been together five years. We got married, bought our house, three wonderful pets, etc., etc. I mean, I'm glad the story ended like this. This is nice. Because I feel like we've had Am I the Assholes before where like, here's the thing, and people are going to take this in the worst way possible, but I, it's just life, man. Remember there was a Am I the Asshole post where it was like my boyfriend got mad at me because I peed on the floor by accident when I was pregnant? And then like half of the people were like, your boyfriend's crazy. You got like a eight pound weight resting on your bladder and you like, it happens. And then half of the people were like, well, if you're the one who pissed, you better fucking clean it up because I'm not cleaning up anybody's piss, okay? That means you own me. If I'm cleaning up your piss, that elevates you above me in the relationship, and that's not okay, because I'm the man. But like, if you are in a relationship with someone for long enough, you're probably gonna end up, I mean, you're probably not gonna end up cleaning up an entire week's worth of diarrhea, but like, you'll end up cleaning up some bodily fluids at some point. People get sick, they throw up, they, you know, my wife's never like pissed on the ground or anything like that, but the same thing, you're going to have to help them through C-section recovery or like any kind of surgical recovery and stuff like that. People, it just happens, man. Couples that go through the really bad shit usually stay together the longest. Please receive this upvote and vacate the city limits immediately. Careful telling her to vacate, vacate the shitty limits. This reply is not getting the attention it deserves. I cackled. I fucking hate Reddit, dude. <laughs> I fucking hate this shit. This post could be like, my whole family died in a car explosion. The top comment is always like, wow, this blew up. People are like, you're so going to hell for this incredible joke. I once literally shit our bed. I woke up feeling something wet and thought the cats puked in the bed. I woke up my girlfriend and in a daze put her in the shower as I changed the sheets. As I went to shower myself, I realized it came from me. I was right. I right there had a choice. Blame the cats for the rest of my life or come clean. I decided I couldn't live a lie. So I told her that's not cat puke. She responds half awake and says, oh no, is the dog sick? That's, now that's actually a good joke. That's a funny one. I said, no, it was me. We laughed and went to bed on clean bed sheets. 
Like Garth says in Wayne's World, if you blow chunks and she comes back, she's yours. But if you spew and she bolts, then it was never meant to be. So true. Well, that's just a nice, real story there. That was a good palate cleanser. This one's crazy. Just in the title. Holy cow, it's a short one. <laughs> My boyfriend, 21M, said I need to learn a lesson for not listening to him. Excuse me, Tomo, you, you can't just be in the chords, okay? I met my boyfriend, Liam, five years ago during an after-school project. We became really close friends and started dating one year ago because he told me he's had feelings for me for a long time and wanted... Okay, so you're in high school. That's fine. Like, you're... I don't want to read this. You're just a little kid. I get you're 19, but, like, this is not... These aren't... I know that, that like, they're not in high school now, but, like, 19, they're basically in high school. They might be in, like, their second semester of college they're in high school i'm sorry to tell you okay just like they're not enrolled in a high school but the stage of their life is still high school okay i'm not saying they don't have real problems i'm just saying this is probably not a real problem when viewing it through an adult lens okay a few months ago he told me he gets really uncomfortable with me skateboarding you see what i'm saying here this is not something that happens to couples in their 30s, and it's not just because if we fell down on a skateboard, we'd probably suffer a more grievous injury than, you know, these little kids who are still elastic, essentially. He wants me to stop skateboarding because he was afraid I would get hurt. Skateboarding has been one of my hobbies that my big brother got me into since I was a little girl, and there was nothing that would deter me from doing it. It's one of those things in life that makes me happy and exhilarated. Earlier this week, I broke my leg and got a grade three concussion while attempting a new trick on the skateboarding ramp. Well, well, well. <laughs> Ooh. I'm still in the hospital. My boyfriend has refused to come visit me. He said he's warned me and I need to learn my lesson for not listening to him. So next time I will obey him because he's always right. My best friend and my family have all visited me and my mother and big brother have stayed in the hospital with me most of the time. And I get it. I didn't heed his warning, but he could have at least come and seen me and ask how I'm doing. Shouldn't he still care? Obviously, he's insane, but he is also 21. I'm not saying like you should forgive him. I'm just saying like, you know, this is what happens when you date a 21 year old boy. Now, you're a 19 year old girl, so I get it. But at the same time, like, no, you're. He's obviously the asshole. 21 is young. Get out of here. It's, I was going to say it's too old to be doing stuff like this. But you're probably, if you're 21 right now and you're like, I'm smarter than this guy, that's probably true. But you're probably doing some fucked up stuff that you don't even know about. Your ass probably letting like eight plastic containers of spinach turn into green juice in your refrigerator like every week. And then you're like throwing them out. And then when you go to the grocery store the next time, you're like, oh, I need spinach because I had to throw out the spinach. And then just like rinse and repeat. You'll probably do that shit for like six more years. It's crazy. It's just irrational behavior. I, do, I have a rational behavior as a 34-year-old as well, but it's not this. Like, that's crazy. Go to hell, you asshole. <laughs> I'm not saying if you're 21, you're stupid, okay? I'm just saying you will look back on yourself in 10 years and be like, holy fuck, I was stupid. You might be the smartest 21-year-old you know. I was stupid when I was 21 too. You just think your brain... I know it's insulting to be like your brain's not fully developed, but you should take advantage of that because like, if you tried pulling this shit when you were like 40, someone would shoot and kill you. If you do that at 21... You know, you got a few more years, you can still get away with it without it being an indictment of your character. What's the irrational behavior here? Him telling her that, him refusing to visit his girlfriend in the hospital because he told her that she would get hurt. Even if, the, take it from a 34 year old, okay? If I told my wife not to do something because she might get hurt and then she did it and she got hurt, I would be the first person to go to the hospital and I would say, oh my God, are you okay? And then she would talk. And then I would be like, well, well, well. <laughs> you got to do the first part. You got to be sympathetic because this is the person that you're supposedly in love with. I'm in love with my wife. These two are 19 and 21. Who knows what's going on there, right? 
that she might be like, my boyfriend's an asshole. I can't believe I'm going to spend the rest of my life with him. You know, I, I, I don't know how you think at that age. It's been a long time since I've been there. It's irrational. I know that much. I mean, if you're in your 30s and you're like, I told you not to do, I, like your spouse, you're like, I told you not to do something. And then they do it and they're in the hospital and you're like petty enough to not visit them because of that. Like, you're just stupid. I'm cutting this kid some slack. If they were 45 years old, we'd say, throw, throw him out with the trash or whatever they say on Twitter. Whenever a man, I don't know, roots for the Washington Wizards. Anyway. <laughs> red flag, red flag, red flag. He's showing his true colors here. Listen to them. I also participate in the dangerous sport, horse jumping. Never has he asked me to stop doing what I love. Heck, he dropped everything and took me to get x-rays when I hurt my ankle so bad I couldn't walk. Then helped me around the house as much as possible. This sounds familiar. Is this the same person? This girl definitely poops. I'm shitting. I'm shitting. Should I just give up and divorce my husband? Yes. What the? You don't even know. Her husband could be the same guy who cleaned up that diarrhea earlier. Look at your biases, okay? I, 31F, and husband, 31M, have been together for eight years, married for seven. We got married fairly quickly due to him rejoining the military in the middle of our relationship and long distance not working for us. As a Canadian, is this not a life hack, right? It's like if your husband's in the military, don't you get married like right away because it, they give you a bigger house or something like that? I read that online, which means it could be completely made up. Yes, that's basic. And you get paid more money. For some reason. <laughs> when if you're married, you can live off base too. Holy cow. Unethical life pro tip. He never pretended to be anything other than who he is today. That's a bad start. So that is bad. He's a big gamer. And I don't... Okay, listen. I was watching... I was watching this show on Netflix because I ran out of episodes of Love on the Spectrum. So I said, let's see what else is in the same vein here. And there's a show from South Africa called Save My Marriage. And it's like couples that are on the verge of divorce and they talk to like a marriage counselor. I was losing my mind because there's this couple that like they're engaged, but they, they're not married yet. And they were like, how much time do you spend together? And they said, almost none. And uh, the therapist said, well, what is your husband doing on weekends when he's not spending time with you? I swear to you, dude said... Um, watching anime, which is fine, but at some point you got to spend some time with your spouse. And then she said, okay, watching anime and what else? He said, I'm also a big gamer. And then he waited like 30 seconds and he said, also there's the gym. But then the therapist assigned them homework to spend time together. They chose to uh, write poems for each other and they turned it into a competition. They said, if you, if you write the best poem, I'll be uh, your slave for a day. I'll do whatever you want. The winner takes all. OK, I swear to you, the woman wrote her poem and it, it started. Roses are red. Violets are blue. Um, I know you love me. I also love you. You're my dude. You're my guy. You're my ride and my die. Roses are red, <laughs> violets are blue, sugar is sweet, but not sweet as you. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm not a writer, but for you, I'm a fighter, your main writer. If love me... <laughs> Wait, this part gets me. Ooh, if loving you is a sin, and I'm ready to win. All sounds very cliched, but trust that for you, I prayed. I love you, baby, because you're definitely my baby. Booyah. <laughs> huh. I don't even think I have to read mine anymore. Like, you actually won. Really? Yes, you did. And then he was like, wow, that was really good. I think you won. And she said, no way, read yours. And his was like, like a Maya Angelou, he was like... Cold like the kiss of winter, you found me. Warmth lean deep within a lover's hold. Epic stories told, and the naive naivety of the youth sold. And yet boldly you reached into the pitted abyss, not only to see, but to hold. 
hold not only me, but we in eternity. It is our story, an epic tale, a dream too surreal, and yet in my hand it lives. And, forever, and forevermore shall it be that you, Viv, from the cold grasp of lonely winter, have set me free. Um, mm -hmm. I think you won. No. That was so deep. Your one was like... No, mine was playful. Your one actually started with roses are red. Yes. I literally thought you were joking. No, I wasn't. I literally remember that. And I even wrote the just kidding part. <laughs> Holy crap, you actually did. Down, down, down. Deeper into the blue ocean of your love. Your retention helps me surface. I fill my lungs with the breath of your affection. And I was like, dude, he's blowing her out. This is a hydrogen bomb versus coughing baby. And then she was like, oh my God, that was beautiful. And he's like, honestly, I still think you won. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh man, this is good stuff. He, he cooked her, man. What's the show called? I think it's called Save My Marriage. It was so good, man. Oh, anyway. He's a big gamer, and I don't have an issue with having a healthy hobby, but he plays for hours every single night in lieu of spending time with me. Clutch, clutch SAT word, by the way. He refuses to find a hobby we can share together. I tried gaming and it just isn't for me. There's a couple games I'll play with him from time to time, but I'm just not crazy about it personally. Here's the thing. This is, and it's not, it's no problem. Like, it's not like she made a, a, an error of, like, morals or ethics here. I feel like guys who are gamers don't want to play, like, a casual game with their spouse most of the time. They want to get the acetylcholine running in, like, ranked Warzone or Valorant or something like that. They don't want to boot up... Uh, Pikmin 4 and like just pass the controller back and forth. They want to be Aah! like it's a different kind of rush that you get, right? I'm getting minus. Two. I think that's there's some truth to that. I'm now I'm saying some people would rather play like you know it takes two with their spouse or something like that, and some people would rather mainline like ranked League of Legends. But if my girlfriend wants me to play Valorant and go ah, you ever shoot your Reaper in the air and go ah? I put some way, uh, I'm just not crazy about gaming personally. He's not romantic. He never buys me gifts on holidays, including my birthday or Christmas. We've been married for eight years. Like, you gotta, never? That's pretty bad. That's all. <laughs> That's like a decade of no gifts on the, the two minimum days that you should be at least doing something. I put so much thought into his gifts and I spoil him every year, but he just can't be bothered for me. It's been a lonely eight years. I don't feel seen. I don't feel loved. I just feel so alone. Worst part is he is happy. I give him everything. I let him do what he wants. I stopped complaining. So he's all good. He wouldn't change a thing according to him. So last night he sits down at his computer. I ask, hey baby, tomorrow night, can we dedicate to just us and spend some time together? He takes this as an attack and goes on the defensive. He sighs and stands up and says, I guess I won't play tonight. And I insisted that he play and I don't have a problem with it that I was asking about tomorrow night. He plops into the chair next to me and starts pouting and giving me attitude. Anything I would say, he'd snap at me. So I said, baby, please go play. And he yells back, I don't feel like it now. It's like he wanted to punish me by not playing. He wanted to make sure spending time with him was miserable for the both of us. I can't tell you how many times I tried to reason with him and explain that I was talking about not gaming tomorrow night and that he could play tonight. He wasn't having it, so I had to remove myself and I laid down to go to bed. He came in a short while later and I forgot I had my makeup on. So I got up to get ready for bed. When I come out of the bathroom, he goes, Baby, can I ask you something? I said, yes. He asked, did you know you were going to piss me off by asking me that? <laughs> oh, man, it's so good. I was blown away. All I could say was, wow. He asked, did you? I said, no, in fact, I did not think that by asking you to spend time with me, it would piss you off. He said, I'm not supposed to be angry by what you did. What I did, he says this as if I kicked a puppy or something. What I did, after he said that, I lost it and said, I don't think we should be together anymore. And I locked myself in the bathroom and sat, sat there for a good 30 minutes remaining calm. After that, I got into bed and we didn't speak, but we also couldn't sleep either. 
We haven't really talked today, but he did kiss me on the head once earlier and said he loved me. But we didn't spend any time together tonight like I initially requested. So I didn't get what I wanted tonight or last night. I don't know if I want to keep doing this anymore. <laughs> that, seems, that seems extremely fair. Um, actually, that seems unfair. You should know if you don't want to do this anymore because that just seems like unpleasant, honestly. Uh, there is, there's an info request, though. I do need to know what game he's playing. I'm not saying I would understand it, if it was like Call of Duty, but it would be like really, really funny if it was like Europa Universalis 4 or something like that. It's the Binding of Isaac. I hate this fucking shit. I know you love him, but it's time to love yourself more. It needed saying twice. That's what the awful button is for. Idiot, you didn't do anything. You know what? You know how in every Disney movie, there's like the bad guy, and then there's the the sniveling underling that's like, "Yeah, boss, get him." This is minion behavior, man. You need to have more self respect than to make posts like this. One hundred percent of Reddit is like this. I I know. <laughs> this is part of the reason I like it, I guess. Am I the asshole for demanding my husband get rid of our bidet? <laughs> I, 29F, have been completely traumatized by my husband and our new toilet bidet. A couple months ago, my husband installed a bidet in our master bathroom, and I initially didn't think much about it. I know they're a lot more common now, but I'm actually using it, and I actually enjoy using it myself. That is until one day, I walked into our ensuite and heard moans, running water, and clapping sounds coming from the water closet while my husband was in there. I barged in and caught him full on master full on masturbating. <laughs> it this was not pinkies up. This was a clenched fist with the bidet running on his nether regions. I've been accused by chat of being a prude before. Am I crazy to think that this just doesn't feel like it would do much for me? Like, if someone is, like, squirting your... Well, I don't know what nether regions means here. Because, like, honestly, I think if a bidet was shooting at my testicles, that wouldn't even register, really. Like, that would almost be, like, a neutral feeling. But if the bidet was shooting at the aperture, I think there would definitely be a sensation. What I'm imagining in my head is not a sensation that pairs well with arousal, but I recognize that everybody's different. It's just, this is, to be honest with you, is something I've never heard of uh, for, for men before, but maybe I just need to open my mind. That's where your prostate is? Yeah, but there's no way that, that this bidet that he got on Amazon has a strong enough, you know how like laser focus the aim would have to be for him to consistently be getting a, a shot to the prostate it's like a, it was a 50 cal bidet or something like that like it's it's a little up there i mean that bet it's got to be a toto washlet is all i'm trying or maybe a hitachi there we go sorry i was gonna say toshiba but i don't think they make <laughs> i don't think they make tanks or personal massage devices i think they just make tvs he instantly felt remorseful and leaped from the toilet to tend to me and my wounded hand. Wait, I, I, he slammed the door to the water closet, smashing my hand in the process. Okay, I see. Still fully erect. Without thinking to shut off the bidet, the water stream went wild, spraying everywhere. It was a disaster. If not for the pain in my throbbing hand, I would have mistaken the incident for a fever dream. Anyway, I later asked him how often he, do he does this, and he admitted it happens almost every time he goes number two. He mentioned he enjoys the feeling of pressure on his bum while he pleasures himself. I guess I don't care so much about the logistics of how he chooses to get off. But after all this and the significant increase... No way! Significant increase in your water bill. I don't buy it. No shot, dude. I pay the... I get that it's cheaper in BC, but I pay the water bill. This dude would have to be sitting there like four hours a day for you to even notice. I told him to just get rid of it. Am I the asshole or is there room for compromise? To answer some of your questions and concerns, the bidet doesn't... It's just always people get lost in the damn weeds, man. 
The bidet is not just shut off on its own. It's a manual one that you turn toward the back for bum and toward the front for coochie. I will admit to my overreaction about blaming my husband's newfound adventures on the raised water bill. It's the summertime. You're probably watering your damn lawn, you American. Well, they did say water closet, but... So yes, our water bill has gone up quite a bit, but not just because of him. Anyway, we're keeping the bidet. They've become a, a throuple. I mean, I don't know what they want me to say. Like, are you the asshole for demanding their husband get rid of the bidet? I don't know. I would feel... <laughs> I think, am I crazy to think that it would do a lot of damage to your relationship for your, every time your husband said, I have to go poop, you just imagine him shooting his ass full of water and jerking off on the toilet? Like, I mean, I, I think that it would just, I think it would give your wife a little bit of ick. I'm not an ick whisperer. I'm just saying, like, I think they should be open to trying new stuff. I'm just saying it's... I don't know, it would be embarrassing for both parties. I think it would be kind of hard to come back from, but she seems okay. This should be a scene in a comedy. I was thinking South Park. Just imagine Randy or Cartman doing this, LOL, more so Randy. Oh, MG, I can see an entire episode of this already in my brain. Randy gets a bidet. The joke understander has logged on. Sharon, it's the cleaner option. What do we do? Wipe our asses with paper like animals? No, we let the soothing power of water cleanse us, make us whole, make us real again. And excuse me, I need to use the bathroom now. I thought this was America. They took our jobs. They took our jobs. Uh, can we add some smug? Oh, and the bidet needs to talk like the shake weight or Bebe's boobs. Smart bidet. Good morning, Randy. Please choose power and temperature. After a little change thing can pop open to pay it. Lamau? You need to be on the writing team. This is perfect in character, especially the end. Lol. Didn't they already kind of do that with the Japanese toilet episode? Dude, thank you. All these comments saying South Park should do a bidet episode. I'm thinking in my head, damn y'all fake South Parkers. People, there is a loneliness epidemic. This shit has nothing to do with the original post at all. These people are just reaching out, looking for somebody to, just somebody to listen, man. <laughs> Season 26, episode 3, Japanese Toilet. Pretty funny episode. In the new season, he did get a bidet. Sadly, I don't even think Matt Stone and Trey Parker could make this shit up. So true, Matt Stone and Trey Parker could not make up a plot of a dude jerking off on the toilet. That is simply too crazy for even their revolutionary comedy minds to possibly conceive of. <laughs> this sounds like a Seinfeld sketch, where the, oh, the, the, the lady uses it like a water pick, and for yada, yada, yada. I'm picturing a doctor recommending it to George's aging parents, then he tries it, and so is Thrall. He ends up, Gary, do dogs have tried, they've been trying to tell us, don't put your ass in there. It's a water fountain that's never empty. What brand is that bidet asking for my boyfriend? It's got to be a Toto. Not a Toto. Good bidets will stop pumping water when you stand up. In the Hindi language, Toto means dick. OMG, this is the same person, man. This is the same person who said, I'm picturing an episode where Randy gets a bidet. OMG, this was the context I needed for the other comment to be amazing. Toto is also a brand of bidet in Japan. The joke understand there is logged on twice. Guess they are not from Kansas, not anymore. Can't bless the rains down in Africa either. Holy cow, man. This is crazy. I'm, this is, I'm fascinated by this little subculture down here. Are there really men who refuse to wipe? Spend enough time on Reddit. I've read many stories where men refuse to wipe because that's gay. There's no, I'm sorry. This has happened to one person in Earth's history, right? Just one individual. And then like it's being echoed across 7 billion people's. A friend of a friend that had, you wouldn't know there was a kid in their class that thought, no, for real. I, I don't know, maybe. Here we go. With the upcoming global water crisis, there needs to be a discussion about the bidet usage. I'm calling bullshit on the significant increase of usage. Let's talk about growing almonds in California and golf courses in Arizona. We know, man! We know! You sanctimonious motherfucker! 
It's just a funny post. Why you gotta, why you gotta bring golf courses in Arizona into this? Some people still believe that it's the little guy refusing to recycle his little plastic straws that's fucking up the environment. What did, it's, you're talking about a dude getting the prostate massage from his Amazon bidet. Like, it's just, it's not that you're wrong. It's just, what's the point? Look how much water the ocean uses, bro. <laughs> I never thought of it that way. What is this post? Did I cheat on my husband? To feel some sense of self-worth, I slept with someone else. Yes, okay, you cheated. <laughs> we don't need to read the whole post. I'm, listen, you might have your reasons, but like I just had to find the, the topic sentence in there, right? It's okay. It doesn't make you the asshole necessarily. I need to read the whole post for that, but... I want my husband to fall in love with my sister? We made too many... We went too many pages deep, man. Did he cheat or did I catch an STD from a koala? Update, he cheated. <laughs> what a headline, man. Holy... Try our server life. Oh, you know what? That's a good idea. I actually think we got some good posts out of two hot takes. Thank you for the suggestion. Punched a customer in her breast. Oh no, it's me. Diet Coke is not an appropriate response to how are you doing this evening? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's why I ordered Coke Zero. To the guy that asked for teriyaki sauce at the Italian restaurant and then tipped $3 on $103. Listen, I think that this subreddit is entertaining to read, but there's not a whole lot from a, a streamer-based perspective, okay? Like, most of it is just like, my customer was an asshole to me today. And I, then when I look at it, I'm like, I agree. Try r slash DoorDash, <laughs> okay? Is it DoorDash or DoorDash underscore drivers? r slash DoorDash, okay. I'm looking for, for as much unhinged as possible. R slash DoorDash is kind of crazy. <laughs> okay, you're not wrong. Um, so this happened five minutes ago. Hi, this is DoorDash connecting you to your Dasher for updates about your order. Sorry, Taco Bell is very slow today. That's all right. Thanks for letting me know. I take it you're asleep. Sleep tight, beautiful. OMG, wrong person. Ah. <laughs> oh, man. WTF is my driver on. <laughs> Sorry, this is, again, maybe a good subreddit to browse. I'm not sure about it being argumentative content. Is 2837? Question mark. I paid on DoorDash. The card said that it does not have enough money. Question mark. I paid through the app. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how this happened, man. The only, I mean, I've had some, I guess, like semi-humorous DoorDash situations. The one that got me the most, though, was when, uh, and listen, I'm a, there's the asshole, I'm 50% the asshole, the driver is 50% the asshole. I ordered on the app, but the map, despite the address being input correctly, the map put a pin on like a different part of the city, okay? That had a, a similar sounding address. I noticed that like 15 minutes after I made the order. So I called the driver and I said, hey, just so you know, like if you could use Google Maps or something, punch in this address uh, instead, because if you go to the other one, it's going to take you across the city. And then he went like, oh, motherfucker, this fucking sucks. This fucking shit is so stupid. And then like hung up on me. And then he called me back like two minutes later and was like, hey, man, sorry. I thought that was DoorDash support calling me. I didn't know it was the customer. So I just wanted to apologize. And I said, no worries, brother. It's I get it. It's frustrating. We really appreciate it. And then when he finally showed up at our house, we had ordered like four personal pizzas and all the pizza boxes were like vertical in a reusable bag instead of stacked on each other horizontally. 
And my parents were like, I don't think that's how you're supposed to transport pizza. And I was like, I'm sure it'll be fine. And then my mom opened up her pizza and it was just totally fucked. Like all the the ingredients had like slid off onto the top of the box and the crust was all like crushed and shit. <laughs> but we just laughed about it because it was just, you know, I mean, it's to get, it was more valuable to get the story than it was to get the meal because the story makes me laugh every time I think about it. Should I have had my account deactivated for talking to customers like this? Hey, it's your Dasher. I'm in Arby's. They said they do not have mozzarella sticks. Shall I send them to the pit? Yes. Done. Joy laughing emoji. Joy laughing emoji. <laughs> May I offer anything else that will please King Armando? May I offer jalapeno bites? Yes, that's fine. There's no longer staff, so I'll have to make it myself. Haha, <laughs> I didn't think this through. Now to Google how to make jalapeno. I would be, listen, th the first part was funny. The second, the, the rest of this, I would be like, all right, buddy, just bring the food. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> like, I, I ordered DoorDash because I didn't want to, like, go through the effort of cooking. And now I'm, I got to laugh at all the jokes that you're putting in here. <laughs> Did blur his name and then just write it too. P.S. Jokes aside, they're making it now. I'll be on my way soon. I mean, it's funny. <laughs> Pharaoh, please. Pharaoh. My temple needs its Pharaoh. Oh, man. I'm, just, I'm not going to put this one on the screen, but... Not trying to sound like... This is the DoorDash driver. Not trying to sound like a pervert, but just wanted to say you are beautiful. You sound like a pervert. Face palm emoji. Sorry, just tried to give you a compliment. <laughs> Oh, man. This happened to my friend. I hope the dasher is okay. <laughs> oh, man. You know what? Thank you for recommending this. It's not the same as React Core, but it's very funny. This is my exact uh, style of content. Thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to favorite this subreddit and read it when I'm using my bidet. Checkers has confirmed your order from DoorDash. Message from your dasher. I'm so sorry. I fell down and crash on bike. Please cancel. I was doing too much orders. <laughs> oh, man. That's really good. <laughs> that is really good. I did have a DoorDash order once where my wife ordered something, and I probably don't need to tell you what it is, but it came with a miso soup. And then when I went down to get the order, the dude was like, oh, yeah, sorry. I crashed on my bike and spilled like half your soup. And then he was just sort of looking at me like, I was like, oh, that sucks. But at the same time, I was like, what do you want from me? Like, it, like without being rude, I understand the plight of the DoorDash driver, but like, I didn't make you fall off of your bike. Like, I don't understand what I'm, like, if I'm supposed to give you money because you fell down, like, it's not my fault. You're not driving a Prius or something like that. I think he's just letting you know. Well, I didn't do anything. I'm not the rain. I'm not his, his tire. Now I got to go up and explain to my wife why the miso soup is half empty and the bowl's all fucked up. And all the rest of the, <laughs> all the rest of the styrofoam in the bag is like covered in miso. We went wrong somewhere in the world. Or maybe it was like this before. This shit would terrify me, man. I mean, I think that's, the, that's what it's like designed to do. 200, 295 drop all deliveries here. No trespassing. Do not enter. Guard dogs patrolling premises. Violators consent to waive all rights. There's no way this sign is legally binding, Right? If you walk past this cone, you give up your right to not be killed? Like, that doesn't seem like it would hold up in court. <laughs> it depends on the state. Like, this is not even the same situation, okay? But I was on a walk with my daughter two or three weeks ago, and this house had a gate, and then in front of the gate, it was a wood gate, so you couldn't see through it. It wasn't like a chain link fence. It's important. In front of the gate, they had a big rock that they had painted to look just like a kitty cat. So my daughter said, oh my God, kitty rock, can I pet it? And I was like, it's, it's on the public side of the gate. It's past, like, it's closer to the sidewalk versus the, uh, the I was gonna say the opponent's house, but you, you get what I mean, the person's house. As far as I'm concerned, that's kind of, it's not communal property in the sense that like I could put a, my own 
treehouse on it or something like that, but it's not like I'm trespassing. So I said, sure, go ahead and pet it. She went over to the, the rock and she was petting the rock and she was saying like, oh, cute kitty, cute kitty, even though it's just a rock. And then I saw on, a, on the gate, it had a sign that said like, beware of dog, it bites on sight or something like that. And I heard from the other side of the gate, I heard Cujo that was going like, and I feel like you can be a good neighbor or you can be an insane shut-in, but I feel betrayed that you straddled the line. You put out a decoration that was like, this is a friendly house, but then you also are like, anybody that passes through the threshold of this gate will be summarily executed by my pet. Like that's, I got baited, yeah, exactly. So as soon as I heard the growling and the barking, I was like, we better get out of here. Cause I'm sure like it's three seconds away from like a screen door slamming and like a, you know, well, 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 what if Kitty Rock caught another one? It's just, I don't mind, honestly. If you want to be the friendly neighbor, I'll stop and have a conversation with you. I'll remember the name of your dog and make small talk. If you want to be the insane neighbor, I will not make eye contact with you when I pass by your house. But at the same time, like you can't, you can't put one foot in both pools. It, no disrespect, but if your dog like starts making advances on us, I'm probably going to have to kill your dog because I don't know my own strength. And unless you've got like a... Bernie's mountain dog or something like that. I don't see it going down like that dog's going to get one over on me, okay? If you've got a police trained German shepherd, sure, maybe, but even then, because I read the wiki how for like how do you kill a wolf and a dog is just a smaller wolf, I understand. When the dog bites you, um, it doesn't have an unlatch instinct. So all you do is, is offer your hand so your hand gets bitten and then you shove your whole fist down the dog's windpipe. Uh, and then you just put it in a rear naked choke with your hand in there until... You, so I'm just saying, be careful what you wish for. When you put out that kitty rock that says, hey, this is a cute decoration. But then you've also got a sign that's like, we'll shoot trespassers on sight. I'm just saying, be careful because that primes me. Now I'm going into fight or flight mode every time I walk past the, the house. This has got to be a, a, a psyop, right? This was written by, a, by DoorDash HQ. A Hawaii delivery driver who pulled in $114,000 on DoorDash last year says the tips are awesome and it's like delivering in paradise. <laughs> His name is Ronnie Coleman. <laughs> so true. Lightweight, ain't nothing but a peanut. No, I, I'd be happy too if I was delivering peanuts all day for six figures. Have you seen Slackers? I don't think I can imagine any other streamer who might have seen it. Have I seen Slackers? What a ridiculous question. I love you, but I hate you. Which brings to mind how much I love you. We could have worked things out, you know, in my little room, in my little locked room. I'm sorry that you had to settle for Dave, the one-dimensional man. He's filed under cocksucker in my little black book, sweetness can rot your teeth, bittersweet, cacophony. Slackers, Devin Sawa, Jason Schwartzman. Kind of insane this information occupies space in your brain. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that sometimes when I like I hear a song, usually like during a Peloton ride, I'll, I'll hear a song that I've literally not heard since like 1998 and I still know 80% of the words. I'm like, what are you doing in there?